body in certain ways to block the dissipation of prana and direct it inwards. The Shastras reveal the layers of benefits of mudras from health and longevity to the ultimate experience of transcending our limiting cognitions we carry as human beings and living and radiating the state, space and shaktis of Shiva himself. It is mentioned repeatedly in the scriptures that initiation by the Guru holds the master key that can transform us from human beings into superhuman beings. Abharana is another dimension of Nithyanda Yoga. Each metal and jewel holds a certain energy and provides a specific benefit to the body when worn. Rudraksha jewelry is the traditional abharana worn by and while performing the Nithyanda Yoga sequences. As the manifestation of the teardrop from Paramashiva's third eye, the Rudraksha energy bead is able to hold and radiate energy unlike any other stone. The Sundaravaram are the traditional Rudaksha earrings. Through the Sadguru Vandanam Nityanandam Paramasukadam Kevalam Yan of Portim Dwandva Titam Gagana Sadisham Tatva Masya Dilaksham Ekam Nityam Bimalamachalam Sarvadi Sakshi Bhutam Bhava Titam Triguna Hitam Sadgurum Tam Namami. Now we'll be paying our gratitude to all the Guru Parampara, the Gurus that have trained uh, Swamiji through the Guru Parampara Vandana. Nityanandeshwara Paramashiva Samarambha, Nityanandeshwari Paramashiva Shakti Madhyama, Asmadacharya Pariyanta, Vande Guru Parampara. So before we begin the whole session, we will be knowing a little about who CSPH and what is his role and everything. So the Supreme Point of Hinduism, Nityananda Paramashivam, is recognized as a 1008 living manifestation of Bhagawan Paramashiva, the Paramavatara of Paramashiva as per Sanatana Hindu Dharma or Hinduism, and by his predecessors, that is his gurus of enlightened masters and adepts. The SPS Nityananda Paramashivam is reviving Hinduism as 1008 Acharya Mahamandaleshwar, the head for all spiritual leaders of Atal Akhada, which is the ancient apex body of Hinduism. Coronated as Mahamandaleshwar, supreme spiritual head of Mahanirvani Akhada, that is the largest apex monastic order, and the youngest Mahamandaleshwar, ordained as the 233rd Guru Mahasanidhanam of Tonde Mandalam Adinam. Ordained as the 293rd Guru Mahasanidhanam of Shyamala Peter Sarvagni Pitam. Ordained as the 23rd Guru Mahasanidhanam of Dharma Mukti Swarga Paramadinam. And coordinated as the 203rd Emperor of Sur Suryavamsha Surangi. The SPS Nityananda Paramashiram is the reigning spiritual emperor of 20 ancient traditional Hindu kingdoms. And reviver of the most ancient, most peaceful, still living and long lasting demonstrable system that shows the possibility of peaceful coexistence and amongst people. Following the coronation of past 27 years, the SPH Nityananda Paramashram, as a face of unified Hindus, has been single-handedly, tirelessly inspiring the dispossessed Hindu diaspora to reclaim the Hindu-centric freedom and stand unified for the centuries-old Hindu genocide. The 1008 living manifestation of Paramashiva, the SPH Nityananda Paramashram, stands as a unifying force for 2 billion born and practicing Hindu diaspora worldwide and established the Hindu state Kailasa for the persecuted Hindus in over 100 countries. 
as PH Nityana Paramshiam has made resolute efforts towards recognizing and legitimizing the Hindu genocide, which has been receiving scant consideration by global leaders and international bodies. The SPH Nityana Paramshiam founded Kailasa United Nations. And this is more about Kailasa, the one and only Hindu nation the SPH has established in today's world. Uh, Hinduism is the most ancient, most peaceful, still living and long-lasting demonstrable system that shows the possibility of peaceful coexistence amongst people despite fundamental differences in their preferences and realities. Over the last 50 years, the effects of meditation and its significant impact on stress, crime rates, violence, political decisions making and even war in local and global consciousness is well established. Unfortunately, last 200 years, forcibly, we are made to believe Hinduism is functional principle only for enlightenment and spirituality, and it is absolutely dysfunctional for the political, social, economical system. Making Hindu family structure, Hindu social structure dysfunctional is the greatest crime done against humanity. So Hinduism was once practiced freely in over 56 nations across the continent from Afghanistan, India, Nepal, Burma, Sri Lanka, all the way to Singapore, Malaysia, and Cambodia and Indonesia. And in 200 states, 1,700 samasthanas, that is provinces, and 10,000 sampradayas, traditions. Over several centuries, the combined force, forces of foreign invasion, political upheaval, colonial colonialism and religious persecution systematically ended millennia of Hindu Swarajya or self rule So today Hindu temples remain in few countries, but the Hindus who worship in them have been ethnically cleansed. Because of this heavy persecution that's been happening for centuries on Hindus, the Kailasa with de facto spiritual embassies operating across over 100 countries and having presence across the globe as the largest spiritual knowledge source on Hinduism is spiritually governed with the life positive, all inclusive, universal policies sourced from Hinduism revived by the speech Nityananda Parameshwar. Having enriched and enriched more than 1 billion individuals over the past 27 years, the Kailasa raises the voice to protect Hindus, defend Hindus and preserve the Hindu narrative for the whole world. Now we'll be moving on to Kailasa Sityanda Yoga. Everything regarding Kailasa Sityanda Yoga, the components involved, the sacred truths, revelations revealed by the SPH, and how yoga is benefiting all of us, not just our body, but our being and our soul. So moving on. For most yogis around the world, enlightened master Patanjali is the father of yoga. He presented a system called Ashtanga Yoga, comprising eight dimensions of yoga approximately 3,000 years ago. Little we know that yoga was revealed in detail by Bhagavan Parameshiva, the first and foremost guru who revealed Shashtanga Yoga over 60,000 years before Patanjali. So Bhagavan Parameshiva reveals Shashtanga Yoga in the Kirana Agama, Yoga Pada 2.3, one of the original authentic scriptures on yoga. So most of us know that Patanjali is the father of yoga, but little did we know that Bhagavan Parameshiva is the one who actually revealed the source knowledge on yoga 60,000 years ago. As page Nityananda Paramshiram, the 1008th incarnation of Bhagavan Paramshiva has revived Shashtanga Yoga through Kailasa's Nityananda Yoga. Kailasa's Nityananda Yoga is the essence, the best of the best of 1 million yogic scriptures available from all the sampradayas of Sanatana Hindu dharmas, Veda Agamic tradition as per the vision of Bhagavan Paramshiva himself to manifest extraordinary superhuman powers or shaktis through yoga. So ba Swamiji has beautifully compiled all the yogic scriptures and he has compiled it through making Kailasa's Nityanda Yoga by making us imparting the knowledge, imparting the experience and, um, and the experience for us to uh, manifest the space of Shaktis through Kailasa's Nityanda Yoga. So the first thing you need to know is that yoga did not originate from Patanjali. Patanjali is the organizer, not originator. That's the first thing you need to know, said the Espirit Nityananda Parameshwar. With all my respects, in Bhagwan's own words, with all my respects to Patanjali, I want to declare this truth to the whole world. At least 15,000 years ago, Patanjali, a being walked on planet Earth. Assuming the physical form, Adi Guru, Bhagavan Parameshiva, the founder and father of the yoga system. Patanjali Yoga Sutra is a great book, no doubt, but 
not the first book. Unfortunately, many popular yoga gurus all over the world always stop with Patanjali. Very few say yoga was before Patanjali. And even if they say, they are not able to present the scriptures and literature. The second important truth is that yoga is from Hinduism. Always ask for the original source. It is unfortunate that the original scriptures revealed by Bhagavan Paramashiva, Bhagavan Paramashiva are not available for the mass. We need to understand that yoga cannot be developed and cannot be separated from Hinduism. It is a perfect system that was revealed by Bhagavan Paramashiva and further organized by living enlightened masters, disciples of Bhagavan Paramashiva over thousands of years with a clear purpose and vision. Yoga is a complete science that has taken in, uh, into account all types of body, bodies, past, present and yet to come in the future. Altering yoga is not development but dilution. So in today's world, you see a lot of different crazy yogas that are happening, boat yoga, beer yoga, all these yogas are not development from the source or the original yoga, but it's a mere dilution. That is not going to benefit Yoga is the science of radiating enlightenment. The third important truth is that, in Bhagavan's own words, yoga is not just a science of keeping you, not just the ability to stretch your body, it is enabling you better man. Yoga is all about making you a superman. So understand, I will become healthy. I can manifest a body that only benefits us only in the body. No, you, you being a superhuman, you can manifest so many other things rather than just health. So yoga speaks a lot, but we have not been told all these truths. But with the grace and blessings of the Espresso Nitanda Paramashiram, he has revealed all of this through Kailasa Nitanda Yoga. So yoga, uh, the best that can happen to you on path of yoga is getting rid of all self-doubt, self-hatred and self-denial. The root cause of all incompletions. The speech Nitanda Paramashiram actively teaches the science of completing with these collectively called SDHT, discarding all mental patterns that limit us from living to our highest potential. Yoga is the ultimate merging the individual consciousness with the cosmic consciousness. It is designed to experience oneness that is Advaita and express all the mystical powers outlined by Paramashiva. As long as we carry inadequate, immature cognitions about ourselves, about life, others, God, world, we continue to feel separate from the world. When we complete with all our limited cognitions and discover our true self, yoga happens. That is when real yoga, yoga happens. Now, seeking the source, what does it exactly mean? The Veda Agamas are the source book of Sanatana Hindu Dharma. So all the scriptural references, all the authentications that we uh, that we uh, abide by are from Veda, Vedas and Agamas, that are the source of uh, Hindu scriptures. The revelations from the Vedas and Agamas form the Shastra Pramana, the scriptural authority on truth, which came down directly from the mouth of Bhagavan Paramashiva to his consort Devi Paramashiva Shakti. So this was told, this whole science of Veda and Agamas was revealed by Bhagavan Paramashiva to his consort Devi uh, Parashakti. The SPH Nityananda Paramashivam reveals Vedas are ultimate superior authority for the Hindus. Vedas are like a pure science where the ultimate truths are explained. But Agamas are the scriptures where the applied technology, the applied science is explained. All the Hindu bodies accept Vedas and Agamas as Shruti, that which is heard, and everything else follows as Smriti, the remembered scriptures. Agamas are directly revealed by Bhagavan Paramashiva. They are more like a practical manual of how to, what to, where to, when to. All these details are answered with the right context, giving enough of understanding. And I should say, the, in Bhagavan's own, own words, in a more sympathetic, compassionate way, with a lot of concern for human beings with tremendous user friendliness. So Agamas and Vedas are described by this speech that it is completely user friendly. Next slide. Now we'll be moving on uh, to Pramanas, the four authorities and evidences of truth. So each and every yoga poses, the breathing techniques that is involved in Kailasa's Nityanda Yoga, understand, understand they are authenticated by these Pramanas or they are the scriptural references from the Vedas and Agamas. Right. So we have four pramanas, starting off with Shastra Pramana. Shastra Pramana is the scriptural evidence, the direct ultimate authority on the truth as it is, for it is directly from Bhagwan Paramashiva. The Adi Guru, the original.
original guru, the source of all, all that is. In Sanatana Hindu Dharma, Veda Agamas are the irrefutable Shas Pramana. All knowledge, currents, philosophies, rituals, and lifestyle systems and yogic sciences for humanity are in depth systematically revealed in Vedas and Agamas from, from the Pramanas. The next is Apta Pramana. Apta Pramanas are the ancient, great, authentic, time tested, foolproof compilations of experiences of enlightened sages called the Rishis, Siddhas, Munis, incarnations, the direct disciples, followers and descendants of Bhagavan Parameshwar. Like the Sapta Rishis, Maharishis, including the enlightened ones such as Patanjali, Valmiki, Agastya Mahamuni, Abhinava Gupta, Shema Raja, Paramahamsa Yogananda, etc. The, the, the compiled experiences verify and expand further on the Vedas and Agamas, forming Apta Pramana. So Apta Pramana are the direct experiences of great sages and seers um, that have practiced these truths and they have put their own experience on uh, um, on reading the Shastra Pramana, experiencing the Shastra Pramana and giving their Apta Pramana. Now, Atma Pramana are the direct experiences of the living avatar, the Hespachinta and the Paramashiva. His own experiences through uh, uh, on yoga, who is respected, revered as a living incarnation by millions of people worldwide in the space of pure oneness or Shuddhat by Bhagwan Paramashiva. The Atma Pramanas of the Hespachinta and the Paramashiva form the words of his gurus, his own experiences and all that he has learned and directly experienced and done thorough verification and authentication with the Shastra Brahmana and then present it to the world. The last one is Sakshi Brahmana. Sakshi Brahmana are the evidence of the experiences and sharings of the people who directly experience the Brahmanas as a living applied reality in their lives as a manifestation of his Atma Brahmanas. In these series, the Brahmanas are presented from different Veda Agamas, from the various system or proportions of the Agamas, such as the Jnana Pada or Vidya Pada, the knowledge section from Agama Kriya Pada, the ritual sections from Agamas, Yoga Pada, the Yoga Pada knowledge and science section, Yoga Pada knowledge and science sections, Shraya Pada, the enlightened lifestyle from Bhagavan Paramashiva. Now we'll be moving on to the 12 components involved in Kailasas Nityanda Yoga. Understand Kailasas Nityanda Yoga is unlike any other yoga. It is completely different and it has 12 components incorporated. So most of you might know that yoga is just a posture that is being done using your body. But no, what we Kailasas Nityanda Yoga presents you that Kaila, yoga is not just asanas, but it's also incorporated with other 11 components that actually helps you manifest the shaktis of Paramashiva and also helps you realize your true self. So we'll be getting into details of what are these 12 components and what we exactly do during Kailasas Nityanda Yoga. Yes. So the 12 components of yoga, the ultimate truths in the field of yoga, 12 components of each asana. Asana is the physical posture, pranayama, the breathing structure, mudra, the energy circuit connections, bandha, internal awakening of kundalini shakti. 12 various components of each asana following into the vinyasa krama of 1008 postures with the valid chasta pramana, apta pramana, uh, up the pramana it will be made as a sakshi pramana for you so all of you who will be practicing the kailasas nityanda yoga will be the sakshi pramana experiencing parameshiva himself through doing this yoga so the 12 uh, the prathama vinyasa krama uh, has 108 asanas vitya vinyasa krama has 308 asanas and tritya vinyasa krama has 508 asanas Chaturtha Vinyasa Krama has 1008 uh, asanas. You are going to have the Parama Yoga revealed by Paramashiva himself through all these three Vinyasa Kramas. Now, Vyakta and Avyakta. What, what we'll be understanding the concept of Vyakta and Avyakta. To truly understand why yoga should be practiced with all of these components, the SPS Nityanda Paramashiva revealed the first principle of Kailasa Nityanda Yoga as Vyakta and Avyakta the manifest and unmanifest. In the scientific community, Vyakta and Abhyakta is commonly understood as matter and antimatter. Authentic yoga is meant to deliver both Vyakta and Abhyakta experientially to the practitioner. The manifest parts of a body and consciousness are more familiar to us, yet tangible. Outward physical movements would be considered as manifest aspect, but it is the unmanifest which begins to reveal itself in a body through Kailasas Nityanda Yoga. 
Each of the 12 components of yoga work on the unmanifest layer, the abhyakta, the anti-matter, anti-sound, anti-sex. Anything done in the level of usha, the expression or matter, due to matter's quality of going up and down, does not stay permanently. Anything done in the level of chaya, all existence, that is anti-matter, as it does not go down, stays permanently. If it is done on usha, it will work only on your mind. But if it is done on chaya, it will remain in the body permanently. Remnants of body is altered form, is in the altered form. The power manifesting form exists longer than the remnants of the mind in altered states of consciousness. So this basically speaks about how important the unmanifest component is uh, in our body or how it is very important for us to uh, explore the unmanifest component in our being. Exploring this unmanifest component helps us uh, helps all the benefits, all the good uh, goodness of yoga stay permanently in our body. And uh, Vyakta and Abhyakta both are experientially given to you through Kailasa's Nityanda Yoga. So during the process of Kailasa's Nityanda Yoga, the yogi intensely withdraws from the body, the form they are connected, allowing them to experience teleportation and materialization. When materialization happens, the antimatter from the Abhyakta, that is unmanifest form, enters into Vyakta and becomes matter. By the end End of the entire sequence, the yogi will be able to immediately manifest at least 21 powers without a single doubt. Next. Now, we will be moving on to what are the 12 components of our Kailasas Nityanda Yoga. Starting off with the first component, asana, or uh, commonly known as the posture, the yogi posture. So, maybe the most widely discussed topic in yoga today is what does asana mean? Is it sitting, a certain posture, movement? Like most understandings, the only way to truly discover the truth is to go to the original source. This text itself is the original source book revived in modern form. It is dedicated to unveiling the truths from Agam, about asanas, revived from the almost lost sacred palm leaves gifted to humanity thousands of years ago from Parameshwar, Adi Yogi himself. Since most people are either in a state of restlessness, that is rajas or tiredness, tamis, the body needs preparation to enter into the experience of yoga. Asanas allow the body and mind to come to a state of balance and restful awareness, sattva, where one can easily enter into the deeper and more subtle dimensions of yoga. A person is made up of three bodies, the physical or gross body, that is stula sharira, the subtle body named sukshma sharira, and the Causal body name, Karana Sharira. Chakras are the subtle energy centers that are present at the intersection of the physical and the subtle and the causal body. They are aligned in an ascending column from the base of the spine to the top of your head. Asanas involve placing these centers in relative positions with each other. Those positions can be represented by geometrical figures. So, practicing asanas can align all your seven chakras. Uh, this is from the scriptural source, Hatha Tattva Kaumukti, chapter 9, verse 18 and 19. This is the translation. If the asanas are practiced in a certain manner, one becomes prepared for the purification of the nadis. It is excellent in elevating the diseases. Prana and bodily heat are enriched. Minor diseases are also cured and bodily heat and prana are stimulated. One feels light, lifespan is enhanced, premature death is prevented. Some of the benefits of asanas include optimizing the digestive functions. Uh, for example, uh, Matsyendrasana from Hatha Tattva Kaumudi, regulating fever and imbalances caused due to the humors. Uh, example, Mayurasana, Hatha Tattva Kaumudi. So here they're telling you the benefits and the corresponding asana that helps you um, reach this benefit with the scripture source also. Next. The next benefit goes removing fatigue. For example, practicing Shavasana will can give you mental stability. And practicing Girasana can enhance enthusiasm and stamina in your body. And practicing Siddhasana can ensure success to the yogi. So you being a yogi, um, inspired yogi, you will taste success every time by just doing this asana, just doing Siddhasana. So all of these benefits to that detail, Bhagavan Parameshiva has um, given these asanas and uh, elaborate benefits uh, revolving these asanas. 
test which nitana parameshwaram describes asana as steady and comfortable body postures to tune oneself with the cosmos ultimately asana means many things physically whether standing sitting laying or jumping asana is when our muscles are completely comfortable and relaxed they are alive stable and comfortably stacked upon one another asana is when the body is bending stretching and aligning itself to the cosmic geometry the context of asana is not restricting itself to some physical posture it's not a place that the body is in but a space nididhyasana for instance is when we are radiating excitement joy and bliss for life regardless of physical positioning of the limbs the most important understanding of asanas is it's not a practice at all it is a happening a manifestation which happens through asanas we do not practice sitting with god we embody god parameshwara himself it is from this space of parameshivoham when we are intent on the vow of living like a god that we are performing an authentic asana through intensely flowing through the prathama vinyasa krama of the 108 asana the body simply falls in tune with the cosmos not just prathama vinyasa krama all the stated vinyasa vinyasa krama prathama vinyasa krama tritiya vinyasa krama tritiya and chaturtha vinyasa krama practicing all of these vinyasa kramas your body will inevitably fall in tune with cosmos aligning with the perfect cosmic um, geometry the next component is pranayama pranayama is a term that refers to the breathing process the breathing technique that is incorporated the air you breathe is just a vehicle in which the prana life energy comes in and goes out of your body bhagwan beautifully says uh, the speech in chana paramshan beautifully says that what we human beings do it how to breathe we don't know how to breathe actually so pranayama helps us to align how to breathe so when we were born we knew exactly how to breathe as we started growing up we lost the uh, authentic breathing in our system we, we we our breathing is not aligned to how how we are actually supposed to breathe so by practicing pranayama your breathing completely gets aligned and when your breathing gets completely aligned just that is enough for you to eradicate all these major and minor diseases in your body so pranayama is uh, the air you breathe is just a vehicle in which the prana the life energy comes in and goes out of your body when you inhale the air comes in carrying prana and when you exhale the empty air goes out this life energy is universal yoga kundali upanishad 1.1 uh, uh, 19 verse states prano dhame tadanim pravakshami samastha pranas the translation goes then i shall presently relate briefly about the control of the vital air prana in prana is air coursing through the body so parameshwara describes pranayama as being composed of three processes the first one being rechaka the next is puraka and the third one being kumbhaka puraka means inhalation of prana from outside of the body kumbhaka refers to holding the breath like a filled up pot without moving the limbs and rechaka refers to the exhalation of air from the body so consists of greater mental abilities slowing the aging process reading the body powers such as levitation teleportation and materialization and pranayama as well yoga reveals itself as much more than a mere physical practice no other discipline has understood and presented the means to regulate and expand one's own to the purification of energy body and its channels called nadis and to the ultimate experience of manifesting the powers of parameshwara through proper asanas there are there is a yogic postures physical well being is achieved muscles are toned the nervous system is strengthened and vital organs are regulated and brought into a state of health thus the body becomes ready for pranayama it is with pranayama that the real technique of yoga begins the next is mudra the third component out of the 12 components is mudra so what is mudra exactly mudra refers to the positioning of limbs fingers or even tongue in a certain way to seal this prana into our, in, in our body a way of aligning to the cosmic geometry so the sph defines mudra simply as an energy circuit connection mudras are a way to simulate the flow of prana shakti 
There is a life force energy and cosmic currency inside us. There is a constant flow of prana happening in our bodies through the nadis and chakras. But much of it usually gets dissipated. That means it gets uh, lost while entering our body into the external world. This dissipation into the external world is responsible for the feeling of tiredness, confusion and powerlessness that we experience. So through mudras, this whole thing is straightened and aligned. And uh, by practicing mudras, we are able to um, breathe in as much as prana our body requires. So our body is aligned to the cosmic geometry. So mudras are psychophysical processes which help accel accelerate the effect of an asana and pranayama to take us to a higher state of consciousness by posi positioning the body in certain way to block this dissipation of prana and direct it inwards. Mudras create the space for pratyahara and harana, the higher experiences of yoga to happen in us. Throughout the Tritya Vinyasa Krama, you will experience mudras of the hands and of the gaze called drishti. The shastras, the scriptures that are direct revelations from Bhagavan Paramashiva, reveal the layer of benefits that can result from the integrated practice of mudras, ranging from health and longevity to mental focus, awakening the subtle groups of the brain responsible for higher emotions such as devotion and gratitude to the ultimate experience of transcending transcending our limiting cognitions we carry as human beings and living in radiating, radiating the state and space and shaktis of Parmeshwar. So each and every second you spend doing Kailasas Nityanda Yoga, understand your whole limiting cognitions that you've been carrying for years breaks and you are being pushed into the space of complete possibility to manifest anything you want in your life. You can directly manifest your realities and you can directly manifest you being Parameshiva himself through practicing Kailasas Nityanda Yoga. It is mentioned repeatedly in the scriptures that initiation by the Guru holds the master key that can trans transform us from human beings into superhuman beings. That is actually the beauty of Kailasas Nityanda Yoga. Understand, we have a, a living incarnation of Paramshiva himself as our beloved Guru, the Espiritual Nityanda Paramshiva. And just through his initiation, so much of our effort is taken care of by the SPS Nityananda Paramshim through his just one touch of initiation. We are able to manifest breakthroughs after breakthroughs by doing yoga itself because of the living presence of Swamiji in our lives. Um, Paramshiva, uh, it is mentioned repeatedly in the scriptures that, yeah, yes, uh, uh, Guru holds a master key and Guru himself can transform transform us as superhumans through practicing yoga. Param Shiva says in the Shiva Samhita, uh, the next, we'll read the translation directly. The Akashic revelation of the previous uh, scriptural reference says, in this way, through the Mahamudra, even the most unfortunate yogi might obtain success. By this means, all the vessels of the body are roused and stirred into activities. Life is increased and its decay is checked and all sins destroyed. All diseases are healed and the gastric fire is increased. It gives faultless beauty to the body and destroys decay and death. All fruit of desire and pleasure are obtained and these and the senses are acquired. The yogi fixed in restful awareness acquires all the above mentioned things through practice. There should be no hesitation doing so. This is being this is an Apta Pramana and the Akashic revelation clearly states the the ancient uh, seer's experience of the Shastra Brahmana saying that when a person practices his Mahamudra, that person inevitably reaps all the benefits of premature death and all of that when he just merely practices Mahamudra, right? Uh, research has revealed the health benefits gained by practicing mudras include freedom from disease, hunger, thirst, fainting, fatigue, indigestion, skin diseases, constipation and more. And all of these above uh, stated problems are something that you see in your day-to-day -day life that people are going through, right? Fatigue, fainting, indigestion is something that you come across every every. Every day, some you go through it, or your friends, or your family, or your loved ones go through it always. And, and no, none of us know that the answers are lying right in front of us, right? this mudras directly activate the prana and awaken the 
potential energy kundalini shakti in us manifesting the space state and shakti of paramshiva mudras are a crucial component of yogic method for kundalini awakening kundalini is the ultimate inner potential bioenergy that is available to each one of us it is the largest untapped natural resource lying with humanity when kundalini and right technique right process and above all through the direct diksha that is initiation from the living avatar incarnation it can give us anything we want so all these untapped unknown potential are there within us that we have not completely explored yet but understand easily explore your um, inner powers your potentials your possibilities and you'll be able to understand that you are the source for all Wearing the Rudraksha necklace on the Vishuddhi Chakra as the Kantamala given by the Guru radiates the energy of the mantra initiated by the Guru, acting as a mechanized japa for the yogi. Performing the Nityananda Yoga sequence while wearing the Kantamala and the Sundaravaram takes the ritual of yoga to the next level, infusing the yogi with the master's energy and oneness space at all times. Another component of Nityananda Yoga is visualization. In the science of yoga, context and intention are everything. Why you bend your body matters. For whatever intention you move the body, that experience will be delivered to you. That is why in Nityananda Yoga, we maintain the space of yoga as a ritual, as a direct connection between and us. With every asana, it is important to maintain a strong visualization of that asana. When we keep a clear visualization of each form we are embodying, the body can settle into the depth experience of each and every posture. One of the most important components of Nityananda Yoga is chanting. Mantra is a Sanskrit word. power with or without syntactic or literal meaning. A disciple needs to be initiated into a mantra by his guru using the right procedures, mantra diksha, for the mantra to have its maximum potency for that individual. It is given by the guru and received with gratitude and respect by the disciple. Sorry for the technical Clear instructions are given in order to experience the truth of the mantra. So Banda is conduce of contraction of pressure in the body and contractions of different body parts. Banda is the body, the pump energy into the is that you seal the prana in your body, right? So there is uh, your normal inhalation, there is your normal exhalation, but there is another uh, intermediate component where do you seal the prana in your body for some time so the prana works its uh its powers its um its powers or uh, it uh, prana works its powers in your body just because you are holding the prana in your body right through that you are able to eradicate so many diseases of uh, all these subtle groups in your body that is not aligned can be just fixed by prana being in your body for a longer time than normal because when we normally inhale and exhale we don't often um, keep the breath or the air or the prana inside us just by doing this so many benefits your body can uh, uh, body can achieve right so this is one of the major components you will see in kailasas nitanda yoga so we'll be moving more uh, more into this the details of bandhas Without bandhas, energy tends to leak out, tends to be blocked or dissipated due to our lifestyle, etc. Here, bandhas are the bridge between the disconnected areas of the energy circuit. This is the reason that this pumping and realignment of prana, the vital life energy, and kundalini shakti inherent, that is, that is an inherent potential energy, brings tremendous healing and balancing to the physical, emotional, and neurological systems. 
So bandhas are described beautifully in the Shiva Samhita, right? So we'll directly get into the translation. Uh, the Akashic revelation of the above um, scriptural reference says, when having firmly closed the glottis by the proper yogic method and contemplating on the goddess Kundalini, he drinks, that means the moon fluid of immortality, he becomes a sage or poet within six months. So this is the power of Banda. When you intensely practice or when you intensely live, uh, uh, practice Banda, you will be able to reap the benefits of uh, Kundalini being awakened in your body. And you can also have a possibility of becoming uh, immortal. That is the power of this small but yet powerful component of Kailasam Janda Yoga. So understand there are seven chakras in our body, right? So it's starting from the base of the spine. Muladhara is a root chakra located in the perineum and associated with the adrenals. The next comes the Swadhisthana. That is located at the level of pubic bone and associated with the reproductive organs. Then comes your Manipuraka, right? Located at the navel and associated with the pancreas, associated with the thymus gland. Then comes your Vishuddhi, your throat center, and it's associated with your thyroids. your third eye the point between your eyebrows and it's associated with your pain and it's associated with the pituitary glands so each and it's associated with your major body field energy centers and not physical organs so they are thus thereby diseases can be cured and the function of their associated physical psychological and neurological systems can be optimized so practicing bandhas can align your subtle energy groups that are your chakras that is there in your body it can completely align your chakras and through that you'll be able to see so many health benefits and not just that you'll be able to see you as a different being a different person able to manifest so many powers right so we have a lot of bandhas out of which uh, all the four vinyasa kramas that i had stated will have these main bandhas that we'll be following when we do the yoga asanas so first comes Mula Bandha. Mula Bandha is also known as a root lock that happens and works with the Mula Dhara Chakra. So this is directly associated uh, with your Mula Dhara Chakra. It is a contraction of the pelvic flow muscles. Pranic energy which normally flows out of the body is prevented from leaking and instead raised to the higher chakra energy centers along with the spine. So locking this flow of energy at the base of the spine is referred to as a Yoni, yoni Bandha. Mula Bandha, Mula Bandha is the most important Bandha and should be maintained during breathing exercise. The benefit is that it brings perpetual youth and not just that, many other benefits. Understand most of our asanas have Mula Bandha incorporated in them. So if you are going to be doing Kalasasmita the Yoga, you will be coming across Mula Bandha often. The next is Udhyana Bandha. Udhyana Bandha is known as the abdominal lock and therefore happens in and works with the Manipuraka Chakra. It is performed by bringing the navel inwards towards the spine. Through this action, prana flows more easily into your Sushumna Nadi, the central energy channel along the spine where the Kundalini energy can move up the chakra centers. So all this Bandha that we are practicing is a contributing factor for our Kundalini Shakti to get awakened. So everything that you do, whatever bandhas that you do, actually helps you to awaken the Kundalini that is dormant in your body right now. So through practicing Nityananda Yoga every day, coming, coming across bandhas, coming across mudras, doing the asanas, chanting the pramanas, all of that is under, all of that understand is for your Kundalini Shakti to completely get awakened. This is the inner potential that is being unexplored by the people in in today's world and by exploring that you will become a new dimension of you you will start seeing that you are not your old your old self but you are Bhagavan Paramishpa and you will be able to manifest whatever you want in your life just through that Kundalini Shakti getting awakened in your body the next is uh, Karana Performing the karanas puts you into a state of high awareness of your body, engaging multiple body parts at the same time. So let us know what exactly karana is, right? So karana is the, um, karana comes from the Nati Shastra. They are the Bharatanatyam postures that one uh, does in between this yoga. So performing this gets you into high state of awareness, right? Because your body is, uh, 
currently engaging with so many body parts at the same time. So doing Karana just elevates your consciousness to a higher state. The half squatting position commonly called the Aramandi is common to most Karanas, which when performed aligns the body to the alignment of the cosmos. Several triangles can be drawn along the lines of the body. Therefore, this posture enables the microcosm to connect to the macrocosm. The seven chakras are in complete alignment and eight Kundalini to raise to the Sahasrara. Again, Karana is also a contributing factor for your Kundalini to get awakened. And just a mere half squatting position can directly align you to the cosmic geometry. Your microcosm, Pindanda, can be directly associated and aligned with the Brahmanda, the macrocosm. So just by doing these uh, dance postures, Bharatanatyam dance postures, you are able to do so much, right? The significance to just doing a dance posture, we have no idea. We're just like, okay, it's just a dance posture. But no, there is so much more to it. The, these 108 karanas were revealed by Paramashiva himself to his Gana Tandu, who then teaches it to Bharata, the author of the Nati Shastra. The karanas incorporated into the Pratama Vinayasakrama are Urja Janu, Ardha Swastika, Anchita, Guharnita, Katachina, Nikutaka, and Valita. So all of these are stated are the types of karanas that are there in the Pratama Vinayasakrama, Dutya Vinayasakrama, and Dutya Vinayasakrama. That's which Nityanda Paramisham delivers a major conscious breakthrough to the field of yoga through incorporating these dance movements. Through Paramishiva's in-depth instructions, energy and movements is taken to the next level as seen in the example of Karana. The, this is the scriptural reference and the Akashic revelation goes. On the left side, Pushpata in the hand put in Argata Chandra and Sanata on the side results in Tala Pushpau Tha. The ne next slide. Next slide. Okay. So, um, and, uh, I would just like to close the loop on the Karana component. So, just doing these Karanas, right? The source of these Karanas are Bhagavan Paramashiva himself, who taught this whole science to one of his disciples, who then taught to Bharata and from there it came as a Natya Shastra, the source scriptures that all the uh, Bharatanatyam itself came from, right? So these are the postures that we incorporate in Kailasa's Nityanda Yoga. So our Kundalini is awakened and we are able to match ourselves to the macrocosm. So Karana is the direct push for our body to get aligned to the macrocosm. So the next is a very, very important component. This is the sixth component of the 12 components called visualization. So for the previous, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the scriptural reference of visualization, the transition goes, when seen with the sight of pure knowledge, the universe appears filled with the essence of Brahman, the ultimate expansive consciousness. 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 It is that sight, drishti, which uplifts and raises, not the looking at the tip of one's nose. In the science of yoga, context and intentions are everything. Why you bend your body matters. For whatever intention you move the body, that experience will be delivered to you. That is why in Kailasa's Nityanda Yoga, we maintain the space of yoga as a ritual, as a direct connection between Paramashiva and us. With every asana, it is important to maintain a strong visualization of that asana. So the context of visualization is when you are performing a certain asana in Kailasa's Nityanda Yoga, you will be told to visualize a certain object, a certain god or a certain goddess. Understand it is not just a mere visualization. The power of visualization is still there in us. What we visualize, we have the possibility for it to materialize outside as a reality. Bhagavan Paramashiva, Swamiji himself says that in one of his discourses that the power of visualization is when you visualize, you should be able to materialize, it, materialize that in your hand. For example, if you visualize a gold ring, you should be able to materialize that on your hand right away. That is the power of visualization. So when certain visualizations are given in, in this uh, yoga sequence, understand you are able to embody that attribute of that god, goddesses, or you're able to bend your body like that object or be that be that object, be that god, be that goddess while doing the asana. You are able to get into oneness when it comes to visualization. So many asanas names are a direct meditation upon different gods and goddesses. Some asanas take the form of specific animals or other living creatures. When we keep a clear visualization of each form we are embodying, the body can settle into the depth experience of each and every posture. 
So many times Paramashiva himself tells in the scriptures that oneness can be experienced through seeing him in everything. In each and every point, we bring our gaze to. Through the sequence of 108, 108 asanas, you will be guided to meditate upon specific visualizations for each asana. The next is Japa. The seventh component is Japa. Japa is the internal chanting of a mantra with the visualization of it rotating around the throat center in a circular way, allowing the yogi to feel the mild vibration of that mantra. When the chanting, where and uh, when chanting, an energized where an energized rudraksha bead exactly on the Vishuddhi chakra in the hollow of the throat, right? That is right here, right in the center. This is the place where the air is getting converted into sound. If you were energized Rudraksha there, constantly every word coming out will have the quote of that mantra. It becomes like the Ajapa Ajapa. You will see this Rudraksha and the mild vibration meeting and the Kundalini in you will be awakened. Ajapa Ajapa is one of the most powerful process and technique. It releases a certain kind of energy from our body and nectar from the throat. When you do a japa japa, it is not that every second you chant once, your heart chants, your lungs chant, your throat chants. The more and more deep it goes into your being, more and more parts of your being resonates with that. Mahavakya mantras represent the ultimate mantras of all mantras used to invoke the divine presence. Throughout the Tritya Vinyasakrama, we implement mantras, not just Tritya Vinyasakrama, through all the four Vinyasakramas, we implement mantras and Mahavakyas is a powerful japa. So directly, uh, the SP Chintana Paramashivam has given us Mahavakyas for each and every asana, right? Mahavakyas being the ultimate mantras of all mantras, each and every asana uh, in Kailasa Chintana Yoga it has a Mahavakya incorporated. So directly you're able to experience the space of Paramashiva, the powers of Paramashiva and everything that you say is aligned to your Vak Shakti and will manifest as a reality. So these mantras were, a gift, were gifted by the SP Chintana Paramashiva to, the direct, to direct connect us to Paramashiva himself. The following are the japas used throughout the 108 asanas. So the japas go like Soham, Shivoham, Paramashivoham, Sadashivoham, Mahasadashivoham. These are just a few japas that I am naming, but we have more in the Vinyasakramas, uh, Kailasas in the Yoga. And these are the Mahavakyas that can directly align you to uh, manifesting the space of Paramashiva and also align you to your Vak Shakti. So everything that you say come true, everything that you want as reality can just come through in literally a second the next component is the chanting that is a very very important uh, component of the whole uh, kailasa Nityananda yoga which is also a unique uh, component so the next slide yes so um, uh, the translation of the previous uh, scriptural references by the grace of the deity being adorned one will not face destruction even in the dream state if one chants mantra 12 times every day so what is a mantra exactly Mantra is a Sanskrit word that describes a sacred utterance, a sound, a syllable, a single word or a group of words. A mantra has spiritual powers with or without syntactic or literal meaning. A disciple needs to be initiated into a mantra by his guru using the right procedure, mantra diksha, for the mantra to have its maximum potency for that individual. It is given by the Guru and received with gratitude and respect by the disciple. Clear instructions are given about the number of repetitions, the right speed and duration of chanting in order to experience the truth of the mantra. So understand, we are all uh, beautifully uh, initiated by Swamiji. So we are already the initiated disciples of the SP Chintanda Paramishram and we are already ready and uh, prepared for acquiring the best, highest states of Paramishiva. And we are also ready to manifest the best of the best through all these components because we are already initiated. Bhagwan uh, SP Chintanda Paramishram has already initiated us beautifully through his discourses, through many of the initiations that he has personally had. All of that are a direct initiation to our bodies, to our beings. So we are able to manifest in different, different levels, not just yoga, through manifesting powers, through manifesting a reality and through everything. Paramashiva is light, that is consciousness, while Paramashiva Shakti is sound, that is creation. By mantras, a yogi can unclutch from external things and be absorbed in the sounds of the mantra. The goal is to focus more and more on subtle sound. By abandoning the thoughts, a yogi learns to listen to the nada. Nada is a sound which is based on the premise that the entire cosmos consists of sound vibration. 
the practice of listening to nada leads to oneness with the ultimate with mahasara shiva actually beautifully swamiji says in one of his discourses that if you want to really listen then you go out in an open space and listen to the cosmos listen to the air listen to the listen to the environment listen to the nature when you are able to listen to that then you're really then you're you then then you are really a uh, you're a real listener you are able to listen to that subtle sound of the cosmos of the nature you really are a listener so the practice of listening leads to oneness with the ultimate so this can be a small technique all of you can try to get to that space uh the space of oneness with parameshwara himself therefore mantras lead a yogi to live and radiate the state and space of parameshwara when the body bends in a sequence of asanas posture the aura that is the energy surrounding any person opens up therefore only the highest vibrational sounds should be entering the space that is why in kailasa's nityananda yoga the sanskrit pramanas that is the scriptural references from the source text the sanskrit pramanas are basically either uh, apta pramana or shastra pramana are continuously chanted out loud <coughs> throughout the vinyasa krama While Adi Shakti is sound creation, by mantras a yogi can unclutch from external things and be absorbed in the sounds of the mantra. The goal is to focus more and more on the subtle sound. By abandoning the thoughts, a yogi learns to listen to the nada. Nada is a sound which is based on the premise that the entire cosmos consists of sound vibration. The practice of listening to nada leads to oneness with the ultimate. When the body bends in a sequence of asanas, the aura opens up. Therefore, only the highest vibrational sounds should be entering that space. That is why in the Nityananda Yoga sequences, the Sanskrit pramanas, scriptural references from source texts, are continuously chanted out loud throughout the Nityananda Yoga sequences. Another component of Nityananda Yoga is japa. Japa is the internal chanting of a mantra with the visualization of it rotating around the throat in a circular way allowing the yogi to feel the mild vibration of that mantra when chanting wear an energized rudraksha bead exactly on the vishuddhi chakra in the hollow of the throat this is the place where the air is getting converted into sound if you wear energized rudraksha there constantly every word coming out will have the coat of that mantra You will see this rudraksha and the mild vibration meeting and the kundalini in you will be awakened. Japa japa is one of the most yeah, powerful processes and techniques. It releases a certain kind of energy from your body and nectar from the throat. Bija mantras, seed mantras Yes, sorry for the technical glitch. Now we'll be moving on uh, to the component, uh, chanting component of the twelve components. That's the eighth one. Uh, yes, can we just, yeah, as the aura or energy body is vulnerable and opened up while bending the body in yoga, the sounds listen to matter deeply. Whatever verbalizations you hear during the time impacts your consciousness directly. So the Sanskrit words of Parameshwara are the most powerful verbalizations, and that is exactly what we use while we are doing the yoga. The next is weightlifting. Long before the rise of modern day bodybuilding methods in the Vedic civilization, weights were applied to the body as a method to raise Kundalini. 
expands one consci one's consciousness and connect to the divine paramashiva the spiritual nitya and the paramashivam has yet again revealed another ancient science that breaks the mold and box that yoga has been placed into if you want to truly expand your yoga practice on the pra practice on the mat simply apply, apply external weight to the body throughout his divine leela the spiritual nitya and the paramashivam has stated on a number of occasions of the importance of building the physical body and how it leads to various different benefits you will stop falling into depression you will become centered into integrity and you will go beyond tiredness all of this can just happen by you lifting weights this is why the spiritual nitya and the paramashivam says weight lifting is a spiritual quality i strongly promote support all the activities of you working on your body like weight lifting body building and everything related to that with this as a part of his vision for humanity the spiritual nitya and the paramashivam has done intense self research and has had a number of akashic revelations that is the revelations from the cosmos directly and has shared how this science has lived by the nath panthis the nath sampradaya yogis who used weights in combination with their yoga practices from heavy stones to wooden logs weight lifting is not something new to vedic tradition there are various benefits of adding weights such as an increase in flexibility improvement in strength and the deep heavy breathing or pranayama that is involved the ancient method of weight lifting built into the yoga asana practice is a yogic science involving traditional weights called karanakate commonly known today as karalakate and is a reason why the natha yogis are called karna yogis a karna kate is a form of wooden stick or heavy wood held in either one or both hands today the sph nitya and the paramashivam has revived and evolved yet another vedic science this time with the revelation of adding weights in the form of karna kates in the various kailasas nitanda yoga asana sequences which is being gifted to humanity for the first time in the tritya vinyasa krama dvitya vinyasa krama and prathama vinyasa krama sequence However the SPH Nitya and the Parameshwaram says there should be clear definitions of what weight should be used at the beginning and how that weight should be dispersed as you progress he says the nath yogis do not believe in having equal weights in both the hands they say that on one side you should have a different weight if you are made your left side left left side should have more weight if you are a female your right side should have more weight so they have a clear proportion the unique method of utilizing weights with a specific hand also leads to amazing health benefits in another akashic revelation the speech nitya and the paramashivam revealed that anyone with a heart problem could add half kg weight to the right hand and it will it will be completely healed thus by adding weights with yoga it will completely heal the whole body in various dimensions understand it is not just mere weight lifting it is completely the science of weight lifting is different like in the modern day you would see people just lifting 5 kg 10 kg can go up to 300 pounds they can lift so many weights but the context of why they lifting what they lifting can actually impact the body directly here the science the science from hinduism is very specific on how much weight you have to lift what side if you are a male if which gender what how much weight you have to lift to that detail we are to that detail these revelations have been compiled by swami ji and he has put together this whole thing in kailasas nitanda yoga so you would be able to reap each and every benefit that i have stated before through just practicing kailasas nitanda yoga and with the initiation of guru you'll be easily reaping all these benefits and you'll be seeing a different dimension of yourself the 10th component of the 12 components of kailasas nitanda yoga is the mandalas mandala is a representation of the cosmos the human body is analogous to the cosmos itself like how a body the microcosm is um, a map to the macrocosm that is the cosmos just like that mandala is a representation of the cosmos too so in sph's own words mandalas and yantras correspond to the internal structure of retinal and geniculate cells their construction is based on the tantric seers intuitive knowledge of the mind nature its relationship with subtle channels of energy that is the nadis in the body and the human need for a symbolic life yantra is a diagram into which a deity can be invited by using the corresponding mantra they can be used towards achieving oneness or self realization the sim symbolism of yantra represents a universal pattern and the mantra the cosmic sound so just by having a mandala or a yantra in front of us just by the proper mantra chanted the proper octave the proper intonation that can directly invoke 
your deity in front of you and that deity can bestow upon you the experience of oneness the combination of the two helps the sadhak that is a yogi performing the yoga to transcend the normal frame of reference and achieve a higher state of awareness in which the individual being and the universal being become one and the same this is a shastra pramana from the deva rahasya revealed by bhairava the translation goes now i shall reveal the yantra of bhavani bhavani who is adorned with the moola mantra and that which bestows all siddhis the shri chakra of bhavani that resonates with state of bliss has a nindu trikona has a hexagon circle nagara kala daladhyam it has three circles it has three houses called bhu so this is one of the most powerful uh, mandalas of all mandalas the shri yantra mandala represents the cosmic form the diagram of evolution and development of the whole cosmos the form of a human organism the diagram of the inner circuits of the body and the form of goddess tripura sundari because the goddess is energy which pervades the entire phenomenal world so the mandala shri chakra has all these three incorporated and this is commonly used in our uh, yoga in the in the shri chakra the five downward pointing triangles or shakti triangles are manifested as five tan mantras sound touch sight taste and smell five mahabhutas akasha air fire water and earth five sense organs that is ear skin eye tongue and nose and five organs of action hands feet mouth genitals and anus in the human body these five elements are skin nerves flesh fat and bones so these are the representations of those five tri- downward pointing triangles in the shri chakra mandala the four upward pointing triangles which are co- which are called shiva triangles represents the male energy and exist as chitta that is being buddhi intellect ahankar ego and manas mind the bindu circle in the center represents the divine mother the bindu in the sahasrara chakra represents the individual consciousness which is a self jiva in the tritya vinyasa krama we will be practicing yoga on the mat along with shri yantras energized by the sph nitanda parameshwaram with the presence of this mandala the pure consciousness of parameshwara and parameshwara shakti will be infused into the bhaya memory the next uh, the next component the 11th component is abharana in the vedagamic lifestyle abharana or jewelry is not only worn for decorative purposes but has a spiritual significance each metal and jewel holds a certain energy and provides specific benefits to the body when worn as a result people adorn themselves fully from head to toe the beauty about hinduism is that every step we take in our lives has a major reason why we do what we do it's not just merely wearing a jewelry not just wearing the dress you like not just wearing kumkum when you feel like it no every single thing that we do in hinduism in living a hindu life has a major major reason on why we do what we do and it inevitably leads us to understand that we are divine so each and every step hinduism lifestyle facilitates us to understand that we are divine each and every second of our life right always empowering us with that powerful cognition from the dress we wear to the to the jewelries we wear it all ha- holds meaning it's not just empty um empty presentations happening in front of you but has meaningful uh, uh meaningful happenings that are the meaningful uh, reasons on why we are doing what we do So Rudraksha jewelry is a traditional abharana worn by Parameshwara himself and while performing the four vinyasa kramas uh, uh, performing the four vinyasa kramas as a manifestation of the tear drop from Parameshwara's third eye the rudraksha being the manifestation of the uh, manifestation of the tear drop from Parameshwara's third eye the rudraksha energy bead is able to hold and radiate energy unlike any other stone the sundara the sundara vadam and the kantamala are the chosen abharana by the spirit nitanda parameshwaram for the vinyasa kramas sequence so parameshwara says specifically mentions how shiva bhakta should adorn themselves so that is uh, that is a very very uh, interesting segment of nitanda kalasa nitanda yoga the way you present yourself the way you dress up also matters a lot when it comes to a uh, yoga so you will be wo- you will be wearing um, sundara varam that is hooped earrings with rudraksha beads and you'll be wearing a kanta mala this can this is given to you when you take uh, the vishesh diksha and sivit diksha by with uh, uh, from swami ji and the vibhuti the sacred ash is applied on your forehead 
and your body if you're a male there are 16 points while if you're a female there are like two points you have to apply uh, sacred diachons this is a scriptural reference for the abhrana and the revelation goes a shiva bhakta should wear rudraksha around his crown earring chain uh, earring chain around the ear armlet at all times and specifically around the stomach that is kukshi bandha while he is sleeping drinking etc the sundravadam are the traditional rudraksha earrings which provide balance to the body while performing the uh, performing the uh, the vinyasa kramas they also increase the space of listening in the yogi allowing them to tune their body to the cosmic geometry during the practice wearing the rudraksha necklace on the vishuddhi chakra as the kantamala given by the guru radiates the energy of the mantra initiated by the guru acting as a mechanized japa for the yogi performing the pratima vinyasa krama dvitiya vinyasa krama and tritiya vinyasa krama sequence while wearing the kantamala and sundravadam take sundravadam takes the ritual of yoga to the next level infusing the yogi with master's energy and oneness space at all times now we are on to our last and final component that is the aushadha Aushadha is a sacred alchemy science from the ancient Siddha tra- tradition. It combines sacred herbs, prana, the cosmic uh, force energy, and most importantly, the Shakti Pada, the entanglement energy of Paramashiva, the ultimate, which can be ingested or physically applied to the to to uh, enter into the body. Through this ancient science, the state, space, and powers of Paramashiva can be experienced, giving access to the 25 states of consciousness. Just by applying Aushadha or taking the Aushadha internally can actually make you achieve the 25 states of consciousness, Bhagavan Paramashiva has clearly stated. Like how a perfect mirror reflects the sun perfectly, so does a perfect body reflects consciousness. The science of Aushadha, that is sacred herbs prepared as per Agamas, is a way to make the body like a pure mirror. Because certain herbs are capable of holding thought currents and transferring them into you, they can be infused with the oneness experience during the Aushadha making process and directly consumed. Aushadha heals the physical, physiological and psychological components of your being by tempering and transmitting the whole system, allowing you to be a pure reflection of Paramashiva, the pure superconsciousness. As a direct science from the Agamas, it is a direct teaching of Paramashiva, Rehivai Padi Avatar, to raise humanity to the next level of consciousness. Aushadha is a key component of authentic yoga to fully engage all the senses and stimulate the body through the alchemical processes. The Aushadhas selected for this process are turmeric, that is turmeric, kumkum, that is a processed turmeric, nyananjan, that is uh, the divine eyeliner, and sandalwood. Turmeric is one of the most powerful ways to detoxify the body and absorb higher levels of prana throughout your yoga practice. It has the property of entering the system through the skin and directly absorbing neurotoxins built up in the body. Every micro milligram of turmeric that gets into your system will clean 10 times that of fluoride toxin that is there in your body. Turmeric is applied to the temples to completely detoxify the entire system and help you manifest powers of Paramashiva. So before you start the Nityananda Yoga, always make sure to take some turmeric and apply it right in, on your temples. And sandalwood is used to invoke divine energies. It is one of the most powerful medicines in Ayurveda for detoxing, cooling the body, healing wounds and healthy skin and uh, for achieving healthy skin. It is famous for its anti-aging qualities, but also its spiritual properties like clearing the mind and reducing stress. The SPH Nityananda Paramashim uses sandalwood as one of the components in all his Aushadha processes. Paramashiva reveals Jnana Anjali Shri Guru Gita to Devi. Agnyana Timira Andasya Jnana Anjali Shalakaya Chakshuram Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha In this, uh, the translation goes, one who removes the blinding darkness of the eyes caused by the absence of true liberating knowledge by applying Yananjan, the sacred black eyeliner, anointing the three eyes, which is of the essence and biomemory of pure knowledge and awakens the all-pervasive infinite eyes, Chakshu, the, inter, the intra-organin, intra-organ through which all that is, is seen. Onto that, Sri Guru, I surrender. His Divine Holiness, the Espace Mitya and the Paramashram, reveals the benefits of turmeric and kumkum. Uh, the Akashic revelation goes, wrapping the turmeric and applying kumkum that detoxifies the intra-organ called third eye that is there uh, between your brow center. Putting your attention on the third eye uh, activates something called agnya, 
means agnya means the energy to activate the intra organ called third eye happens by putting your attention on it okay so this ends our full session on the 12 components that is incorporated in our kailasas nitanda yoga so now that all of you know in depth and in detail why why each of these components are there in kailasas nitanda yoga you will be practicing all of these components with intensity and with awareness on why you're doing what you're doing with this knowledge if you start off your kailasas nitanda yoga you will be able to manifest all the health health benefits you will be able to manifest space of parameshwara and you'll be able to manifest all the uh, all the powers parameshwara possesses right so with this knowledge that is imparted through this beautiful science that swamiji has compiled through kailasas nitanda yoga when you commence your yoga with this you will be able to see a new dimension of yourself you will be able to manifest the best body you want the best self through this yoga so to always uh, to start kailasas nitanda yoga i am just going to be reading out what is normally needed for the class a yoga mat uh, a normal yoga mat or a yoga mat made of cork a hand towel or wristband if if you require a bottle of water can be kept in the side and always have an open mind do not judge do not have your own opinions drop all of that surrender all of that to the feet of swami ji drop all your perceptions your judgments your limited cognitions and then start your kailasas nitanda yoga then you will be able to see the real uh, experience you'll be able to experience the reality of what yoga truly is that is being told by parameshwar himself next yes so before you do the yoga these are the tips that you have to keep in mind so do not eat for at least 2 or 3 hours before performing the yoga normally kailasas nitanda yoga is performed at 4 am in the morning during the brahma murta time the significance on why we perform yoga during the brahma murta time is that swami ji beautifully ex- explains in his discourse that we are like a peeled banana in the morning like how a needle can go right across a peeled banana without any um, hesitance or resistance just like that our body is during brahma murta time so when we practice yoga doing the asana doing the pranayama chanting the mantras doing the japa visualizing visualizing certain gods goddesses all of that directly gets down into your myo memory and your muscle memory so practicing yoga early in the morning is always suggested and if you do want to practice yoga not in the morning and some other day make sure you don't eat at least for 2 to 3 hours before and and drink a lot of water drink a couple of glasses of water one hour before performing yoga to ensure your body is hydrated and ensure to drink plenty of water after performing yoga and wear clothes that allow you to allow your body to move freely and do not shower immediately after performing yoga allow the body temperature to settle to normal wait for at least 15 minutes before consuming any food after performing yoga how to of the asanas for the practice before practicing the asanas what you can do once you are familiar with the series of asanas practice in kailasas nitanda yoga before performing each asana develop a habit of taking a moment to visualize yourself in the asana so it's always better if you come across any complicated asana it's always better if you visualize yourself doing that asana already so when you take a moment to mentally perform the asana you are awakening the body muscles intelligence right when the body is prepared mentally when the visualization is practiced the body will flow harmoniously into the posture then entire asana practice will become a lot easier and much more enjoyable while practicing these asanas while performing the yoga asanas as much as possible try to consciously do the following smile softly to yourself avoid strain and tension to show on your face it can change your entire performance and experience of the posture keep the eyes soft wide and always ready for all balancing postures always concentrate the gaze on one point in front of you or the floor when the eyes are still the mind will be still therefore the entire body will be still this is really true so when you come across any asanas that require your utmost focus and concentration for you to balance in the asana always have one single uh, drishti point right concentrate yourself concentrate your gaze on that one single point then you'll automatically see how your body completely aligns and just balances by itself once you are in a posture do not shift or fidget if you are uncomfortable come out of the posture and repeat it with more awareness remember while performing the postures that you are an embodiment of relaxed blissful energy with each moment you are moving with bliss each time you are inhaling bliss energy and exhaling bliss energy 
So with this, we'll be entering into the ritual of Nityananda Yoga. So now that we all know, we all have the proper and detailed knowledge on these 12 components that are incorporated in our yoga. Now we'll be able to practice them with more awareness, with more understanding and with more uh, uh, knowledge of what is going to happen when we do it, right? Now that this knowledge is imparted to all of you, start off your yoga with this. And when you do this, when you do, when you come into yoga with this knowledge, you will be able to see that it will be unlike any other experience we've gotten. So with this, we will be ending our first uh, session and we'll be ending our session with the Purna Mantra. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashate Om Shanti 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 Hi Hari Om Tatsat Sarvam Bhagavachi Nityananda Paramashiva Paduka Pranamasu Om Nityanandam And with this stay tuned for the next session that are lined up for you to experience for on today's International Yoga Day Festival. Thank you Nityanandam. Syllables, mantras used to invoke certain deities. Bijap mantras correlate to the specific chakras as we engage them, amplifying their power. Another component of Nithyananda Yoga is mandalas. Mandala is a representation of the cosmos. The human body is the embodiment to the cosmos itself. Mandalas, representing the cosmos, and yantras, representing a particular deity, correspond to the internal structure of retinal and geniculate cells. Their construction is based on the tantric seer's intuitive knowledge of the mind's nature. Its relationship with subtle channels of energy, nadis, in the body, and the human need for a symbolic life. The symbolism of Yantra represents a universal pattern and the mantra, the cosmic sound. The combination of the two helps the sadhak, yogi performing the yoga, to transcend the normal frame of reference and achieve a higher state of awareness, in which the individual being and the universal being are one. Another component of Nithyana Yoga is Aushada. Aushada is an esoteric science from the Siddha tradition which is used to achieve the state, space and powers of Mahasadashiva and gain access to the 25 states of consciousness. Like how a perfect mirror reflects the sun perfectly, so does a perfect body reflect consciousness. The science of Aushada, sacred herbs prepared as per Agama, is a way to make the body like a pure mirror. Aushira is a key component of authentic yoga to fully engage all the senses and stimulate the body through all chemical processes. Yet another unique component of Nithyananda Yoga is Kalana. The Natya Shastra describes the combined movement of the hands and feet as a karana in sacred dance. It involves the synchronized movements of the feet, hips, hands and even the fingers. The 108 karanas can be seen frozen in various temple sculptures and were used in the sacred dance. For the very first time, His Divine Holiness Paramahamsa Nityananda reveals the effect of karanas on the body and the mind and the breathing patterns that they are triggering. Performing the karanas puts you into a state of high awareness of your body, engaging multiple body parts at the same time. His Divine Holiness Paramahamsa Nityananda delivers a major conscious breakthrough to the field of yoga through incorporating these dance movements. Another component of Nityananda Yoga is weightlifting. Long before the rise of modern-day bodybuilding methods, weights were applied to the body as a method to raise kundalini, expand one's consciousness, and connect to the divine, Paramashiva. This is why His Divine Holiness Paramahamsa Nityananda says, weightlifting is a spiritual quality. 
He has done intense self-research and has had a number of Akashic revelations, revelations from the cosmic archives, and has shared how this science was lived by the Natasampradaya yogis, who used weights in combination with their yoga practices. From heavy stones to wooden logs, weightlifting is not something new to the Vedic tradition. Adding weights with yoga, it will completely heal the whole body in various dimensions. Human beings live their lives in a fragmented way. That is why so many obstacles are faced throughout their life. As they imbibe the Nithyanda Yoga in their lives, they reintegrate the various fragments of their being and reestablish themselves into a complete being. That is because Nithyananda Yoga awakens the various strands of DNA in your body. The human body contains 12 strands of DNA, which allows us to access 12 dimensions of conscious awareness. The 12th dimension being the Parama Shiva, the ultimate Shiva, which can't be described. When you experience the 12th dimension, you are an incarnation. As these strands of DNA are awakened, you will gain more depth in life and more length of life. With the interdimensional 12 strand DNA activation, which mainly happens through initiation, you have access to 10 times the information available from your DNA. This means that you can just directly download anything from the cosmic archives. Proper practice of yoga as per Sadashiva's instruction means imbibing his DNA into you literally having cosmic union with him. Through Nityananda Yoga, you'll experience the ultimate union with the divine, Paramashiva. Paramashivoham is a boon to humanity from his divine holiness as an opportunity to imbibe Parama Yoga and experience the ultimate in each dimension of your life. You're going to have the Parama Yoga revealed by Paramashiva ultimate Shiva. It is going to be the expression of the ultimate yoga. Understand the ultimate secrets of union with the cosmos is yoga. All the ultimate truths will be revealed to you in this Parama Shivoham, gifted to you in this Parama Shivoham. Om Nityananda Parama Shivoham Yoga has become an $80 billion industry, incorporating everything you could think of from animals to food. And everyone is looking to get their share, be it through expensive apparel or sponsored Instagram posts. This might look fashionable and harmless, but what you don't understand is the detrimental effects it has on your consciousness. When you're practicing authentic yoga, you're working with an independent intelligence, a science to awaken the inner potential energy within you. When you add your own twist to yoga, it changes this internal process and brings a different effect on your physiology, psychology, and neurology. Some people practice yoga to build a strong physique, for the healing of an ailment, or for relieving stress and anxiety. However, throughout the years, the original source of yoga has been lost and the entire science has been diluted. Many of the traditional yogic asanas and their context have completely disappeared from the mainstream practice. Yoga is not just about asanas, but aligning the body to the cosmic geometry and experiencing different states and dimensions. To miss this context is missing the whole purpose of yoga. Adi Yogi, Sadashiva, is the creator of yoga. He delivered the original yogic scriptures through the Vedas and Agamas as a way to experience the ultimate through our bodies. After the revelation of yoga by Sadashiva himself, Great yogis and sadhus practiced yoga to acquire the best physique and physiology to manifest the state and powers of Sadashiva. This is authentic yoga. Agoris, sadhus, sannyasis have always exemplified the yogic powers and demonstrated incredible feats. As recently as a few centuries back, 
powerful yogis roam the earth shamelessly showcasing these powers. However, an unknown enemy violently attacked the very foundation of Hinduism. Fueled by the desire for power and control, strategic acts of pillaging, mass starvation, and cultural genocide cheated the modern Hindu into believing their own history as mythology. Today, we live in a society where child obesity has become accepted, cancer is almost anticipated, and depression and suicide is at an all-time high. This is a distant sight from the peak of human potential described in the Vedas and Agamas. Ramam Sanitinanda, the cosmos itself, landed as a lightning bolt and revived the authentic yoga from the source. He is taking humans and making them superhumans with yogic bodies meant for manifesting powers. For the first time, Swamiji is reintroducing the Shastra Pramanas and reviving the purest form of yoga. He has already collected, preserved, translated, and delivered to the world many of the original yogic scriptures, which were virtually inaccessible. He is the only being teaching yoga based on authentic Hindu Shastras, and it is the only yoga for manifesting Shaktis, the amazing powers of Sadashiva. As a lifelong yogi and avatar, Swamiji is able to give an experiential understanding to his disciples by transmitting the state and space of a yogi. With two world records in Shivastamba Yoga and Kundalini Raju Yoga, he is taking the world of yoga by storm. He has published 108 plus Nitya Kriyas, 900 plus yogic asanas, 300 plus yogic techniques, 600 meditation techniques, and much more. He has tens of thousands of initiated yogis worldwide. He continues to give breakthroughs to all his disciples by initiating them into new yogic powers. His vision is to make Nityananda Yoga the certifying authority on yoga as per the Vedic scriptures to bring authenticity back to the practice. He will have thousands of Nityananda Yoga Acharyas ordained to share this authentic science with the world. And to verify everything with Shastra Pramana and Apta Pramana, he intends to build the world's largest library of yogic techniques authenticated by the yogic scriptures. He is establishing yoga as a powerful science to explore your possibilities, manifest shaktis, and explore the 25 states of consciousness and 11 dimensions of the universe. Presenting Kailasa's Nityananda Yoga Festival 2022, the most authentic yoga celebration on International Yoga Day. Join us online for this full day yoga festival directly from the original source scriptures, June 21st from 8 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. Indian Standard Time. Experience more than 12 hours of free yoga sessions on yoga, meditation, pranayama, and revelations from scriptures dated thousands of years before Patanjali's Yoga Sutras. Join various enlightened talks, discussions, and seminars from Third Eye Awakened Yogis, all under the guidance of the Supreme Pontiff of Hinduism, Bhagavan Nityananda Paramashivam, the born yogi and avatar, whose mission is to revive and re-gift to the world the various authentic yoga sciences. Experience the profound Kriya techniques that completely detoxify the body, lift you out of depression, and awaken your Kundalini special seminars in how to begin an authentic yoga class, which way your body should face, what should be applied to your body, and the mantras to chant before you begin. Participate in yet another opportunity for a world record, and the grand finale of the day's events, join the inaugural Dvitya Vinyasa Krama Yoga class, the 308 yoga asana sequence of traditional postures and be one of the first to download the Nithyananda Yoga Padati, which includes the 108, 308, and 508 asana sequences, how to perform them along with each of their 12 components. Enjoy this full day yoga event by learning directly from the scriptures. Hosted from the auspicious Nityanandeshwara Paramashiva Devalayam at Adi Kailasa Nityananda Saravanya Pitam. An entirely free event enjoyed from the comfort of your own home. Register now at the link below and save the day's schedule June 21st, 2022, for the most authentic yoga event of the year, Kailasa's Nityananda Yoga Festival 2022.
Yoga has become an $80 billion industry, incorporating everything you could think of from animals to food. And everyone is looking to get their share, be it through expensive apparel or sponsored Instagram posts. This might look fashionable and harmless, but what you don't understand is the detrimental effects it has on your consciousness. When you're practicing authentic yoga, you're working with an independent intelligence, a science to awaken the inner potential energy within you. When you add your own twist to yoga, it changes this internal process and brings a different effect on your physiology, psychology, and neurology. Some people practice yoga to build a strong physique, for the healing of an ailment, or for relieving stress and anxiety. However, throughout the years, the original source of yoga has been lost and the entire science has been diluted. Many of the traditional yogic asanas and their context have completely disappeared from the mainstream practice. In today's world, even though the technology has improved tremendously, one of the biggest problems, if not the biggest problem that humanity is facing, is feeling disconnected from themselves, from one another, and from nature and life around them. People desperately attempt to experience connection through various ways, physical union or sex, dependence to drugs and foods, or through the internet. But unfortunately, none of these paths lead to the true connection that we're seeking. Connection is actually not what is being sought. It is actually union that humanity is seeking in so many wrong directions. Union with the ultimate is the true solution. Yoga is the only way to experience union with the ultimate. It is the path to anti-sex to go beyond sex and experience union with all the other dimensions of ourselves and the universe. His Divine Holiness, Paramahamsa Nityananda, is a born yogi. He is a living incarnation of Paramashiva as per Hinduism. He has taken birth to bring back the context and authenticate the lifestyle of Sanatana Hindu Dharma. A large component of this lifestyle is yoga. Through Nityananda Yoga, he is bringing back the authentic yoga, gifting to humanity the very science that has been lost, allowing individuals to experience the powers, state, and space of the divine, Paramashiva. Nityananda Yoga is based off of Shastanga Yoga, not Ashtanga Yoga. Unlike the Ashtanga Yoga developed by Patanjali, Sadashva's Shastanga Yoga requires the presence and initiation of the Guru. Only then the Shastanga Yoga starts. For the past several hundred years, the world has had to make do with lower levels of yogic practices. It is for this reason that despite millions of people practicing yogic techniques for years, we have yet to come across the beings who effortlessly radiate the exalted yogic state and powers of Paramashiva. After all, Paramashiva's Shastanga Yoga requires the presence of a living avatar to initiate disciples into his lofty state and space. Hence, it wasn't until His Divine Holiness Paramahamsa Nityananda revealed Nityananda Yoga that the original form of yoga was revived. It is not about building or achieving a yogic state after years of practice. Instead, it begins from the state of Paramashiva, based on initiation from the avatar, to manifest the state, space, and powers of Paramashiva. Accordingly, His Divine Holiness, Paramahamsa Nityananda, infuses so much of Paramashiva's energy in us through processes, techniques, and initiations that extraordinary possibilities naturally express through us. When His Divine Holiness transmits the highest conscious experience to us, we enjoy the experience and expression of Paramashiva called Shaktis as a lifestyle. The energy of the Divine gushes through the Master into your system through as a powerful cognition understand cessation of the mind chitta vritti niroda can never happen from there to here 
it can happen only from here to there this authentic yoga has a backbone of four levels of yoga with 12 inbuilt components the prathama vinyasa krama the dvitya vinyasa krama tritya vinyasa krama and chaturtha vinyasa krama are the four main sequences of nitinanda yoga but nitinanda yoga doesn't stop there his divine holiness is also revealing various other ancient dimensions of yoga that exist on the pole rope ground water air and more the revival of these authentic forms of yoga allows you to experience the antisex with parama shiva which is described in the sacred scriptures of shastanga yoga it literally guides one to a super conscious breakthrough then only the true experience of yoga happens through the manifestation of the powers of parama shiva this is how authentic yoga is identified understand yoga is nothing but union with cosmos it is so unfortunate the word union is very poorly mapped and understood just for physical sex please understand sex is poor man's version of union when you don't know anything you just do that that's it union is rich man's version of sex it is much beyond body biggest problem in the modern day is amputated yoga understand this is the word i use amputated yoga the angas of yoga is cut and packaged amputated yoga is the most danger to the modern day we need to give the original yoga as it is complete to the world yoga is the science which makes the divine to connect with you listen not you to divine no i'll tell you if you think man to divine you will be man forever in spirituality where you start you will remain there forever so start in right place never man to divine it is always divine to man precisely in my atma pramana i'll tell you yoga what is yoga strong cognition exploding into your system and changing your whole brain's alchemy putting you in the space beyond any description and release such intense extras into your system is yoga from my experience the postures stretching your body everything is to align your system to retain that alchemy experience what i am teaching as nityananda yoga is not one more brand yoga it is the yoga nityananda yoga is the revival of the authentic yoga as per the scriptures where the 12 components of each asana are going to be experienced you are going to have the parama yoga revealed by parama shiva ultimate shiva ultimate truth understand the ultimate secrets of union with the cosmos is yoga by practicing nitinanda yoga with these components strong roots are built within the body and ecstatic bliss is experienced hey jaranam we welcome you back to the international yoga day festival session number 2 So the session number 2 is going to be about shuddhi kriya and what exactly is shuddhi kriya and more about shuddhi kriya. So before we begin the session we will be seeing two testimonials and right after that we'll be starting the session. per per 
பேர் பிரேமாவதி அவர் பர்மாவிலேருந்து வந்தார் வந்து இங்கே வேலூரில் கல்யாணம் ஆச்சு கல்யாணம் ஆச்சு பேங்க்கில் இருந்தார் அப்புறப்புறம் அங்கங்கே மாற்றிட்டே வந்தோம் திருவண்ணாமலை வந்து சேர்ந்தோம் நாங்கள் வருவார் வீட்டுக்கு டெய்லி ஒரு ரெண்டு ரெண்டு மணி நேரம் உட்காந்துட்டு இருப்பார் உட்காந்துட்டு எழுதி இவர் கூட போயிடுவார் கோவிலில் போய் யோகா எல்லாம் சொல்லி கொடுத்துக்குன்னு அவர் பாட்டுக்கு அவர் போயிடுவார் இவர் பாட்டுக்கு இவர் வந்துடுவார் கோவிலில் போய் செய்வார் அப்புறம் அவங்க டெய்லி பண்ணிட்டு இருப்பாங்க டெய்லி வருவார் சாமி ஒன்று கூட சாப்பிட மாட்டார் கொடுத்தா கூட சாப்பிட மாட்டார் நான் திரு ரகுபதி யோகிராஜ் பி ரகுபதி அவர்களின் மகனாகிய பூபதி பேசுகிறேன் எனது தாயார் இப்பொழுது உரையாற்றினார் நமது நித்யானந்த சுவாமிகள் அவர்களை பற்றி நிறைய இருக்கிறது சொல்வதற்கு என் நான் சிறு வயதில் இருந்த பொழுது என் தந்தையாருடன் இருந்த நிகழ்வுகள் எல்லாம் எனக்கு இப்பொழுது ஞாபகத்தில் இருக்கிறது அதை உங்களுடன் பகிர்ந்து கொள்கிறேன் என் தந்தையார் இருக்கும் பொழுது அவர் கிருத்திகா மண்டபம்னு ஆயிரங்கால் மண்டபத்தில் பக்கத்தில் உள்ள கிருத்திகா மண்டபம்னு கோவில் இருக்குது அந்த கோவில் அந்த மண்டபத்தில் போயிட்டு யோகா நடத்துவார் யோகா சொல்லி கொடுக்கும்போது நம்ம நித்யாசந்த சுவாமிகள் அப்பொழுது சிறு வயது பயன் சிறுவன் அவர் வீட்டுக்கு வருவார் அம்மாவிடம் கேட்பார் குருஜி இருக்கிறாரா அப்படின்னுட்டு அம்மா என்ன சொல்லுவாங்க அப்பா தூங்கின்னு இருக்காருப்பா அப்படின்வார் அவர் நேராக போவார் அப்பா பக்கத்தில் போய் தலைமாட்டில் உட்காந்துட்டு எவ்வளோ எப்போ முழிக்கிறாரோ அது வரைக்கும் அவர் பாட்டுக்கு உட்காந்துட்டு இருப்பார் அப்புறம் அப்பா கண்ணு விழிச்ச உடனே ரெண்டு பேரும் எழுந்திரிச்சு அப்பா ஸ்நானம் செஞ்சுக்கிட்டு அவரை கூட்டிக்கிட்டு யோகா கிளாஸுக்கு போவாங்க அப்போ அப்பா சொல்லுவார் டேய் இந்த வந்திருக்கிற தம்பி இந்த தம்பியை பார் இந்த தம்பி பின்னால் எவ்வளோ பெரிய மகானாக போகிறாரு உலகம் மறியற அளவுக்கு போவாரா உல உலகத்தையே காக்கக்கூடியவராகவும் செய்வார் அவருக்கு அவ்வளோ ஞானம் இருக்குடா அப்படின்னுட்டு அவர் அப்போ சொன்னார் இப்போ உனக்கு தெரியாது நீ பின்னாடி நான் இறந்த பிறகு என்னுடைய மறைவுக்கு பிறகுதான் உனக்கு எல்லாமே தெரியும் அப்படின்னு அப்பா சொல்லுவார் அப்பொழுது எனக்கு அவ்வளோவாக தெளிவு இல்லை இப்பொழுது நான் அதை உணர்கிறேன் ஒரு தோல் இருக்கும் அந்த மான் தோல் அந்த மான் தோளில் தியா நடுராத்திரியில் அப்பா தியானம் பண்ணுவார் கண்ணை மூடிட்டு தியானம் பண்ணுவார் சில நேரத்தில் அந்த மான் தோளுக்கு மேலேயே கொஞ்சம் எழுந்திரி எழும்பி உட்காந்து தியானம் பண்ணுவார் அப்பா அப்படி பண்ணும்போது நான் பார்த்துருக்குறேன் அந்த கண் கூட பார்த்ததில் ஒரே ஒரு நிகழ்ச்சி ஒரு நாள் இரவு நான் பார்த்துக்கிட்டு இருக்கிறேன் பக்கத்து அறை அந்த அறையில் அப்பா தியானம் பண்ணின்னு இருக்கிறார் திடீர்னு கண் விழிப்பு வந்தது கண் விழிப்பு வந்தால் சின்ன லேம்ப்பு அதாவது நைட் லேம்ப் அந்த நைட் லேம்ப் சின்னதை வச்சுருப்போம் அந்த லேம்ப் ஒளி தான் இருக்குது வேறு எந்த ஒளியும் இல்லை அந்த ஒளி எல்லாம் ஹால் ஃபுல்லாக பரவி இருக்கும் அப்போது அப்பாவை நான் பார்க்குறேன் அப்பா வந்து தரையில் இருந்து ஒரு அராடி அராடி ஸ்கேல் இருக்கும் இல்லைங்களா அந்த அளவுக்கு உயரத்தில் நின்று உட்காந்துட்டு தியானம் பண்ணுறார் நான் ரொம்ப பயந்துட்டேன் ஐயோ அப்பாவா இப்படி பண்ணுறாரு ஐயோ நம்ம எப்படி ஒரு மாதிரி ஷிவரிங் ஆகிடுது சரின்னு பயத்துலேயே அம்மா கிட்டே போய் ஒரு நீங்கிட்டு கவனப்படுத்திட்டேன் நான் திருப்பத்தூரில் ஒரு ஸ்கூலில் ஒர்க் பண்ணிகிட்டு இருந்தேன் அப்போ என் ஃப்ரெண்டு வந்து விடுதி பெங்களூரில் இருக்குதுங்க விடுதி அந்த விடுதி ஆசிரமத்தில் அவர் இருந்திருக்கார் அவர் இருக்கும்போது என் ஃப்ரெண்டு போயிருக்கிறார் அந்த விடுதி ஆசிரமத்தில் என் தந்தையுடைய ஃபோட்டோ நித்யானந்த சுவாமிகள் இவங்களெல்லாம் பார்த்துட்டு வந்து என்கிட்ட வந்து பேசிகிட்டு இருந்தார் ஆ எனக்கெல்லாம் தெரியும் நித்யானந்த சுவாமிகள் தானே எல்லாம் நல்லா தெரியும் எனக்குன்னு எப்படி தெரியும் ஒன்றுனே இல்லை அவர் எங்கள் அப்பா கிட்டே குருவார் எங்கள் என் தந்தையாரிடம் இந்த அப்பா கிட்ட வீட்டுக்கு வந்து யோகாலாம் கற்றுக்கிட்டு போனவர் தான் இப்போ பெரிய மகானாக இருக்கிறாரு அப்படின்னே நீ என்ன நீ இவ்வளோ அசால்ட்டாக பேசுகிற அவர் சொல்கிறார் என் ஃப்ரெண்டுக்கு அப்போ தான் ஒதுக்கி உரைக்குது எனக்கு மனசுக்கு அது வரைக்கும் எனக்கு உரைக்கலை 
என்ன இவ்வளோ கேர்லெஸ்ஸாக பேசுகிற அவர் எவ்வளோ பெரிய மகானாகி வந்திருக்கிறாரு அந்த மகானை போய் நீ இவ்வளோ கேர்லெஸ்ஸாக பேசுகிற உங்கள் அப்பா ஃபோட்டோவை பார்த்தேன் பார்த்துட்டு ரொம்ப ஸ்டன் ஆகிட்டு ஐயோ 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 காண கிடைக்காத அரிய காட்சியாக இருக்குது அந்த தேவ அந்த தேவ புருஷனாக இருக்கிறாருன்னு சொல்லிட்டு நான் எவ்வளோ பக்தியாக அவர்கிட்ட யோகா கற்றுக்கணும் தியானம் எல்லாம் கற்றுக்கிட்டு வந்திருக்கேன் அந்த மடத்தில் போய் நீ இவ்வளோ அசால்ட்டாக பேசுகிறியே அப்படின்னு சொல்லிட்டு சொன்னார் அப்போ தான் எனக்கு மனசில் உரைக்க ஆரம்பிச்சிது திருப்பத்தூரில் அடடா நாம் இது நாள் வரைக்கும் யாரோ வந்து நம்ம அப்பாவையும் நம்ம அப்பா கிட்ட படித்த சிஷ்யர் சுவாமிகள் அவர் சொல்லணும் அவரெல்லாம் யாரோ வந்து நம்ம சொல்லணும் ஆனால் நான் உணராமல் விட்டுட்டனே ஐயோ எவ்வளோ பெரிய தப்பு பண்ணிட்டனே என் வாழ்க்கையில் நான் பெரிய தப்பு த தவறு செய்துட்டேன் உண்மையிலே அது பெரிய இழப்பு தான் எனக்கு அப்படின்னு ஆனால் மனசுக்குள்ளே நான் அவரை தியானம் பண்ணிக்கிறேன் சுவாமி நீங்கள் சிறு குழந்தையாக இருக்கும்போது நம்ம வீட்டுக்கு வந்திருக்கிறீங்க நம்மளோட நம்மலாம் எப்படி பழக்கம் பழகியிருக்கிறோம் போயிருக்கிறோம் ஆனால் அப்போ நான் உங்களை உணரலை ஆனால் இப்போ நான் உணரேன் சுவாமி உங்களுடைய அருள் உங்களுடைய பார்வை என் மீத பட்டா போதும் நான் உங்ககிட்ட வரணும்னு கூட இல்லை என்னுடைய எண்ணமானது உங்ககிட்ட கொண்டு வந்து உங்களுடைய ஞாபகம் என் மீத பட்டா அதுவே போதும் என் தாயார் சுகமாக இருக்கணும் இதுதான் நான் வேண்டிக்குவேன் சுவாமிகிட்ட கூட இப்போத்திக்கு நான் இப்போ ரொம்ப வருந்தேன் எனக்கு அது எப்படி சொல்லுவதுன்னு எனக்கு தெரியலை நீ நினச்சா கண் கலங்குது Yes, uh, we finished the first testimony. So now we'll be moving on to the next testimony before we get on to the second session of today's um, International Yoga Day Festival. So right, uh, we'll be moving on to the second testimony.
உட்கார்ந்து அவர் சண்முகன் சண்முக அண்ணாமலை நாராயணசாமி <laughs> அண்ணாண்ட முனுசாமி அண்ணாண்ட கண்ணு அவங்கெல்லாம் ஒரு பத்து பேர் வருவாங்க அந்த இவர் பேர் அந்த அசிமண்டிகார் அசிமண்டிகார் பையன் ரெண்டு பேர் வருவாங்க பேர் இல்லை பேர் அசி ரைஸ் மில்கார் போன பசங்க ரெண்டு பேர் வருவாங்க ஷண்முகன்றவர் வருவார் வலைகாரத்திலேருந்து ஷண்முகன்றவர் அவங்க தாத்தா கூட ராஜி மொழியார் கூட பாட்டுனராக கஷ்டப்பட்டாந்தவர் அவர் சண்முகன்றவர் சண்முகம் வலைகாரத்திலேருந்து ஷண்முகம் நித்தி இப்படி ஒரு சண்முகம் சாமி வந்து நித்தியானந்த சாமி வந்து குரங்கு மாதிரி ஏறுவார் தூணில் கீழே மேல் தான் ஏறுவார் மேலே கீழே ஏறி அது க கத்துவார் இது மாதிரி சத்தம் போடுவார் ஊழல் விடுவார் ரகுபதி யோ யோகி கற்றுக் கொடுப்பார் இப்படி போ இப்படி போன்னு உதவிடுவார் ரகுபதி யோகி அந்த சுவாமி சுப்பிரமணியர் உட்கார மேடையில் இப்படி அந்த ரகத்தில் மாதிரி ஒரு நாலு வருட அப்படி தூக்குவார் அப்படி உட்காந்தார் சப்பலாம் அவர் போட்டு உட்காந்து அப்படி தூக்குவார் ஜம்ப் பண்ணி தூக்குற மாதிரி அந்த ரகத்தில் ஏறி அந்த ரகத்தில் உட்காந்து நாலு நிமிஷம் மூணு நிமிஷம் அப்படியே அழுக்காக இருப்பார் அவர் யோகாசனம் கற்று தான் அப்படி ரகுபதி யோகி இருந்தார் அந்த மண்டபத்தில் மேடை சுப்பிரமணியர் மேடையில் தான் உட்காந்து கற்றுக்கிட்டு நான் பார்த்துக்கேன் நித்யானந்த சுவாமி அந்த கிருத்திக மண்டபம் தூணில் ஒரு தூண்டை யாராக தூண்டு கிடையாது அந்த அறுபத்தி இருபத்தி ஆறு முப்பத்தி ஆறு தூண் அந்த தூணில் ஏறாத தூண் கிடையாது நாலு தூண் தான் அந்த பக்கம் ஏற முடியாது நாலு செவி வச்சுருக்கல இது பூராமே ஏறுவார் பயிற்சி பண்ணுவார் தலைக்கே இப்படி கீழ்ந்து மேலே தான் ஏறுவார் இப்படி கொம்பு பார்த்த அந்த பொம்மையில் பிடிச்சி ஏறுவார் பொம்மையில் பிடிச்சி ஏறி நான் பார்த்துட்டேன் சுற்றி பூஞ்செடி இருக்கும் அதுக்கு வந்து துளசி செடி இருக்கும் அந்த இந்த நஞ்சாவட்ட செடி இருக்கும் அதுக்கெல்லாம் தண்ணி மொண்டு ஊற்றுவாங்க தொட்டியிலேருந்து முன்பு ஊற்றிட்டு நாகலிங்க மரத்துக்கு தண்ணி ஊற்றுவாங்க நாகலிங்க மரத்தில் இருந்து புஷ்பத்தை எடுத்து முருகருக்கு வைப்பாங்க நாகரிக மரத்தில் ஏறி பூ எடுத்து முருகன் வைப்பாங்க மணி ஏழே முக்கால் எட்டு மணிக்கெல்லாம் மணி ஏழே முக்கால் எட்டு மணிக்கெல்லாம் ஏழே முக்காவுக்கெல்லாம் எட்டு ஆக மாட்டேன் பள்ளிக்குள்ள கன்னியாபுரி கோயில் பள்ளிக்கு வீட்டுக்கு போய் அப்புறம் பள்ளிக்குள்ள போயிடுவாங்க நித்தியப்படி தினந்தோறும் அவங்க வந்து அஞ்சே முக்கால் ஆறுகளாக மண்டபத்தை வந்து த ஆயிடுவாங்க மண்டபத்தை வந்து தாக்கலாடாங்க நாளே கிடையாது ஒரு நாளில் பேரா மழை பெஞ்சனா அவங்க வருவாங்க வராத நாள் இல்லை என்ன மழை பெஞ்சனா அவங்க வருவாங்க அந்த யோகாசனம் பார்த்து சுவாமியை பார்க்கும் போது பார்த்தா அண்ணாமலையார் உள்ளே பார்த்த மாதிரி தான் அவருக்கு தெரியும் அதில் ஒன்றும் சந்தேகம் கிடையாது சுவாமிகள் வராது வெளியே குருதா பிறந்தா நாலாவது திருவண்ணாமலையில் வந்து முதல் சரதாத்திரி ரெண்டாவது ரமண மகாரிஷி மூணாவது வந்து விசிறி ஆதி விசிறி சாமி நாலாவது வந்து நித்யானந்த சாமி நான் சின்ன வயசுலேருந்து வண்டி விட மாட்டேன் சைக்கிள் விட மாட்டேன் அண்ணாமலையார் கோயிலுக்கு நான் நடந்து தான் போவேன் நடந்து தான் வருவேன் அவங்க பாட்டி வந்து நல்ல நித்யானந்த சுவாமிக்கு அவங்க அம்மாவுக்கு அவங்க அப்பா ராஜமூலியார் ராஜமூலியார் சம்சாரம் அவங்க தெரியும் அவங்க மாமியாரும் தெரியும் 
அதே மாதிரி அரிசி ஆணு எடுத்து என்ன சார் ரப்பர் சாம்பு அண்ணாமலை பூஜை அண்ணாமலை பூஜை ஆணு எடுத்து வந்து அண்ணாமலை பூஜை அண்ணாமலை பூஜை வந்து அரிசையா அரிசையா குடும்பமும் நல்ல பழக்கம் ரெண்டு வீடுமே எனக்கு வந்து சின்ன பிள்ளைது எனக்கு பழக்கம் எட்டு வயசுலேருந்து ரெண்டு குடும்பமே எனக்கு பழக்கம் இவங்க அவங்க இல்லை அப்புறம் தான் மண்டபத்துக்கு வந்துச்சு சின்ன பிள்ளைங்களான பழக்கம் தான் எனக்கு அவங்க மண்டபத்துக்கு வந்தால் நம்ம ஜாதி மொழியார் பேரை அனுசையம்மா பேர்னு தெரிஞ்சு வித்தியாசம் Now that we have seen these two testimonials, we will be moving on to the next session named Introduction to Kailasa Shuddhi Kriyas. You will shortly understand the relevance and the significance on why we watch these testimonials uh, when we get into the session. So we'll be beginning with uh, Sadhguru Vandanam by invoking the presence of their speech in Kriyana Paramishwam. Nityanandam paramasukadam kevalam jnana murtim dvanvatitam gagana sarusham ரெவலேஷன் Uh, give this whole science to the humanity so we'll be paying our humble obeisances and respects through chanting the guru parampara vandanam nityanandeshwara paramashiva samarambha nityanandeshwari paramashiva shakti madhyama asmadacharya paryanta vande guru parampara yes um now we'll be knowing a little about the species and the parameshwara The supreme point of Hinduism Nityananda Paramashivam is recognized recognized as the 1008th living manifestation of Paramashiva himself Paramavatara of Paramashiva as per Sanatana Hindu Dharma Hinduism and by his predecessors of enlightened masters and adepts The SPH Nityananda Paramashivam is reviving Hinduism as the 1008th Acharya Mahamandaleshwar the head for all spiritual leaders of Atal Akhada the ancient apex body of Hinduism coronated as mahamandaleshwar supreme spiritual head of maha nirvani akada largest apex monastic order and sp chintana paramshiv is the youngest mahamandaleshwar ordained as the 233rd guru mahasanidhanam of tunde mandala madinam ordained as the 293rd guru mahasanidhanam of shyamala peetha sarvagnya peetham and he is also ordained as the 23rd guru mahasanidhanam of dharma mukti swargapuram adinam and coronated as the 203rd emperor of surya vamsha surangi Samrajya. The S.P. Chintanda Paramashram is also the reigning emperor of 20 ancient traditional Hindu kingdoms and the reviver of the most ancient, most peaceful, still living and long-lasting demonstrable system that shows the possibility of peaceful coexist- coexistence amongst people, the Kailasa nation. Following the coronation to establish Kailasa worldwide at the age of 16 for past 27 years, the sph nityananda paramshiv as the face of the unified hindus has been single handedly tirelessly inspiring the dispossessed hindu diaspora to reclaim their hindu centric freedom and stand unified for the centuries old hindu genocide the 1008th living manifestation of bhagwan paramshiva the sph nityananda paramshiv stands as a unifying force for the 2 billion born and practicing hindu diaspora worldwide and establish the hindu state kailasa for the persecuted hindus in over 100 countries now a little um, the hsph nitanda paramshivam has made resolute efforts towards recognizing and legitimizing the hindu genocide which has been receiving scant consideration by global leaders and international bodies hence the hsph nitanda paramshivam founded kailasa uniting nations Now a little about uh, the first ever Hindu nation Kailasa Hinduism is the most ancient most peaceful still living and long lasting demonstrable system that shows the possibility of peaceful coexistence amongst people despite fundamental differences in their preferences and reality 
Over the last 50 years, the effects of meditation and its significant impact on stress, crime rates, violence, political decision making, and even war in local and global consciousness is well established. Unfortunately, last 200 years, forci forcibly, we are made to believe Hinduism is functional principle only for enlightenment and spirituality. It is absolutely dysfunctional for the political, social, economical system, making Hindu, Hindu family structure, Hindu social structure dysfunctional. And that has been the greatest crime done against humanity. Hinduism was one practice freely in over 56 nations across the continent from Af Afghanistan, India, Nepal, Burma, Sri Lanka, all the way to Singapore, Malaysia, and Cambodia and Indonesia, and in 200 states, 1,700 samasthanas or provinces, and 10,000 sampradayas, traditions. Over several centuries, the combined forces of foreign invasion, political upheaval, colonialism, and religious persecution systematically ended millennia of Hindu Swarajya or self-rule. Today, Hindu temples remain in few countries, but the Hindu who worshipped in them have been ethnically cleansed. The Kailasa with de facto spiritual embassies operating across over 10, 100 countries and having presence across the globe as the largest spiritual knowledge source on Hinduism is spiritually governed with a life positive, all inclusive, universal policy sourced from Hinduism, revived by the SPH Nityananda Paramashivam. Having enriched and enriched more than 1 billion individuals over the past 27 years, the Kailasa raises the voice to protect Hindus, defend Hindus, and preserve the Hindu narrative for the world. Now we'll be moving on to the session now that we know who is the SPH and we know about the Kailasa nation, the one and only Hindu nation in today's world. We'll be moving on to the introduction to Shuddhi Kriyas. Now, what is Shuddhi Kriyas, right? Why is it involved and why is it important to uh, have in our life when we are doing yoga? Why is this a very, very important segment when it comes to practicing yoga, right? Now we'll be moving on to understanding what is exactly Shuddhi Kriya. Hatha Yoga and Ayurveda give great importance to the cleansing process, right? Regular cleansing enables one to obtain maximum benefits from the practice of yoga. So cleansing, cleansing purifies the body so that it becomes ready for the higher practices of yoga. So what you heard as testimonials before this session, you heard that Raghupati Yogi, the, uh, uh, the yoga guru of the SPH Nityana Paramsham, trained uh, disciples and trained people into levitation and everything and uh, the uh, flower garland maker said that the Swamiji would climb 36 pillars and he would climb them upside down so these all come under higher practices of yoga so if you want to get to that kind of a level you should understand and make sure your body is completely cleansed and through this science that the Hinduism is giving you so the science of Shuddhi Kriyas enables one to cleanse all the toxins, neurotoxins from your body and will push you to experience a higher, exp a higher practices of yoga, right? So emotions are connected to body fluids. When these body fluids called Hume are cleansed, imbalances like anger, doubt, fear, lust, and hatred will leave your system. Te technique not only cleanse, cleanse, your, cleanse our body, but bring balance to our physiology and psychology helping us explore our possibilities, manifest the Shaktis, etc. An upside down vessel is of no use for filling with the purest water. Any amount of water poured over it will make it spill out everywhere. Now take your body. Not preparing a yogic body makes the energy just leak out from a mind-body system. Even if, you, if it, even if poured, it will not stay for long in us. So the importance of Shuddhi Kriya is already told. You have to cleanse your body for the experience, for the benefits to stay in your body longer and permanently. Or you will be experiencing it for a very temporary, very, uh, for a short while and you will not be <clears throat> uh, experiencing it all, all times. So cleaning your body, making sure all the toxins is out of your body, you can do through practicing these Shuddhi Kriyas. So uh, one of the scriptural references says, by purifying inner faculties, the mind becomes happy and concentrated. The senses are conquered and a man is qualified to witness the self. That is the power of cleansing your body. The system of yoga, the system of yoga places tremendous importance, tremendous importance on purifying the body. 
yogic literature clearly lays out techniques to keep the body purified. In the normal course of life, nerves, arteries, and all other channels of the body gradually hardens and becomes obstructed by sediments and impurities, which can cause aging as well as physical and mental ailments. In today's world, you see so many cases. People who are just 30 or above 30 look very old compared to their age. They get diseases in a very young age. You see kids less than 10 years old get major diseases and they're already bedridden. All of this is because of the built-up impurities that is there in our body through our lifestyle that we're living, through the food that we're eating, and unconsciously ha um, living a lifestyle that is really destroying our being and ourselves. Right. So we have lost the practice of Hinduism and the real practice of what has to be done for a body, because this was all considered in the ancient times. People were very um, aware of how to take care of the body, what to do, how to live long. They knew the signs to die and take rebirth and come back in the same body. All of this was all the all of this were known. And as living a Hindu lifestyle can be revived. So should the Kriyas can help you come out of all these uh, major things that you go through in your life, your uh, your diseases that you have, um, problems that you go through, your body problems, all of this can be just cured by following the science of Shuddhi Kriya. Before practicing any kind of pranayamas, asanas, or mudras, your body has to be prepared for actually imbibing and experiencing the higher uh, higher experiences for this you have to um, clean your body and we have uh, in hatha yoga the first step in hatha yoga is the purification of the physical body through basic techniques called shat karmas shat means six right so we have through neti that is a nasal pa passage cleaning we have dauti that is stomach clean cleansing nauli that is abdominal massage basti colon cleansing kapalabhati breathing technique to purify and achieve the frontal lobes and trataka blinkless gazing to purify the eyes so these are the six shat karma so the six type of cleansing methods that are there in the shuddhi kriyas so this is an atma, atma pramana an encounter for uh, an account of the spirit nitana permission if you just detoxify yourself uh, and bring yourself to Paramashivoham, I can put the energy or I can just go on blasting your third eye with energy and do the detoxification. Both are possible. But if you do the detoxification and prepare yourself little and come there, it can be 100 times more useful. The program will be 100 times more useful for you because if you have finished the first level, I will do the next level. If I have to do the first level also, okay, I will do. But the way the exponential growth which can happen in you, if you do little preparation and come, will be amazing it will be an amazing growth so whoever wants to come for the program please start detoxification process now itself even otherwise you can do detoxification toxins uh, don't do good in any way and uh, one uh, uh, Swamiji beautifully says in the discourse that I can lift in levitation even if you're 500 kgs, but I cannot lift even five grams of toxins. A clean stomach and body built by yoga is enough. Just how Arunagiri Yogi Shura, his Parma Guru, took Swamiji to Kailasa, took me to Kailasa by holding the hand. I can just lift you and take you to Kailasa. That is why I insist on Panchakriya and morning yoga. This Panchakriya will remove all toxins and remove the subtle toxins which gather together. Together. So understand the importance of cleaning all of um, cleaning your body doesn't just limit yourself for health benefits or um, just health benefits. It is much more than that. You will be able to experience all the four, 14 vertical time zones that Swamiji is talking about. You will be able to have out, uh, outer world experiences. And you will be able to understand your body better. You will know your body. You will know what your body is. And, uh, and after you get that knowledge, you will just know how to heal yourself out of any diseases that can come or attack you. Right? Understand Shakti Pada is rekindling the energy component of you and that component taking over your body and mind. Prepare your body through yoga and panchakriya. Prepare your mind with Vedic software that is integrity, authenticity, responsibility and enriching. Always be in the space of responsibility and enriching. So the five things that we'll be talking about is uh, Netra Shuddhi, Jalabasti, Jalaneti, and Haritaki, right? These are the four things that will be uh, discussed in this session. So what is Netra Shuddhi? 
right so there are tons of tons of benefits uh, uh, regarding this netra shuddhi benefits uh, th that is uh, so simple and quick cure of eye cleansing it gets rid of your body heat and burning sensation sensation in the eyes reduces itching eye strain tiredness and fatigue and puffiness energizing the eyes and improving the vision relaxing effects on an anxious mind so in this process you can actually have a eye cup right it's like a small cup you can fill water in it and you can uh put it against your eye keep keep that against your eye for uh some time keep it for a minute and after you blink your eye you do some exercises by rolling your eyes clockwise and anti clockwise and after you take the water you can literally feel the the water water which was cold will actually become warm understand that much heat is there in our body and through that we actually reduce we drastically reduce our body heat by doing this netra shuddhi right and this reduces the pressure and it also revitalizes your eye nerves so this really energizes your eye nerves because eye is an organ that is always active throughout the day it's active so it is bound to accumulate a lot of heat and relieving it off from this pressure and heat really helps your eye and it always maintains your uh, vision also so netra shuddhi is very important and uh, all of you before starting your yoga before starting your day make sure you do this the next is jalaneti Another powerful cleansing technique is called Jalaneti, which easily removes the mucus and pollutants from your nasal passage and sinuses, right? And allows air prana to flow without obstruction. Many people notice how this helps relieve allergies, colds, and sinusitis, and even claims that it prevents and manages other diseases of the respiratory tract like asthma, pneumonia, bronchitis, and pulmonary tuberculosis. on top of this swam ji has said that this also is able to subtly cleanse the third eye agnya chakra as purifying water passes through the region so basically you will have an instrument specifically designed for jalaneti for you to practice this uh, kriya so you will have like a small cup and you can fill it with water and you'll have to insert the tip inside one of your nostrils and tip your head to a correct angle where the water can come through the other passage so when this happens the mucus gets clean the cavity the sinus cavity in your face in your head everything can get cleansed just through this jalaneti right a person who has sinus uh, it's highly recommended that you start off jalaneti right away because this really cures your head uh, sinus and cures all the headaches that a person goes through Yes. So the translation to this after Ramana goes. The process of neti quickly cleanses the frontal sinuses, offers clear eyesight, and rids one of the host of diseases occurring in the region above shoulders. Then uh, the translation to this after Ramana goes. One adopts ut utkatsana in navel deep water after inserting a tube in the. Uh, this is actually jala pasti. This is another. This is the second. Uh, kriya shuddhi kriya that you can do so after inserting a tube in the anus one manipulates the anus to raise the apana vayu upwards this is basti karma so normally people who want to do uh, jala basti can actually uh, have a enema can it's called an enema can and it will come with the tube connected to the can and the tube end has a narrow uh, narrow opening that can be inserted and when that happens you are creating the water you are letting the water enter your uh, colon so when that happens you your whole colon gets completely cleansed and all the toxins that has not been flushed out properly can be completely flushed out right so if you see uh, in the us especially so many people are down with colon cancer and that is because of built up toxins that they were not able to flush out so doing this jala basti can jala basti can help you relieve all those toxins from your colon and you can have Have a very clean stomach, and this can also get rid of all your uh, major stomach diseases and all the stomach issues like gas and all of that a person normally goes through in the day-to-day -day life can be completely relieved by just practicing this jala basti. You can uh, go and order this uh, enema can, and you can see how this works. It's very simple and it's very very effective for a healthy body. So the speech revealed. Uh, a vakyaarth sadhis a direct shast pramana from paramshiva himself on the benefits of jala basti which took place between a saptarishi and devi in the presence of paramshiva they were discussing about physiology uh, physiology and health one rishi made a statement if your stomach is heavy do not believe it is a fat 
and then he strongly stated it is it is a poo it is not fat then devi asked what is the percentage and the rishi responds 3 by 4th is fat and 1 by 4th is a mala the toxin and then that is when parameshwar introduced the powerful benefits of jalabasti so it is not if your stomach is big if you if you if you have a big stomach it's not fat it is just that it's built up toxins that have not been flushed out properly so to get rid of that you have to practice jalabasti to know uh, to get get rid of all the toxins that is there in your stomach parameshwar himself said the food which is not digested in the last 48 hours is what we call mala the food which is not digested for few years is called fat he says jalabasti melts both enema melts both it cleanses both to that detail please understand everything you are going to do is to make you manifest the space of parameshwarpa today the modern science even science even shows that enemas can support weight loss remove toxins and and heavy metals from your body improve your skin immunity immunity blood pressure and even energy levels the next is haritaki haritaki is described as the sarva roga nivarani that which heals all diseases it's the drink of the gods these scriptures say that haritaki came to life when a nectar drop fell from the cup of indra the king of heaven technically haritaki is a fruit of a myrobalan plum tree and it's considered one of the most important herbs in all of ayurveda as well as the siddha medicine tradition the fruit itself is small oblong and less than an inch in size when grounded up the herb has antioxidant antimicrobial anti diabetic anti arthritic and even cardio protective properties science has begun to catch up with what the hsph said long ago that haritaki can even help purify blood which makes the heart muscles stronger and any time the heart gets even slightly stronger it helps in stopping the build up of build up of fat in the artery which reduces blood pressure on top of all this swamiji has said it's one of the wonder medicines for the brain and it is and its discovery is one of the biggest gifts to humanity also stating claiming also stating haritaki as the most powerful spiritual cleanser not just body cleanser because the oxygen level in the body increases 300% when you take haritaki he says it directly works on the non mechanical parts of the brain and when the non mechanical parts of the brain gets awakened then you're able to grasp all the spiritual truths and live nothing like haritaki that is really nectar from devaloka says his speech nityananda parameshwar so these are the important shuddhi kriyas that you have to practice if you want to experience the higher practices of yoga like those um, like those testimonials that stated how the speech was able to levitate how uh, raghupati yogi was able to make the speech stand and uh, was able to make uh, swami ji levitate for good 4 minutes half inch uh, like 3 uh, 4 inches off the ground and he was able and swami was able to climb the pillars upside down those intricate pillars in, in the kartika mandapam all of this you can do when your body is completely detoxed and if you want your body to be detox indulge yourself in this jalabasti charaneti haritaki and uh, as per chintana parameshwar recently also said that taking castor oil in the morning can do wonders to your stomach it can literally cleanse out all the toxins and diseases straight away if you start having the habit of taking castor oil in your in, in the morning every morning so you can also incorporate taking neem juice right after yoga that also purifies your blood and make sure you take haritaki every every day in the end of the uh, end of the day after your last meal after 20 minutes make sure you take haritaki to see its effect right in the morning so all of this if you if you uh, start living you will see for yourself that this is the best way to live and at the same time your body confidence your uh, self confidence everything will raise to the level of bhagwan parameshwar himself you will start radiating the space power state and super consciousness of parameshwar just by doing all this detox uh, methods from hinduism so with this i would like to end the session with the purna mantra om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate purnasya purnamadaya purnamevavashishyate om shanti 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 hi hari om tat sat
निनंदम परम सुखदम केवल ज्ञानमूर्ति द्वंद्वातीत गगन सदृश तत्वस्यालक्ष्यम एक विमलमचल सर्वदी साक्षिभूत भावातीत त्रिगुणरहित सद्गुर तम नमा Nityanandam I welcome all of you to today's International Yoga Day Kalasa Nityananda Yoga in this session we'll be going through Surya Namaskar the authentic Surya Namaskar as revealed by the scriptures and revived by the supreme quantity of Hinduism Bhagwan Shri Nityananda Paramahansa An introduction to Surya Namaskar Surya Namaskar is translated as eternal salutations to the sun Surya means sun and namaskar means salutations the sun in vedic culture is symbolic of consciousness and therefore has been worshiped daily in this tradition our body is equipped with innate intelligence to produce energy from the sun according to the ancient science of ayurveda the human organism is the ultimate system on planet earth it is a living memory bank a storehouse of enormous intelligence of all the other bodies on earth kalasas nityananda yoga aligns to the science of if plants can produce energy directly from the sun why can't man after all every human being is composed of the same five elements earth water fire air and ether as rest of the universe the practice of surya namaskar will awaken the body intelligence to directly create energy from the sun for centuries we have suppressed denied and forgotten the fact that the body has its own intelligence the wisdom of the ages is stored in each and every cell the ancient rishis understood this truth and therefore declared time and again that we are filled with cosmic consciousness every cell in the body actively responds to environmental stimuli both internal and external according to the ancient hindu text the body is a wonderful mechanism that has the intelligence and capacity to produce energy surya namaskar is designed to access the etheric energy all around us when performed facing the east in the first rays of the morning sun along with the appropriate breathing technique and mantra the effect on the individual mind body and spirit is incomparable early morning at dawn when the sun bus on the horizon the air is filled with prana shakti life force energy that is why it is advised to do sun salutations at that time of the morning so we acquire maximum benefit from our practice it is not uncommon to see in india on rooftops in courtyards in beaches and by the river side people gathering in early hours of the morning to practice sun salutations the spiritual benefits let us now look at the very important spiritual benefits of surya namaskar in surya namaskar if the asanas correct breathing and mantras are practiced together surya namaskar becomes a complete dynamic meditation technique in itself surya namaskar is a complete spiritual practice sadhana of its own surya namaskar is a salutation to the sun when practicing one can express gratitude towards the outer sun for the energy it provides to the planet earth the sun is the giver of life and energy therefore one can recognize this and sincerely salute the sun and give gratitude gratitude is the highest spiritual quality hence the practitioner will start the day by humbly themselves bowing their head offering gratitude and respect to the sun all the surya namaskar is an expression of gratitude to the sun outside of oneself in a deeper sense surya namaskar is a practice that enables the practitioner to recognize their inner sun as the sun rises every day it brings intelligence life and energy as the practitioner transverses the spiritual path they start to recognize they have light also within them their inner sun starts to rise and hence their inner intelligence and energy starts to express 
there is an even deeper awareness of the sun salutation that is normally understood when done with the chanting of the mantra it becomes a deep cleansing process that uncloses our mind from our personal identity mamakara every sun salutation mantra ends with namaha the syllable ma refers to our personal identity and the word namaha means surrendering the identity whenever we perform the surya namaskar our awareness the inner sun throws light on our true identity which is divinity or divine thus surya namaskar should not be reduced to a mere bending or stretching of the body but needs to be done with this profound understanding then the benefits are enormous each asana performed in the surya namaskar vinyasa sequence relates specifically to one of the seven main energy centers or chakras while performing each asana in the surya namaskar the practitioner can put their awareness on the chakra that the specific posture compo- co- corresponds to now let us look at the benefits of the for the mind body it is said that a daily practice of surya namaskar comprising a complete set of 12 repetitions is enough to reap enormous benefits nothing else needs to be done the surya namaskar is so designed that it works on all body parts every organ every system and every chakra it is a moving set of postures done dynamically with the appropriate breathing of all the asana practice the surya namaskar is considered the most effective way to limber up tone stretch and strengthen the entire body and spine surya namaskar is regarded as the king of asana it is also the quickest way of touching base with our core inner strength one may consider focusing on different chakras as a spiritual practice however focusing on and energizing the chakra can provide amazing benefit in the practitioner's overall health and well-being modern day science has proven that the seven major chakras correspond to the certain major organs and endocrine glands in the physical body the supreme point of hinduism bhagwan shri nityananda paramashiva says that all our diseases are actually psychosomatic meaning our disease systems our disease stems from negativity and disturbance in the mind when the different chakra are blocked by negative thoughts and emotions it can in turn affect the functioning of the corresponding organ gland or bodily region and consequently disease and physical ailments can manifest by flooding awareness and positivity into the different chakras not only do we benefit spiritually we start to enjoy and experience optimum health well being and freedom from depression and illness the regular practice of surya namaskar will allow tremendous healing to happen in us the heat generated by this practice elevates the metabolic rate boosts the immune system and helps break down the energy clots the engraved memories or samskaras they are expelled as toxins from our system deep cleansing and energizing of our inner space happens surya namaskar mantras a mantra is a composition of syllables words phrases or sentences that when repeated with awareness has a very powerful and penetrating influence on the mind before performing each repetition of surya namaskar the yogi chants the corresponding surya namaskar mantra the surya namaskar mantra is composed of a bija seed mantra and the glorification mantra which highlights the various qualities of the sun in hindu tradition children are taught mantras at a very young age it is a subtle technique of breath breath control which later prepares children for higher practice of pranayama the chanting of mantra is a subtle technique of breath control sanskrit is considered as a language of the gods it is a language which has both a phonetic and linguistic component to it it comprises of 52 syllables and each syllable is a sound frequency the vedic rishis declared that the truth that the whole cosmos resonates to different frequencies of sound our body is a replication of the cosmos when we chant the mantra 
the very sound frequency elevates our consciousness and connects to the cosmic intelligence the bija mantra has no meaning by itself but the vibration of the mantra in the human body system is very powerful the theory of vibration as expounded by modern scientists is catching up with the truth that was delivered to humanity thousands of years ago by inner scientists the scientists the vedic rishis in the modern day scientific studies conducted by dr masaro imoto of japan have clearly proven that the nature of sound the very quality of vibrations has a profound effect on water considering that the human body is more than 80% water the scientific community is waking up to the enormous possibility that are available to mankind on the flip side of the coin we need to wake up to the enormous damage created in the hum human psyche with the words and sound and the negative qualities attached to them notably natraja the form of paramashiva representing the cosmic dance of rejuvenation holds the damru or the drum in his left hand this signifies that the whole cosmos is created from sound the different frequencies represent the different levels of consciousness so the whole journey of enlightenment is to raise our individual frequency to the ultimate cosmic frequency now let us look at the bija mantras bija mantras do not have any literal meaning but by chanting them we set up powerful vibrations of energy within the body and mind they are six in number and repeated in the following order om ram om rim om rum om hem om hom om ra the 12 glorification mantras highlight the various aspects of the sun when chanted with complete awareness before every repetition of surya namaskar the mantra confers the same qualities of the committed practitioner through this simple though highly effective method we realize the outer sun symbolizes the shining intelligence in our inner sky we come to understand our connectivity with to the cosmic energy that is all pervasive the mantras are to be chanted in one single exhale they work directly on our manipuraka chakra which is the source of the sound energy they have a power to replace the constant inner chatter which is of low frequency with the sound energy that elevates our consciousness now we look at the glorification mantras repetition 1 Om Ham Mitra Ye Namaha, which means salutations to the friends of all. Second, Om Rim Rava Ye Namaha, salutations to the shining one. Third, Om Rum Surya Ye Namaha, salutations to the one who induces activity. Fourth, Om Rim. bhavanave namaha salutations to the one who illumines fifth om ram khagaye namaha salutations to the one who moves swiftly sixth om ra pushne namaha salutations to the giver of strength seventh om ram hiranya garbaye namaha salutations to the golden cosmic self eight om rim marichaye namaha salutations to the lord of dawn ninth om rum adityaye namaha salutations to the sun of aditi the infinite cosmic mother tenth Om Ram Savitre Namaha. Salutations to the benevolent mother. Eleventh. Om Ram Araka Ye Namaha. Salutations to the one who is praiseworthy. Twelfth. Om Raha 
Bhaskaraya Namaha. Salutations to the one who leads to enlightenment. So this was the glorification mantras. Now moving on to practicing the Surya Namaskar. Surya Namaskar for the best benefits should be practiced at dawn. Any yoga practice, especially one that includes asanas, should be done only on an empty stomach or no sooner than three hours after a main meal. Surya Namaskar is traditionally practiced in a well-ventilated place as the sun is rising. This practice is extremely powerful because the practitioner can be instantly energized by the subtle rays of the sun. It is best if it is dry outside, not too windy and not too late in the morning. If the sun is too high, this will cause a lot of heat to be created in the body, which can aggravate a pitta constitution. If one is practicing Surya Namaskar primarily, to achieve cleansing and health benefits. Six to 12 repetitions can be practiced at a faster pace. For intense physical purification and cleansing, it is possible to practice many repetitions of Surya Namaskar daily. However, the practitioner should practice this with the supervision and guidance of a teacher, a yoga acharya. Now, we'll be going through the rituals of the Surya Namaskar and we'll after that, be demonstrating these rituals also. So entering the rituals of Surya Namaskar. The start of every Nityananda Yoga class rituals begins with the opening prayer, the Sadguru Vandram, in invoking the Guru's presence. Nityanandam Paramasukadam Kevalam Yanamurtim Dvandvatitam Gaganasadisham Tattvamasya Diraksham Ekam nityam vimalamachalam sarvadi sakshi bhutam bhavatitam trigunarahitam sadgurum tam namami. Now we'll look at the sequence of Surya Namaskar. First, we start with Namaskara asana. Inhaling and gracefully sweep the arms up and over your head and gently arc the spine backwards. So we will be going through a demonstration of the entire set with a yoga acharya. But first we'll go through all the steps in the slides. So pressing together the palms of the right hand and the left hand, holding them in front of the heart as shown in the picture, that is the middle of the chest, is Namaskara Mudra. This mudra is to be shown by the Mantrina, the knower of the mantra at the time of doing the worship accompanied with the relevant mantra. Hasta Utasana, stand with the feet together or slightly apart for balance. Bring your hands together into Namaskara, prayer position in front of the chest. Keep the eyes open throughout the practice of Surya Namaskar. Chant the corresponding Surya Namaskara mantra. Om Rim Ravaye Namaha is the Bija Mantra salutation to the Shining One. The Tantra Dharak will be chanting the Shastra Pramana. Akashic revelations on Hasta Utasana. The pregnant lady should do Mahamudra Bandha, Konasana, Tadasana, and their variations. She must not do Uttanasana. All these asanas must be done with their respective counter poses. Third, moving on to Utta, Uttanasana. As we see in the picture, we'll be bending forward, exhaling, sweep the arms forward and down so the hands touch the floor close to the feet and forehead comes in close to the knees. Please bend the knees if required to allow for greater ease in bringing the head close to the legs. Om Rum Surya E Namaha. Salutations to the one who induces activity. This is a Bija Mantra. 
Akashic revelation about Uttanasana. It's a caution notice which we went through just now that a pregnant lady should always do Mahamudra Bandha, Konasana, Tadasana, and their variation. She must not do Uttanasana. All these asanas must be done with their respective counter poses. Third, Ashwa Sanchala Asana. Step the right foot back as far as you can and as you inhale lift your heart center up the bija mantra om rem bhavanave namaha salutations to the one who illumines tarakshvasana step the left foot back and assume a plank position with the spine head and neck neck in a straight line hands placed beneath the shoulders Bija Mantra Om Rom Khagaye Namaha. Salutations to the one who moves swiftly. Akashic revelations on Tarakshvasana. Maintaining the position of Gajasana. Extend the head frequently towards the right side of the belly and left side of the belly alternatively. It is called Tarakshvasana. Moving on to Ashta. Ashtanga Namaskarana Asana. On the exhale, lower your knees, chest, and chin to the floor and assume Ashtanga Namaskara. Salutation with eight parts or points touching the ground. Keep the chin down on the mat and head tilted upwards with the toes tucked in with the toes tucked under. The Bija Mantra Om Raha. Pushne e Namaha. Salutations to the giver of strength. Akashic revelations about Ashtanga Namaskara, Namaskarasana. Maintaining the position of Gajasana, extend the head frequently towards the right side of the belly and left side of the belly. Alternatively, it's called Tarakshvasana. Next, we come to Bhujangasana. On the inhale, gently push your hands and lift the heart off the floor. Keep the elbows bent at a 90 degree angle and come into Bhujangasana, Cobra's pose. The Bija Mantra, Om Ra, Hiranya Garba E Namaha. Salutations to the golden cosmic cell. Akashic revelations. Keep the body from the toe to the navel on the floor and placing the palms of the hands also firmly on the floor. Raise the head like a snake. It is called Pujangasana. The fire of the body increases. All diseases are destroyed and Kundalini Shakti is awakened by the practice of Pujangasana. These revelations are from Kirandaha Samitaha. Kajasana. Push with your hands. Raise your hip into the air and assume Adhomukha Savasana exhaling. Spread the fingers wide and gently push your heels towards the earth. Bija Mantra Om Dream Mari Chaya Namaha. Salutations to the Lord of Dawn. Akashic Revelations. Being prone, place the soles on the ground that is bending forward and lengthening the body. Keep both the hands over the head and raise the hip upwards. Bring the nose near the ground, which is at the level of the navel, and extend the nose up to the hands. Do in this way again and again. It is called Gajasana. Now moving on to Ashwa Sanchalasana. Step the right foot back as far as you can, and as you inhale, lift your heart center up. Bija Mantra, Om Rum Aditya E Namaha. Salutations to the son of Aditi, the infinite cosmic mother. Uttanasana. Exhaling, sweep the arms forward and down so the hands touch the floor close to the feet and the forehead comes in close to the knees. Please bend the knees if required to allow for greater ease in bringing the head close to the legs. 
बीज मंत्र ओम ह्रेम सावित्रे नम सैल्यूटेशन टू दिनोव मदर आकाशिक रेवल्यूशन एज वी ऑलरेडी वेंट थ्रू द उत्तनासन all these asanas are to be done with their respective counter poses and an advice to pregnant ladies should do mahamudra bandha konasana tadasana and their variations she must not do uttanasana hasta utta uttanasana stand with the feet together or slightly apart for balance bring your hands together into namaskara prayer position in front of the chest keep the eyes open throughout the practice of surya namaskar chant the corresponding surya namaskara mantra bija mantra om rom ar kaye namaha salutations to the one who is praise worthy namaskara asana inhaling gracefully sweep the arms up and over your head and gently arc the spine backwards Om Ra Bhaskara Ye Namaha. Salutations to the one who leads to enlightenment. So we went through the twelve steps, and finally we will come back with our hands folded in front of our heart. Now we will be very shortly doing the demonstration with the yoga charya and with the tantra dharaka, chanting all the authentic. shastra pramanas and also repeating the bija mantras so please take few moments get your yoga mats and be prepared to join the traditional surya namaskar sequence demonstration please make sure that you join this beautiful opportunity to perform surya namaskar sequence authentically as per the shastras with proper shastra pramana with proper bija mantra chanting and authentic demonstration as revealed by the supreme pontiff of hinduism bhagwan shri nityananda paramashivam so please take a few moments to get your mats and be prepared we will be back very shortly to guide you step by step into the traditional surya namaskar sequence thank you we'll be very back very shortly
Nityanandam. Welcome back. Now we'll be going through the demonstration of traditional Surya Namaskar sequence with our Yoga Acharya Krishna Pal Maharaj and our Tantra Dharaka Sri Nitya Ganga Dharan Maharaj. We'll start with Namaskara Asana. Inhaling gracefully, sweep the arms up over your head and gently arc the spine backwards. The Bija Mantra, Om Ram Mritta E Namaha. Hridde Shetu Nipidyeta Hastajoru Bhajostalam Namaskara Tu Vigneja Mantrina Mantra Vadane. Hasta Uttanasana. Stand with the feet together or slightly apart for balance. Bring your hands together into Namaskara. In front of the chest, keep the eyes open throughout the practice. Bijamanta Om Rim Ravaye Namaha Maha Mudra Badhakono Tadasana Vibheda Kane Vinotanam Sada Kurya Dantarvatni Patipriya Uttanasana Exhaling, sweep the arms forward and down so the hands touch the floor close to the feet and the forehead comes in close to the knees. Please bend the knees if required to allow for greater ease in bringing the head close to the legs. The Bija Mantra Om Rum Surya E Namaha Maha Mudra Baddha Kono Tadasana Vibheda Kane Vinota Anam Sada Kurya Dantarvatni Patipriya Ashwa Sanchala Asana Step the right foot back as far as you can and in and as you inhale, lift your heart center up. Om Rem Bhava Nave Namaha. Tarakshvasana. Step the foot back and assume a plank position with the spine, head, and neck in a straight line. Hands placed beneath the shoulder. Bija Mantra. Om Rom Khaga Ye Namaha. Gajasana was titwa mastakam varam varam dakshina kukshim savya kukshim nayete tarakshvasanam bhavati Ashtanga namaskara asana On the exhale, lower your knees, chest and chin to the floor and assume Ashtanga namaskara salute with eight parts or points touching the ground. Keep the chin down on the mat and head tilted upwards with the toes tucked under. Om Raha Pushne Namaham Gajasana Vastitva Mastakam Varam Varam Dakshina Kukshim Savya Kukshim Najete Tarakshvasanam Bhavati Bhujangasana On the inhale, gently push with your hands and lift the heart off the floor. Keep the elbows bent at 90 degrees angle and come into Bhujangasana, Cobra's pose. Om Ram, Om Ram, Hiranyagarbha Yanamaham, Angoshtana Bhiparyantam Adhubhuma Vininyasete, Karabhyam Jadharam Dhritva Urdhashir Shapani Vahi, Dehag Nirvardhate Nityam Sarvaroka Vinashanam, Jagarti Bhujagi Devi Bhujangasana Sadhanate. Gajasana, push with your hands, raise your hips into the air, assume Adho Mukha Swasana, exhaling. Spread the fingers wide and gently push your heels towards the earth. Om Hrim Maricha Yanamaha Nyubjampada Gre Bhuma Ukrtvalambi Bhuja Mastaka Gre Nidhaya Nitambam Urdhva Munnamai Yana Bhilakshyam Bhuma Nasika Maniya Hastadala Pariyantam Najete Ithampuna Puna Kuryate Gajasanam Bhavati Ashwa Sanchala Asana Step the right foot back as far as you can and as you inhale Lift your heart center up. Om Bhroom Aditya Yanamaham Uttanasana Exhaling, sweep the arms forward and down. 
so the hands touch the floor close to the feet and forehead comes in close to the knees please bend the knees if required to allow for greater ease in bringing the head close to the legs om hrim savitre namaha maha mudra baddha kono tadasana vibhedakane vinota anam sada kuriya dantarvatni pati priya hasta utasana exhaling inhaling gracefully sweep the arms up and over your head and gently arc the spine backwards om hrom arkaya namaha maha mudra baddha kono tadasana vibhedakane vinota anam sada kuriya dantarvatni pati priya namaskara asana stand with the feet together or slightly apart for balance bring your hands together into namaskara prayer position in front of the chest keep the eyes open throughout the practice of surya namaskara chant the corresponding surya namaskara mantra om rah bhaskara janamaha hridese tu nibidyeta hastayoru bhayostalam namaskara tu vigneya mantrina mantra vad vandane now we'll be going through one more round of the traditional surya namaskar sequence we just went through a full sequence of 12 steps namaskara asana stand with the feet together or slightly apart for balance bring your hands together into namaskara in front of the chest keep the eyes open throughout the practice of surya namaskar chant the corresponding surya namaskara mantra om ra mitra janamaha hridese tunu bidyeta hastajoru bhajostalam namaskara tu vigneya mantrina mantra vandane hasta utasana inhaling gracefully sweep the sweep the arms up and over your head and gently arc the spine backwards Om Hrim Ravaye Namaha Maha Mudra Vadha Kono Tadasana Vibheda Kane Vinota Anam Sada Kuriya Dantarvatni Pati Priya Uttanasana Exhaling, sweep the arms forward and down so the hands touch the floor close to the feet and the forehead comes in close to the knees. Please bend the knees if required to allow for greater ease in bringing head close to the legs. ओम ह्रूं सूर्याय नम महामुद्राबद्धकोनौताडासन विभेद कान विनोत्न सदा कुरियादंतर्वत्नी पति प्रिया अश्वसंचाल आसन स्टेप द राइट फुट बैक एज फार एज यू कैन एंड एज यू इनहेल लिफ्ट युअर हार्ट सेंटर अप ओम ह्रै भानवे नम Tarakshwasana step the left foot back and assume a plank position with the spine head and neck in a straight line hands placed beneath the shoulders Om hrom khaga janamaha gajasana vasthitva mastakam varam varam dakshina kukshim savya kukshim nayete tarakshwasanam bhavati Ashtanga namaskara asana on the exhale lower your knees chest chin to the floor and assume ashtanga namaskara salutation with eight parts or points touching the ground keep the chin down on the mat and head tilted upwards with the toes tucked under om raha pushne namaha gajasana vasthitva mastakam varam varam dakshina kukshim savya kukshim nayete tarakshwasanam bhavati Bhujangasana on the inhale gently push with your hands and lift the heart off the floor keep the elbows bent at 90 degrees angle and come to bhujangasana cobra pose om ram hiranyagarbhaya namaha angushtana bhiparyantam adho bhumau vininyasete karabhyam chadharam dhritva urdhva shirsha phani vahi 
देहाग्निर्वर्धते नित्यम सर्वरोग विनाशनम जागृति भुजगी देवी भुजंगासन साधनात गजासना पुश विथ योर हैंड्स रेस योर हिप्स इनटू द एयर एंड अज्यूम अधोमुखा स्वासना एक्सेलिंग स्प्रेड द फिंगर्स वाइड एंड जेंटली पुश योर हील्स टुवर्ड्स द अर्थ ओम ह्रीं मरीचा यनमः न्युब्जं पादाग्रे भूमौ कृत्वालंबी भूया मस्तकाग्रे निधाय नितंबं ऊर्धमुन्नमय्य नाभिलक्षं भूमौ नासिका मानीय हस्तदलपर्यंतं नजेत इत्थं पुनः पुनः कुर्यात गजासनं भवति उत्तनासना Exhaling, sweep the arms forward and down so the hands touch the floor close to the feet and forehead comes in close to the knees. Please bend the knees if required to allow for greater ease in bringing the head close to the legs. Om Rhaim Savitre Namaha Maha Mudra Baddha Kono Tadasana Vibheda Kane Vinota Anam Sada Kuriya Dantarvatni Pati Priya Hasta Uttanasana Inhaling, gracefully sweep the arms up and over your head and gently arc the spine backwards. Om Rom Arka Yanamaha Maha Mudra Baddha Kono Tadasana Vibheda Kane Vinata Anam Sada Kuriya Dantarvatni Padipriya Namaskara Asana Stand with the feet together or slightly apart for balance. Bring your hands together into Namaskara prayer position in front of the chest. Om Raha Bhaskara Yanamaha Hridyeshe Tunipidyeta Hastayorubha Yostalam Namaskara Tuvikneya Mantrina Mantra Vandane Now we'll be going through the sequence one more time at a little faster pace. So please do practice this session. The traditional Surya Namaskar sequence as per the authentic scriptures revealed by the Supreme Pontiff of Hinduism as per the Veda Agamas. We'll start with Namaskara Asana. Stand with the feet together or slightly apart for balance. Bring your hands together into Namaskara. Prayer position in front of the chest. Keep the eyes open throughout the practice of Surya Namaskar. Chant the corresponding Surya Namaskara Mantra. Om Ram Mitra Yanamaham Hridyeshe Tunipidyeta Hastayorubha Yostalam Namaskara Tu Vigneja Mantrina Mantra Vandane Hasta Uttanasana Inhaling gracefully sweep the arms up and over your head and gently arc the spine backwards. Om Rheem Ravaje Namaha Mahamudra Baddha Kono Tadasana Vibheda Kane Vinata Anam Sada Kuriya Dantarvatni Patipriya Uttanasana, exhaling, sweep the arms forward and down so the hands touch the floor close to the feet and the forehead comes in close to the knees. Please bend the knees if required to allow for greater ease in bringing the head close to the legs. Om Rhoom Surya Yanamaha Maha Mudra Baddha Kono Tadasana Vibheda Kane Vinota Anam Sada Kurya Dantarvatni Patipriya Ashwa Sanchala Asana Step the right foot back as far as you can and as you inhale, lift your heart center up. Om Rhaim Bhanave Namaha Tarakshvasana Step the left foot back and assume a plank position with the spine, head and neck in a straight line, hands placed beneath the shoulders. Om Rhaim Khagaya Namaha Gajasana Vasthitva Mastakam Varam Varam Dakshina Kukshim Savya Kukshim Najete Tarakshvasanam Bhavati Ashtanga Namaskarasana On the exhale, lower your knees, chest and chin to the floor and assume Ashtanga Namaskara Salute with the eight parts or points touching the ground. Keep the chin down on the mat and head tilted upwards with the toes tucked under. Om Raha Pushne Namaha Gajasana Mastitva Mastakam Varam Varam Dakshina Kukshim Zavya Kukshim Najete Tarakshvasanam Bhavati 
Bhujangasana. On the inhale, gently push with your hands and lift the heart of the floor. Keep the elbows bent at a 90 degree angle and come into Bhujangasana. Cobra's pose. Om Ram Hiranyagarbhaya Namaham Angushtana Bhiparijantam Adhobhumau Vininyaset Karabhyam Chadharam Dhritva Urdhvashirsha Panivahi Dehaag Nirvardhate Nityam Sarvarogami Nashanam Jagarthi Bhujagi Devi Bhujangasana Sadhanat Gajasana Push with your hands, raise your hips into the air and assume Adho Mukha Sonasana Exhaling, spread the fingers wide and gently push your heels towards the earth Om Reem Maricha Yanamaha Nyubjam Bada Gre Bhuma Grit Valambi Bhuja Mastaka Gre Nidhaja Nitambam Urdhva Munna Maya Nabhilaksham Bhuma Nasika Maniya Hastadala Pariyantam Nayete Itham Puna Puna Kuryate Gajasanam Bhavati Ashwa Sanchala Asana Step the right foot back as far as you can and as you inhale lift your heart center up Om Rum Aditya Yanamaham Uttanasana, exhaling, sweep the arms forward and down so the hands touch the floor close to the feet and forehead comes in close to the knees. Please bend the knees if required to allow for greater ease in bringing the head close to the legs. Om Rheem Savitre Namaha Mahamudra Baddha Kono Tadasana Vibheta Kaane Vinota Anam Sada Kuriya Dantarvatni Padipriya Hasta Uttanasana, inhaling. Gracefully sweep the arms up and over your head and gently arc the spine backward. Om Rom Arka Yanamaha Mahamudra Baddha Kono Tadasana Vibheda Kaane Vinota Anam Sada Kuriya Dantarvatni Patipriya Namaskara Asana Stand with your feet together or slightly apart for balance bringing your hands together into Namaskara prayer position in front of the chest. Om Raha Bhaskara Janamaham Hridyashe Tunipidyeta Hastayorubha Yostalam Namaskara Tu Vigneya Mandrina Mantra Vandane With this we come to the end of Kailasa's Nityananda Yoga Surya Namaskar sequence as revealed by the Supreme Point of Hinduism Bhagwan Shri Nityananda Paramashivam on this auspicious World International Yoga Day. Do practice this authentic sequence. We'll be back very shortly with the further programs and demonstrations on International Yoga Day. Please stay tuned. Nityanandam. the direct experience of samadhi, experience of oneness with the ultimate, to manifest the state, space, and powers of Paramashiva. Each of the 12 components of yoga work on the unmanifest layer, the avyakta, antimatter, anti-sound, anti-sex. Anything done in the level of usha, the expression, matter, due to matter's quality of going up and down, does not stay permanently. Anything done in the level of chaya, the existence, antimatter, as it does not go down, stays permanently. Anti-sex with Paramashiva is Nityananda Yoga. Anti-sex is intense completion for what you know normally as sex. During the process, the anti-sex body goes through passive sexual relationship with the avyakta unmanifested component of Paramashiva. In order to achieve this intense completion, His Divine Holiness Paramahamsa Nityananda has revealed that the physical practice of yoga goes much beyond a single asana or posture. Rather, with every movement or placement of the body, there are a total of 12 dimensions in action. During the process of Nityananda Yoga, the yogi intensely withdraws from the body, allowing them to manifest powers. 
By the end of the entire sequence, the yogi will be able to immediately manifest at least 21 powers without a single doubt. The power of this whole process is doing it in the breathing space of the master, Paramashiva himself, his divine holiness, Paramahamsa Nityananda. If the atmosphere is inhaled through the nose, it is prana. If inhaled through every pore of the skin, it is samana. The whole breathing space of Paramashiva is samana. Thus, Nityananda Yoga can only be practiced in the consecrated place of the master to imbibe the samana to take you deeper into the oneness experience. During Nityananda Yoga, when the body goes through anti-sex with Paramashiva, power manifestation becomes permanent and complete. Nityananda Yoga gives the direct experience of the state of Samani, oneness with the ultimate, Paramashivoham. The first component of Nityananda Yoga is asanas. Asana happens when the body is bending, stretching, and aligning itself to the cosmic geometry. The context of asana is not restricting itself to some physical posture. It's not a place that the body is in, but a space. Nidhi Dhyasana, for instance, is when we are radiating excitement, joy, and bliss for life regardless of the physical positioning of the limbs. His Divine Holiness Paramahamsa Nityananda describes asana as steady and comfortable body postures to tune oneself with the cosmos. The most important understanding of asanas is it is not a practice at all. It is a happening, a manifestation, which happens through asanas. We do not practice sitting with God, we embody God, Paramashiva. It is from this space of Paramashivoham, when we are intent on the vow of living like God, that we are performing an authentic asana. Through intensely flowing through Nityananda Yoga, the body simply falls in tune with the cosmos. Nityananda Shivastamba Yoga and Nityananda Kundalini Raju Yoga is a tremendous possibility for the being to connect to the divine through the living avatar of Paramashiva, his divine holiness, Paramahamsa. Nityanandam paramasukadam kevalam yanamurtim dandvatitam gagana sadisham tatvamasya dilaksham ekam nityam vimalamachalam sarvadi sakshi bhutam bhavatitam tigunarahitam sadgurum tam namami Nityanandam Welcome to Kailasha's Nityananda Yoga on session on how to do Shirsasana as revealed by the Supreme Pontiff of Hinduism, Bhagwan Shinityananda Paramanshin. The Supreme Pontiff of Hinduism, Bhagwan Shinityananda Paramanshin, is recognized as the thousand and eight living manifestation of Paramashiva, Paramavatar of Paramashiva, as per Sanatana Hindu Dharma, Hinduism, by his predecessors of enlightened masters and adepts. The supreme point of Hinduism is reviving Hinduism as a thousand and eight Acharya Mahamandaleshwar, the head for all spiritual leaders of Atal Akhara, ancient apex body of Hinduism, who was also coronated as the Mahamandaleshwar, supreme spiritual head of Mahanirvani Akhara, largest apex monastic order, and the youngest Mahamandaleshwar, was also ordained as the 233rd Guru Mahasanidhanam or Pontiff of the Thundai Mandala Adinam and was also ordained as the 293rd Guru Mahasanidhanam or Pontiff of the Shamla Pitha Sarvanga Pitha. The Supreme Pontiff of Hinduism was also ordained as the 23rd Guru Mahasanidhanam of Dharma Mukti Swargapuram Adinam and coronated as the 203rd Emperor of the Surya Vamsa Surangi Samrajyam. The Supreme Pontiff of Hinduism, Bhagwan Shinityananda Paramashivam, is the reigning spiritual emperor of 20 such ancient traditional Hindu kingdoms and is a reviver of the most ancient, most peaceful, still living and long lasting demonstrable system that shows the possibility of peaceful 
coexistence amongst people which is hinduism the supreme point of hinduism following the coronations to establish kalasha worldwide at the age of 16 for the past 27 years the supreme point of hinduism bhagwan shri nityananda paramashivam as the face of the united unified hindus has been single handedly tirelessly inspiring the dispossessed hindu diaspora to reclaim their hindu centric freedom and stand unified for the centuries old hindu genocide the 1008th living manifestation of paramashiva the supreme point of hinduism bhagwan shri nityananda paramashivam stands as the unifying force for the 2 billion born and practicing hindu diaspora worldwide and established the hindu state kalasa for the persecuted hindus in over 100 countries the supreme point of hinduism bhagwan shri nityananda paramashivam has made resolute efforts towards recognizing and legitimizing the hindu genocide which has been receiving scant considerations by global leaders and international bodies the supreme point of hinduism founded kalasa uniting nations the ancient hindu enlightened civilizational nation kalasa hinduism is the most ancient most peaceful still loving still living and long lasting demonstrable system that shows the possibility of peaceful coexistence among people despite fundamental differences in their preferences and realities over the last 50 years the effect of meditation and its significant impact on stress crime rates violence political decision making and even war in local and global consciousness is well established unfortunately for the last 200 years forcibly we hindus are made to believe hinduism is functional principle only for enlightenment and spirituality it is absolutely dysfunctional for the political social economical system we hindus have been wrongly convinced of this however the truth is making hindu family structure hindu so- social structure dysfunctional is the greatest crime done against humanity hinduism was once practiced freely in over 26 nations across the continent from afghanistan ne- india nepal burma sri lanka all the way to singapore malaysia and cambodia indonesia in 200 states 1700 samsthanas or provinces and 10000 sampradayas or traditions over the several centuries the combined forces of foreign invasion political upheaval colonialism and religious persecution systematically ended millennia of hindu swaraj or self rule today hindu temples remain in few countries but the hindus who worship them have been ethnically cleansed the kalasa with de facto spiritual embassies operating across 100 countries and having presence across the globe as the largest spiritual knowledge source on hinduism is spiritually governed the life positive all inclusive universal policy sourced from hinduism revived by the supreme point of hinduism bhagwan shri nityananda paramashiva having enriched and enriched over more than 1 billion individuals over the past 27 years kalasa raises the voice to protect hindus defend hindus and preserve the hindu narrative for the world now with this brief introduction about the supreme point of hinduism our beloved guru we will now enter into the subject shirsasana shirsasana also known as shoulder stand in the english has an interesting and mystical background story to it much like most yogic techniques first revealed by bhagwan paramashiva himself and then reintroduced to humanity by the 9th century yogi and vaishnavite saint named nathamuni nathamuni was an amazing yogi that revolutionized many customs that prevailed during his time within the body among his most important contributions was a text on yoga called the yoga rahasya the yoga the yoga rahasya literally means secrets of yoga and this masterpiece offers many deep insights into the uses and applications of so many yogic techniques that are still practiced 
five many today at the age of 16 another enlightened master tiruman tirumalai krishna macharya known as the father of modern yoga had a dream about one of his ancestors a scholar nathamuni in krishna macharya's dream he was guided to travel to a vishnu temple in the very southern part of india krishna macharya being an incredible yogi and seeker himself went on pilgrimage to this location in india and shortly after his arrival he took a bath in a river when he came out krishna macharya fell into a deep trance while in this trance krishna macharya found himself inside a mango tree with a wise man reciting ancient sanskrit verses krishna macharya did nothing but sit and listen to him a deep to him with a deep intensity after coming out of this trance krishna macharya realized the sage looked just like the wise sage in his vision or dream that he had earlier the sage then told him he was lucky to have been instructed on the yoga rahasya this practice overcomes constitutional disorders the practice of shirsasana it has various benefits the practice helps the practitioner overcome constitutional disorders especially seminal weakness the nervous system is energized and it slows down the aging process and according to nathamuni's yoga rahasya third chapter 11th verse a pregnant woman can practice shirsasana and sarvangasana up to the fifth month of pregnancy and for everyone it should be practiced prior to consumption of meals or at least 3 hours afterwards some very important contra indications and disclaimers avoid in case of spondylitis slip disc and other conditions of the neck and spine vertigo high blood pressure blood impurities thrombosis and other heart conditions pregnant women should take special care and consult a physician before attempting this course always consult a doctor or a qualified yoga instructor before taking up the practice of shirsasana a small story on shirsasana people again and again ask me why hug this revelation is from the supreme pontiff of hinduism himself directly people ask people again and again ask me why i hug i learned this habit of hugging from raghupati yogi i have seen really i have seen when people come to him he is a very weird yoga guru sometime people will come to him 100 kg 120 kg he will not even look up and down completely once he will tell do shirsasana means standing upside down the poor guy standing directly itself is a job for him impossible for him he will not even look up he will just put the head down hey do shirsasana and he raghupati yogi has two three assistants very wild yamadutas no literally yamadutas they will look like yamadutas only he will tell them hey help them to do means what just hold to them upside down not help them and all just make it happen and those yamudutas will just tie that fellow's leg and just hold up that's all in 2 minutes that fellow does not know where he has come and where he has landed what is go- what is going on to him and he will be standing upside down and seeing arunachaleshwara temple tower upside down sometime they will get into that panic mood whether they are turned upside down or the temple is turned upside down they will not even know because they will be just completely shaken all this survival instinct will be completely awakened and frightened i have seen no i can remember even now 
some of those people's faces like a frightened baby they will be and some will shake their whole body no 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 we can't do shirsasana you will be shocked really i am telling you he will just call them and give one hug ragupati yogi he is a lean guy lean short guy maybe 5 feet one hug he will give then he will tell his yamudutas hey back out leave it leave him literally in that 2 3 seconds that shivering will settle down they will become balanced they will become very calm just they will stand upside down the whole process will be finished maybe in 30 seconds that's all i am telling you the physical proof power of a yogi is hug physical proof just they will stand upside down pressure will be normal and then he will tell all right enough enough now come down he will make them stand upside down even sometimes for full 3 minutes 3 full minutes is not a joke please understand 360 seconds he will make them stand and that's all initiation is over from the next day he will make them do all kinds of asanas some of the most difficult asanas like mayura asana balancing the hands on your stomach and those poor fellows that stomach is so big they can neither put their hands on the stomach nor they can even imagine balancing the whole weight on the palms i can tell you it's a medical miracle only because that heavy weight cannot stand on that palm two palms but he will simply tell them a hey, mayurasana that place where he used to teach yogasana that mandapa has all carving of yogasana i don't know what for they made that mandapa maybe this was the purpose in that whole mandapa all asanas will be carved in the pillars in that pillar mayurasana matsyasana all that major asanas will be in the stone stone carvings it is there so all he had he will do is a do this asana that's all and that poor fellow will simply do do not even know it is something difficult how the whole body can be shaped just by one hug i always used to wonder what is this guy up to what is he up to how he ragupati yogi is able to transmit the powers through the hug is a very great experience now i know the science of it now i know the science of it something is directly sent to your dna i am saying i accept you as you are i shower you as i am on you that is why the hug does something extraordinary which you can't imagine it gives you in body language a deep comfort and feeling i am saying and i am saying i accept your surrender i accept you as you are i accept your being i am showering my being which directly revives and rejuvenates your dna that is why even if you don't feel in my expression in my face expression or body language the love it will be felt in the very dna so this was the revelations of the supreme point of hinduism bhagwan shri nityananda parameshwar feeling the master's presence whether you are someone who wants to experience a breakthrough in performing shirsasana or have mastered it and feel quite comfortable in the pose of his presence if you have received any initiation previously from the supreme point of hinduism he has already mapped the dna of shirsasana within you it is possible all that is needed is to remember him and keep remembering him as you move into the posture and progress your way into the full inversion the supreme point of hinduism has revealed on shirsasana please understand the physiological mutation what i mean by the by that word physiological mutation when you grab an idea from the outer world and digest that idea constantly make your body fall in tune with that idea without any hypocrisy if you have completed your whole physiological system is in with tune with that idea that is what i call physiological mutation no resistance from physiological system for that idea it is physiological mutation for example yoga 
yoga postures you take up an idea standing upside down shirsasana for 15 minutes will help me to be healthy or brilliant first there will be a lot of physiological resistance but you practice 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 in a few days you are able to do it so physiological mutation of shirsasana has happened in you it's one idea i am expressing then psychological mutation for example ahimsa non violence the idea is conceived in your heart and slowly 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 constantly your heart cherishes that idea and that compassion is filled in your whole psychological system finally your whole psychological system is able to respond to any situation at any crisis at any moment at any question for anything established in that compassion is psychological mutation so following was the revel- revelation of the supreme point of hinduism bhagwan shri nityananda paramashivam on shirsasana and physiological and psychological mutation now as revealed in natha muni's yoga rahasya we'll be going through the shirsasana pramana the akashic revelations of the pramanas revealed then there are two types of inverted mandalas arrangements shirsasana and sarvangasana dandanasana dandasana is also of the two types inverted viparita dandasana and seated dandana dandanasana it has been proclaimed that there are 66 variations of sarvangasana and shirsasana shirsasana headstand is a powerful energizing inversion that is great for awakening the kundalini naturally this posture relies on the strength of your upper body and core and requires a deep focus and awareness there are many physical benefits good for health good for shoulder strength core strength brain health heart function and more however this is a challenging pose that must be approached with a safety first mentality a major key to shirsasana is avoiding putting too much weight on your head and neck rather you should put on letting your arms and shoulder hold you up when first starting out try shirsasana facing a wall so you can walk the feet up and into the pose safely without relying on the momentum to kick yourself up into it some helpful tips take the necessary safety precautions practice by facing against a wall placing the crown of your head about 6 to 12 inches away from the wall when you come up you won't need to worry about falling over and you can even lean your feet up and against the wall take one foot then the other foot away from the wall as you find more strength and balance in the pose when first starting out don't do too much too soon try to stay up for 15 seconds then gradually add 5 10 seconds each time it's always better a safer to hold the good posture for 20 seconds versus 3 minutes in one that lacks integrity exit with carefully safely and gracefully use your core strength to lower the legs and slowly and smoothly as you can ideally you are coming down and exhalation while continuously pressing the shoulders forearms down into the ground now we'll go through the step by step instruction into shirsasana and then our yoga acharya will be demonstrating start on your hands and knees in a table top position lean forward and place your form forearms on the floor in front of you elbows shoulder width apart from one another bring your hands together and interlace your fingers cupping your palm place the crown of your head on the floor with the back of your head against your cupped hands press down with your forearms and elbows and allow your head to come slightly off the floor 
or relieving as much pressure weight of the crown of the head as possible tuck your toes lift your knees and straighten your legs then walk the toes in towards your head until your hips are straight above your shoulder or as close as possible maintaining your weight on your arms not on your head bend your knees and use your core to lift or hop your hips and legs off the floor take extreme care while doing this as you find your balance try keeping your legs together and knees bent lift your legs up so they are directly over your shoulders find your balance here shifting your weight as need be be sure that your hips are stacked on top of your shoulders knees on the top of your hips and ankles on top of your knees then hug your thighs together as you straighten your legs when the joints of the body are placed on top of one another less muscle strength is needed to maintain the posture stay up as long as you feel comfortable and strong to release use your abdominal strength to bring your feet back down to the floor slowly so we see the picture of a complete shasana now very shortly we'll be going through a live demonstration by a yoga acharya please stay tuned we'll be back very shortly with the demonstration When the yogi approaches the pole and the rope, they do so with great reverence and intention of physically experiencing oneness with Paramashiva. Seeing the pole as a deity energized through prana pratishta, the disciple can experience the highest state of consciousness in the awakening of the kundalini without even performing a single movement. When we incorporate asanas and begin to align our bodies to the cosmic geometry, we can experience the ultimate strength and power flowing through us. The traditional asanas on the kundalini raju, the rope, are designed to elongate the spine, tune the spine to the cosmic geometry, and ignite the kundalini shakti. Through intense flips and twists, the internal organs get detoxified and the body becomes one of a true yogi. And while performing yoga asanas on the rope, many nadi points and marma points, vital points in the body where life force energy is concentrated, get activated and awakened in our physiology. When we are performing the Shivastamba yoga on the wooden pole, we are moving with a powerful intention to be, grounding and establishing ourselves in the state and space of Paramashiva, all powerfulness. The breakthrough happens when we perform these various asanas and mounts with this new context. It awakens the kundalini shakti within us, stimulating various nadi and marma points and unlocks countless blockages. No other discipline has understood and presented the means to regulate and expand one's own life energy like yoga. The practice of pranayama leads to the purification of the energy bodies and its channels called nadis. and to the ultimate experience of manifesting the powers of Paramashiva. Through proper asanas, physical well-being is achieved, the nervous system is strengthened, and vital organs are regulated and brought into a state of health. Thus, the body becomes ready for pranayama. It is with pranayama that the real technique of yoga begins. His Divine Holiness Paramahamsa Nityananda says, you will awaken the non-mechanical parts or subtle areas of the brain, a source of infinite creativity, which usually remains dormant in most human beings, will be accessible to you. Another dimension of Nithyanda Yoga, Bandha. Bandha is internal awakening of the Kundalini Shakti. It is the active maintenance of a state of contraction or pressure in the body by the yogi. They pump energy into dormant or stagnant areas of the body. 
Here, bandhas are the bridge between the disconnected areas of the energy circuit in our body. These bandhas generate a certain flow along the spinal column, where there are energy points called chakras, which are storehouses and distribution houses for prana shakti. Performing bandhas help to push the kundalini energy upward through the chakras. Thereby diseases can be cured and the function of their associated physical, psychological and neurological systems can be optimized. Another component of Nityananda Yoga is mudras. There is a constant inflow of prana happening in our bodies through the nadis and the chakras. But much of it usually gets dissipated into the external world. This dissipation into the external world is responsible for the feeling of tiredness, confusion and powerlessness that we experience. Mudra refers to the positioning of the limbs, fingers, Nityandam, welcome back and now we will be going through a demonstration of Shirsasana. First we will go through the Shastra Pramana, the Apta Pramana as per Nathamuni's Yoga Rahasya. Viparitam mandalam cha vidhaiva viditam hinaha dandasanam dvidha proktam viparito paveshane then there are two types of inverted mandalas arrangements shirsasana and sarvangasana dandasana is also of the two types inverted viparita dandasana and seated dandasana it has been proclaimed that there are 66 variations of Sarvangasana and Shirsasana. Now, we'll be going through step by step into the Shirsasana. Start on your hands and knees in a tabletop position. Lean forward and place your forearms on the floor in front of you. Elbows shoulders width apart from one another. Bring your hands together and interlace your fingers, cupping your palms. Place the crown of your head on the floor with the back of your head against your cupped hands. Press down with your forearms and elbows and allow your head to come slightly off the floor or relieving as much pressure weight of the crown of your head as possible. Tuck your toes and lift your knees and straighten your legs. Then walk the toes in towards your head until your hips are straight and above your shoulders or as close as possible maintaining your weight on your arms not on your head. Bend your knees and use your core to lift or hop your hips and legs off the floor. Take extreme care while doing this. As you find your balance, try keeping your legs together and knees bent. Lift your legs up so they are directly over your shoulders. Find your balance here, shifting your weight as need be. Lift your legs up and straight and directly above your shoulders. Be sure that your hips are stacked on top of your shoulders, knees are on top of your hips and ankles on top of your knees and straighten your legs when the joints of the body are placed on top of one another less muscle strength is needed to maintain the posture stay up as long as you feel comfortable and strong to release use your abdominal strength to bring your feet back down to the floor slowly We'll go through the sequence once more. Start on your hands and knees in a table down, table top position. Lean forward and place your forearms on the floor in front of you. 
elbows shoulder width apart from one another bring your hands together and interlace your fingers cupping your palms place the crown of your head on the floor with the back of your head against your cupped hands press down with your forearms and elbows and allow your head to come slightly off the ground or relieving as much pressure off the crown of the head as possible tuck your toes lift your knees and strengthen and straighten your legs then walk your toes in towards your head until your hips are straight above your shoulder or as close as possible maintaining your weight on your arms not on your head bend your knees and use your core to lift or hop your hips and legs off the floor take extreme care while doing this as you find your balance try keeping your legs together and knees bent lift your legs up so they are directly above your shoulders find your balance here shifting your weight as need be be sure that your hips are stacked on top of your shoulders knees on top of your hips and ankles on top of your knees then hug your thighs together as you straighten your legs when the joints of the bodies are placed on top of one another less muscle strength is needed to maintain the posture stay up as long as you feel comfortable and strong to release use your abdominal abdominal strength to bring your feet back down to the floor slowly with this we conclude how to do shirsasana as per the authentic hindu scriptures and as revealed and guided by the supreme pont of hinduism bhagwan shri nityananda parameshwaram thank you for joining us with this we come to the end of this segment of world international yoga day kailasas nityananda yoga session thank you nityanandam to seal this prana into our body a way of aligning to the cosmic geometry mudras are a way to stimulate the flow of prana shakti life force energy and cosmic currency inside us mudras are psychophysical processes which take us to a higher state of consciousness by positioning the body in certain ways to block the dissipation of prana and direct it inwards The shastras reveal the layers of benefits of mudras from health and longevity to the ultimate experience of transcending our limiting cognitions we carry as human beings and living and radiating the state space and shaktis of shiva himself it is mentioned repeatedly in the scriptures that initiation by the guru holds the master key that can transform us from human beings into superhuman beings Abharana is another dimension of Nithyanda Yoga. Each metal and jewel holds a certain energy and provides a specific benefit to the body when worn. Rudraksha jewelry is the traditional abharana worn by and while performing the Nithyanda Yoga sequences. As the manifestation of the teardrop from Paramashiva's third eye, the Rudraksha energy bead is able to hold and radiate energy unlike any other stone. The Sundara Varam are the traditional rudraksha earrings which provide balance to the body as well as increasing the space of listening in the yogi allowing them to tune their body to the cosmic geometry during their practice wearing the rudraksha necklace on the vishuddhi chakra as the kantamala given by the guru radiates the energy of the mantra initiated by the guru acting as a mechanized japa for the yogi Performing the Nityananda Yoga sequence while wearing the Kantamala and the Sundara Varam takes the ritual of yoga to the next level, infusing the yogi with the master's energy and oneness space at all times. Another component of Nityananda Yoga is visualization. In the science of yoga, context and intention are everything. Why you bend your body matters. For whatever intention you move the body, that experience will be delivered to you. 
That is why in Nityananda Yoga, we maintain the space of yoga as a ritual, as a direct connection between and us. With every asana, it is important to maintain a strong visualization of that asana. When we keep a clear visualization of each form we are embodying, the body can settle into the depth experience of each and every posture. One of the most important components of Nityananda Yoga is chanting. Mantra is a Sanskrit word that describes a sacred utterance, a sound, a syllable, or a group of words. A mantra has spiritual power with or without syntactic or literal meaning. A disciple needs to be initiated into a mantra by his guru, using the right procedures, mantra diksha, for the mantra to have its maximum potency for that individual. It is given by the guru and received with gratitude and respect by the disciple. Clear instructions are given in order to experience the truth of the mantra. Mahasadashiva is light, consciousness, while Adi Shakti is sound, creation. By mantras, a yogi can unclutch from external things and be absorbed in the sounds of the mantra. The goal is to focus more and more on the subtle sound. By abandoning the thoughts, a yogi learns to listen to the nada. Nada is a sound which is based on the premise that the entire cosmos consists of sound vibration. The practice of listening to nada leads to oneness with the ultimate. When the body bends in a sequence of asanas, the aura opens up. Therefore, only the highest vibrational sound should be entering that space. That is why in the Nityananda Yoga sequences, the Sanskrit pramanas, scriptural references from source texts, are continuously chanted out loud throughout the Nityananda Yoga sequences. Another component of Nityananda Yoga is Japa. Japa is the internal chanting of a mantra, with the visualization of it rotating around the throat in a circular way allowing the yogi to feel the mild vibration of that mantra. When chanting, wear an energized Rudraksha bead exactly on the Vishuddhi Chakra in the hollow of the throat. This is the place where the air is getting converted into sound. If you wear energized Rudraksha there, constantly every word coming out will have the coat of that mantra. You will see this Rudraksha and the mild vibration meeting and the Kundalini in you will be awakened. A Japa Japa is one of the most powerful processes and techniques. It releases a certain kind of energy from your body and nectar from the throat. Bija mantras, seed mantras, refers to the single syllables mantras use to invoke certain deities. Bija mantras correlate to the specific chakras as we engage them, amplifying their power. Another component of Nityananda Yoga is mandalas. Mandala is a representation of the cosmos. The human body is the embodiment to the cosmos itself. Mandalas, representing the cosmos, and yantras, representing a particular deity, correspond to the internal structure of retinal and geniculate cells. Their construction is based on the tantric seer's intuitive knowledge of the mind's nature. Its relationship with subtle channels of energy, nadis, in the body, and the human need for a symbolic life. The symbolism of yantra represents a universal pattern and the mantra, the cosmic sound. The combination of the two helps the sadhak, yogi performing the yoga, to transcend the normal frame of reference and achieve a higher state of awareness, in which the individual being and the universal being are one. Another component of Nityananda Yoga is Aushada. Aushada is an esoteric science from the Siddha tradition which is used to achieve the state, space and powers of Mahasadashiva and gain access to the 25 states of consciousness. Like how a perfect mirror reflects the sun perfectly, so does a perfect body reflect consciousness. The science of Aushada, sacred herbs prepared as per Agama, is a way to make the body like a pure mirror. Aushira is a key component of authentic yoga to fully engage all the senses and stimulate the body through all chemical processes.
Yet another unique component of Nithyanda Yoga is Kalana. The Natya Shastra describes the combined movement of the hands and feet as a karana in sacred dance. It involves the synchronized movements of the feet, hips, hands, and even the fingers. The 108 karanas can be seen frozen in various temple sculptures and were used in the sacred dance. For the very first time, His Divine Holiness, Paramahamsa Nityananda, reveals the effect of karanas on the body and the mind and the breathing patterns that they are triggering. Performing the karanas puts you into a state of high awareness of your body, engaging multiple body parts at the same time. His Divine Holiness Paramahamsa Nithyananda delivers a major conscious breakthrough to the field of yoga through incorporating these dance movements. Another component of Nithyananda Yoga is weightlifting. Long before the rise of modern day bodybuilding methods, weights were applied to the body as a method to raise Kundalini, expand one's consciousness, and connect to the Divine, Paramashiva. This is why His Divine Holiness Paramahamsa Nityananda says, weightlifting is a spiritual quality. He has done intense self-research and has had a number of Akashic revelations, revelations from the cosmic archives, and has shared how this science was lived by the Natasampradaya yogis, who used weights in combination with their yoga practices. From heavy stones to wooden logs, weightlifting is not something new to the Vedic tradition. Adding weights with yoga, it will completely heal the whole body in various dimensions. Human beings live their lives in a fragmented way. That is why so many obstacles are faced throughout their life. As they imbibe the Nithyanda Yoga in their lives, they reintegrate the various fragments of their being and reestablish themselves into a complete being. That is because Nithyananda Yoga awakens the various strands of DNA in your body. The human body contains 12 strands of DNA, which allows us to access 12 dimensions of conscious awareness. The 12th dimension being the Paramashiva, the ultimate Shiva, which can't be described. When you experience the 12th dimension, you are an incarnation. As these strands of DNA are awakened, you will gain more depth in life and more length of life. With the interdimensional 12 strand DNA activation, which mainly happens through initiation, you have access to 10 times the information available from your DNA. This means that you can just directly download anything from the cosmic archives. Proper practice of yoga as per Sadashiva's instruction means imbibing his DNA into you, literally having cosmic union with him. Through Nityananda Yoga, you will experience the ultimate union with the Divine, Paramashiva. Paramashivoham is a boon to humanity from His Divine Holiness as an opportunity to imbibe Parama Yoga and experience the ultimate in each dimension of your life. You are going to have the Parama Yoga revealed by Paramashiva, ultimate Shiva. It is going to be the expression of the ultimate Yoga Understand, the ultimate secrets of union with the cosmos is yoga. All the ultimate truths will be revealed to you in this Paramashivoham, gifted to you in this Paramashivoham. Om Nityananda Paramashivoham Om Nityananda Yoga has become an $80 billion industry, incorporating everything you could think of from animals to food. And everyone is looking to get their share, be it through expensive Instagram posts. This might look fashionable and harmless, but what you don't understand is the detrimental effects it has on your consciousness. When you're practicing authentic yoga, you're working with an independent intelligence, 
a science to awaken the inner potential. So today I'm going to teach you guys yoga exactly the way I learned from my gurus. See the way I learned from my gurus, my yoga guru is an extraordinary teacher. His name is Yogananda Puri, literally is an incarnation of Patanjali himself, the way he used to play with yoga and yogic powers. I should say that his last statement to me, see, um, when I was 17, he passed away, he left the body. And very funny way he left the body, actually. He lived 125 years. And even three days before he left the body, he used to tie the steel rope on his chest and he will inhale, sorry, he will exhale, tie the steel rope and inhale, that rope will go to pieces. The power of prana. And even if it is 15 feet tall rock, through tongue he will create an intense sound as if he is putting an explosive, and that rock will crack. Even now in Thiruvannamalai hill, there is a huge rock which he cracked in front of people, the VIPs of the village. He called all of them, in front of them he cracked the rock, and it's still there. And the last statement he made is, I have come to make your body, I have done my job, means he has come to make my body to do what I am, what far I have happened. And I have done my job. Now it is time I have to leave the body. And it is so healthy, it is not dying. He made under the 
ECG machine. He was actually he had a heart attack. Doc, the, he was admitted in the hospital. In the ECG machine, he made 45 heart attacks. Still, the hospital has a record. 45 heart attacks and heart did not stop. And then doctors were afraid. They were saying, what crazy thing is going on? Every half an hour, heart stops for 10 minutes and then again after 15 minutes, it starts working. And they are neither able to say he's dead nor able to say he's, <laughs> he's alive. Because after half an hour, he's coming back. So they sent him back to home. In the house, he had a heart attack. Doctors declared him dead. And they kept, and kept the body and did all the last rites, which they were supposed to do. Before putting the body into the... They have actually buried him. As usual in India, yogis are given burial, sacred burial. They kept the body lying. But the burial is supposed to be given sitting. So what to do? They lifted the body, automatically body <laughs> got into Bhatmasana. <laughs> and still, nobody is sure that he is dead. And I am sure he is not dead. He is sitting there. And we have built a samadhi on it. The extraordinary way I learnt, I should say it's a, it's a kind of an entanglement. You see, he will stare at me and give one hug. Then he will leave me some six, seven feet distance. Just he will go on be doing asanas. And without even me remembering me, I'll just follow whatever his body does, I'll be doing. I've seen people of 100, 120 kgs will come to him to learn yoga. All he will do, he will just give one hug. And the first, they will ask, Swamiji, what should I do first? Guruji, what should I do first? Ah, Sarasasan. Means headstand. First, they will start there only. And they will simply stand. I have seen him doing it. I have seen people doing it. Of course, now if I put my body in any of the posture perfectly, my kundalini shoots up and system gets into samadhi. So I myself will not do all the asanas, but I will make both our yoga teachers to do, I'll entangle all of you. Please understand, do not put any effort. Don't put any effort. Just like how I say for the process, your effort is not required, your cooperation is not required, nothing is required. I'll entangle you guys. You will just follow what they are doing. Third or fourth asana will be sirasasana and you will all be doing. So this is the warm-up. So both of you guys come and do the asanas I am saying. Bhatma asana. Just observe them. You will see that effortlessly your body will get into the postures and you will start doing. Kundalini, wake up. Bhatmasana. Just flow with it. If you feel difficult, don't do. If you are very comfortable, do. Just, if the body is flowing with it, do. If you are feeling difficult, don't do, just sit. I know how to make you do.
put the neck on the ground and lift the whole body put the neck on the ground back and lift the whole body yes if you are just comfortably flowing flow with it if you are feeling difficult don't do a project if you have any difficulty do not do if you are comfortably flowing do it otherwise i know how to make your kundalini do kundalini wake up and lift the body mootu sarasasan if you are comfortably moving move into otherwise don't bother kundalini raise the body to sarasasana let all the bodies be tuned to sarasasana don't worry if you are not able to do if you are flo- flowing freely flow with it if you are not able to move do nothing i i just have to give you one or two more initiation that's all so don't struggle just flow with it get back and start bastrika pranayama blow the stomach into head kundalini wake up with the bastrika see no no listen i'll give you the exact definition of bastrika lower abdomen and belly just pull them leave just pull and leave just pull and leave i am not teaching you kapalpati understand only ha- do the whole thing here do it what happens all these places don't bother you be working only in this space lower abdomen and abdomen just pull even yoga need not be a practice it can happen just by entanglement even yoga need not be a practice it can happen just by entanglement yes now relax i'm going to awaken your kundalini whatever asana your body does allow it to do for next few minutes whatever asana, asana your body assumes allow it to do any posture any asana your body is comfortable 
starts rolling allow it to do just don't be inactive that's all so when the kundalini awakens automatically body will move will start doing different different things allow the body to do whatever it wants to do if it wants to lie down also allow it to lie down that's not a problem do whatever body wants to do 3 4 sec minutes you guys also whatever body is doing allow it to do if it is jumping allow jumping if you want to lie down lie, allow, lie down whatever body is doing comfortably do it allow it kundalini kula kundalini shambhavi stretch all the spine break the brahma grandhi break the vishnu grandhi break the rudra grandhi enter into the sagasrara let all the bodies experience yoga let all the bodies experience samatva vata pitta kapa dosha samatva kundalini stretch all the body and prana apana utana samana vyana samatva happen happen let vada pitta kapha dosha samatva happen in all the bodies you add your own twist to yoga it changes this internal process and brings a different effect on your physiology psychology and neurology some people practice yoga to build a strong physique for the healing of an ailment or for relieving stress and anxiety however throughout the years the original source of yoga has been lost and the entire science has been diluted many of the traditional yogic asanas and their context have completely disappeared from the mainstream practice Yoga is not just about asanas but aligning the body to the cosmic geometry and experiencing different states and dimensions. To miss this context is missing the whole purpose of yoga. Adi Yogi Sadashiva is the creator of yoga. He delivered the original yogic scriptures through the Vedas and Agamas as a way to experience the ultimate through our bodies. After the revelation of yoga by Sadashiva himself Great yogis and sadhus practice yoga to acquire the best physique and physiology to manifest the state and powers of Sadashiva. This is authentic yoga. Agoris, sadhus, sannyasis have always exemplified the yogic powers and demonstrated incredible feats. As recently as a few centuries back, powerful yogis roamed the earth shamelessly showcasing these powers. However, an unknown enemy violently attacked the very foundation of Hinduism. Fueled by the desire for power and control, strategic acts of pillaging, mass starvation, and cultural genocide cheated the modern Hindu into believing their own history as mythology. Today, we live in a society where child obesity has become accepted. Cancer is almost anticipated, and depression and suicide is at an all-time high. This is a distant sight from the peak of human potential described in the Vedas and Agamas. 
Gamam Sunitinanda, the cosmos itself, landed as a lightning bolt and revived the authentic yoga from the source. He is taking humans and making them superhumans with yogic bodies meant for manifesting powers. For the first time, Swamiji is reintroducing the Shastra Pramanas and reviving the purest form of yoga. He has already collected, preserved, translated, and delivered to the world many of the original yogic scriptures, which were virtually inaccessible. He is the only being teaching yoga based on authentic Hindu Shastras, and it is the only yoga for manifesting Shaktis, the amazing powers of Sadashiva. As a lifelong yogi and avatar, Swamiji is able to give an experiential understanding to his disciples by transmitting the state and space of a yogi. With two world records in Shivastamba Yoga and Kundalini Raju Yoga, he is taking the world of yoga by storm. He has published 108 plus Nitya Kriyas, 900 plus yogic asanas, 300 plus yogic techniques, 600 meditation techniques, and much more. He has tens of thousands of initiated yogis worldwide. He continues to give breakthroughs to all his disciples by initiating them into new yogic powers. His vision is to make Nityananda Yoga the certifying authority on yoga as per the Vedic scriptures to bring authenticity back to the practice. He will have thousands of Nityananda Yoga Acharyas ordained to share this authentic science with the world. And to verify everything with Shastra Pramana and Apta Pramana, he intends to build the world's largest library of yogic techniques authenticated by the yogic scriptures. He is establishing yoga as a powerful science to explore your possibilities, manifest shaktis, and explore the 25 states of consciousness and 11 dimensions of the universe. Presenting Kailasa's Nitinanda Yoga Festival 2022, the most authentic yoga celebration on International Yoga Day. Join us online for this full day yoga festival directly from the original source scriptures, June 21st from 8 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. Indian Standard Time. Experience more than 12 hours of free yoga sessions on yoga, meditation, pranayama, and revelations from scriptures dated thousands of years before Patanjali's Yoga Sutras. Join various enlightened talks, discussions, and seminars from Third Eye Awakened Yogis, all under the guidance of the Supreme Pontiff of Hinduism, Bhagavan Nityananda Paramashivam, the born yogi and avatar, whose mission is to revive and re-gift to the world My ability to will Understand? Just like you have various abilities, ability to see, ability to use your hands, ability to use your legs, ability to listen, ability to think, you have something called ability to will. The ability to will integrates all your abilities. The ability to will is the spiritual umbilical card connection with cosmos. Understand, other than God, no one can will. When we are told only God's will be done, means actually no one else can have will. Only God can have will. If you are having the power to will, you are connected to God, you are part of God, you are Him. Understand? Power to will is umbilical cord connection with God. Our umbilical cord connection with God is our power to will. If you will, no one can deny it.
even god cannot deny it because your will is bestowed on you by god the first verse starts with may my limbs vital life energy apyayantu mamangani vak prana chakshu shrotra mato balam indriyani cha sarvani it does not say oh god let my limbs speech life vital energy become strong no no apyayant mamangani i am declaring may my limbs speech life vital energy eyes ears and all the senses be fully matured and enriched with the strength and energy because my will is god's will mama sangalpa shiva sangalpam astu my will is the umbilical cord connection with the cosmos if i will something it has to shake the cosmos cosmos has to make it into reality because i am it i am still connected to it if i don't have the power to will i am disconnected from it if i as long as i have the power to will i am authority i am authorized to will i tell you guys just use this one truth by the way do you know what is my first point is rubbish it was here remon when you are having it better use now he did not use it no he did not use he said that if uh, you don't yeah, use it pra, pra, uh, uh, sadashiva may uh, think oh i think he doesn't need it and it can be taken away any day before it is taken away use it come to kashi when you have two legs to walk don't wait for eight legs to carry you come to kashi when you have two legs to walk don't wait eight legs to carry you use your will when you are having it ability to will is the peak of human consciousness you can experience ability to will is the peak of human consciousness you can experience for all the disciples and smash team this is the one liner for you guys today ability to will is the peak of consciousness use it to manifest universe in you understand everything i designed whether the channel i welcome all the viewers and i would like to wish all the viewers again happy international yoga day i hope all of you are having amazing time listening to these sacred truths and revelations on authentic yoga from hinduism and now we'll be moving on to the next session that is introduction to yoga paddhati now we'll be starting off with the pranayama topic and the concept 
a little about the SPH and uh, the Kailasa nation that the SPH has uh, established in today's world. The Supreme Pontiff of Hinduism, Nityananda Paramashivam, is recognized as the thousand and eight living manifestation of Paramashiva, Paramavatar of Paramashiva as per Sanatana Hindu Dharma, Hinduism, and by his predecessors of enlightened masses and adepts. The SPH Nityananda Paramashivam is reviving Hinduism as the 1008 Acharya Mahamandaleshwar, the head for all spiritual leaders of Atal Akhara, that is the ancient apex body of Hinduism, coronated as Mahamandaleshwar, supreme spiritual head of Mahanirvani Akhara, which is the largest apex monastic order, and the youngest Mahamandaleshwar, ordained as the 233rd Guru Mahasanidhanam, pontiff of Tundi Mandala Madhyam, and the SPH is also ordained as 200, uh, two, 293rd Guru Mahasanidhanam of Shyamala Peter Pitam and is ordained as the 23rd Guru Mahasanidhanam of Dharma Mukti Swargapuram Adinam and coronated as the 203rd Emperor of Surya Vamsha Surangi Samrajya. The SPH Nityanda Paramashivam is the reigning spiritual emperor of 20 ancient traditional Hindu kingdoms and the reviver of the most ancient, most peaceful, still living and long lasting demonstrable system that shows the possibility of peace, full coexistence amongst people. Following the coronation to establish Kailasa worldwide at the age of 16, for the past 27 years, the SPH Nityananda Paramashivam, as the face of the, unif uh, of the unified Hindus, has been single handedly, tirelessly inspiring the dispossessed Hindu diaspora to reclaim their Hindu centric freedom and stand unified for the centuries old Hindu genocide. The 1008th living manifestation of Paramashiva, the SPH Nityananda Paramashivam, stands as a unifying force for the two billion born and practicing Hindu diaspora worldwide and established the Hindu state Kailasa for the persecuted Hindus in over 100 countries. The SPH Nityananda Paramashivam has made resolute efforts towards recognizing and legitimizing the Hindu genocide which has been receiving scant consideration by global leaders and international bodies. The SPH Nityananda Paramashivam founded Kailasa United Nations for this. About, uh, a little about Kailasa, the ancient Hindu enlightened civilizational nation. Hinduism is the most ancient, most peaceful, still living and long lasting demonstrable system that shows the possibility of peaceful coexistence amongst people despite fundamental differences in their preferences and realities. Over the last 50 years, the effects of meditation and its significant impact on stress, crime rates, violence, political decision making and even war in local and global consciousness is well established. Unfortunately, last 200 years, forci forcibly, we are made to believe Hinduism is functional principle only for enlightenment and spirituality. It is absolutely dysfunctional for the political, social, economical system. Making Hindu family structure, Hindu social structure dysfunctional is the greatest crime done against humanity. Hinduism was once practiced freely in over 56 nations across the continent from Afghanistan, India, Nepal, Burma, Sri Lanka, all the way to Singapore, Malaysia, and Cambodia and Indonesia. And in 200 states, 1,700 samasthanas or provinces and 10,000 sampradayas tradition. Over several centuries, the combined forces of foreign invasion, political upheaval, colonialism, and religious persecution systematically ended millennia of Hindu Swarajya or self-rule. Today, Hindu temples remain in few countries, but the Hindus who worshipped in them have been ethnically cleansed. The Kailasa, with de facto spiritual embassies operating across over 100 countries and having presence across the globe as the largest spiritual knowledge source on Hinduism, is spiritually governed with the life possible all-inclusive universal policies sourced from Hinduism, revived by the SPH Nityananda Paramashiva. Having enriched and enriched more than 1 billion individuals over the past 27 years, the Kailasa raises the voice to protect Hindus, different Hindus and preserve the Hindu narrative for the world. Now that we know about the SPH and Kailasa, we'll be moving on to the session. So we will be learning the eight powerful pranayama te techniques that are there in the Vinyasa Pramas, Kailasa's Nitya Yoga. So we'll be learning more about them and their benefits. Now, before we learn about the pranayama, let us know, let us know the basics. What is prana? 
Prana is independent of breathing. During meditation, air going in and coming out may reduce, but the prana going in and settling increases. And this is the main reason why meditation rejuvenates a person. When there are more thoughts, the breath will carry lesser life energy inside and vice versa. The source of life, the life force or the energy which is the basis for existence. Prana is a kind of vibration which goes inside along with the breath and continues to increase the frequency and life energy inside your body. Even when one feels that the breathing has almost stopped during deep meditation, prana continues to go in and come out. So science of pranayama, uh, we'll be reading out the Atma Pramana, a personal account from the SPHS life. Uh, in his own words, Swamji says, the practice of breathing without thoughts being awakened is called the science of pranayama. When there are more thoughts, the breath will carry lesser life energy inside and vice versa. Unfortunately, most of the time, one takes in too much air without much prana flow inside. Bayu, movements of functions of prana. So uh, these are the movements and the functions functions of prana. First is prana, next, uh, next is apana, udana, samana, dhyana, naga, kurma, krikara, devadatta, dhananjaya. So vayu is governing different areas of the body. Prana vayu is respiration, right? The normal breathing that you do, um, inhaling and exhaling. Udana means sending up secretions. Dhyana means pervades whole body and governs various movements. Samana uh, means even, even distribution of essence of food to the body. And Apana means excretion of urine and feces. So why Pranayama? What are Pranayama? The Akashic revelation goes, by the practice of Pranayama, Breathing life energy without the thoughts getting awakened, the sadhaka, the sadhaka means person who's practicing yoga, incinerates all the defilements. By dharana, he annihilates all of his incomplete effects. By pratyahara, he maintains himself completely free from the negative thoughts and vices. And by dhyana, he becomes capable of nullifying the effects of even those qualities which do not decay. So the method of pranayama goes, even the gods like Brahma, etc., became free from death through consistent pranayama. Therefore, one should do pranayama. So there is more to just breathing in pranayama. Pranayama helps you to make your body stronger and aligns your breathing to the right cosmic breathing. So there are lots of methods of pranayama. One of them being, um, this is three parts of pranayama from the Darshana Upanishad, chapter 6, verse 1. And the Akashic revelation goes, I shall presently describe the method of pranayama, O Samskriti, Samkriti. Listen to it reverently. Pranayama is said to be made up of Rechaka, Puraka, and Kumbhaka. So the method of pranayama from Shastra Pramana, Trishiki Brahman Upanishad, verse 94, the Akashic revelation goes, expiration of, of foul air from the body, then inspiration of pure air, then purifying the air with the kumbhaka, similarly expiration once again completely, the exhaustion of air by repeating an above four processes said to be pranayama. So you inhale, you keep, uh, you inhale, you hold the prana inside your body for some time and then you exhale out. So when you inhale the prana and you keep the prana inside your body by holding, the, the uh, positive effects and positive impacts of prana immediately gets absorbed by your body and all these subtle diseases that are there in your body that we might not detect it in our day-to-day -day life will also get completely healed while you exhale out. So this is the method of pranayama, um, the inha inhalation, holding and exhalation. So in Kumbhaka Padati verse 20, the, uh, this is scriptural reference, the Akashic revelation goes, when a Muni ever effortfully holds the prana without movement, it is called Kumbhaka, which is practiced by all yogis. So this Kumbhaka is the uh, segment where you are holding the prana inside the body. So that is called Kumbhaka in Sanskrit. There are two varieties of Kumbhaka. There is uh, two methods of holding the prana inside your body. Uh, next slide. The Akashic revelation goes, 
that kumbhaka is of two kinds mixed and pure the mix is conjoined with rechaka expelling that is expelling the air out of your body and puraka infilling that is inhaling the air in, inside your body the pure is devoid of those two processes till the acquisition of the pure kumbhaka the yogin should practice the mixed kumbhaka when the pure kumbhaka has been accomplished for him there is nothing unattainable in the three worlds from the kevala kumbhaka the rousing of the kundalini is brought about hence the yogin becomes light bodied with a cheerful countenance with his eyes free from dirt with nada manifested released from the clutches of groups of diseases with his bindu under control and with his vital warmth glowing briskly uh so kumbhaka is where to hold here the shastramana gives you um more insight on three points in the body the akashic revelation grows drawing in the prana air outside and filling up with that with the belly uh, the prana in the belly in the morning and evening twilights in the hour before the dawn brahma at noon or at all times and holding it at the tip of the nose in the middle navel and at the big toes of the feet the man will live for a hundred years free of all diseases so holding this pr- prana in these particular points tip of the nose navel and big toes of the feet if you are able to hold the prana in these three points specifically then you are assured to live for 100 years and you'll be living for 100 years free of all diseases now we're we'll moving on to uh, the first kumbhaka called the samana kumbhaka so in samana samana kumbhaka the technique is very simple so you will be holding the breath after inhaling completely or exhaling it can be either ways and concentrating on building the internal fire so you can either inhale or exhale but you'll have to hold you'll have to uh, if you're inhaling you'll have to hold the prana inside your body or if you're exhaling you'll have to hold the prana outside of the body but the point is you'll have to hold it no matter what and you'll have to visualize the gastric fire the jata ragni in your stomach being created you should feel the intensity of the fire in your stomach while you're doing this so constantly when you keep doing this you will feel your jata ragni is completely awakened and you can physically feel um, the intensity of jata ragni getting awakened while doing this kumbhaka is a very very effective method and this uh, kumbhaka is um, very uh, uh used in uh, different different uh, in uh, all these four vinyasa kramas that is prathama vinyasa krama uh, dvitiya vinyasa krama tritiya vinyasa krama and chaturtha vinyasa krama the benefits of samana kumbhaka goes the results are control of hunger and thirst increased gastric fire quick healing of wounds and fractures so when you do go through some hunger or thirst or when you have when you have, when you are hurt and you have open wounds make sure to sit for 2 minutes or sit for 5 minutes and remember to do the samana kumbhaka and see uh, and experience it for yourself the next is sahaja kumbhaka in sahaja kumbhaka the technique is very easy here the shastra mana from kumbhaka padati verse 104 says the akashic revelation goes inhaling prana through the nose and carrying it along the kundali one should hold it comfortably off and on this is sahaja kumbhaka narrated by shri kriti vasa that is bhagwan parameshwara so the technique is super simple slowly you inhale through the nose and you will retain your breath so you will hold the breath once you slow once you slowly inhale and you're completely done inhaling you will hold the breath and you will imagine the prana going to the base of the spine awakening your kundalini then you'll be repeating this pranayama on and off the benefits benefits of sahaja kumbhaka goes from kumbhaka padati 105 the akashic revelation says with the practice of this sahaja kumbhaka one gets purification of the nadis that are the subtle energy grooves and energy channels in our body and longevity hearing of mystical sounds and removal of all blemishes so you will get a proper um, even toned skin all these skin diseases can just disappear when you practice sahaja kumbhaka the next is brahmari kumbhaka so the brahmari kumbhaka up to prana hatha hatha tatva kaumudi chapter 10 verse 18 
the Akashic revelation goes, one inhales forcefully to produce a sound resembling that of a male bee and exhales very slowly, creating a sound similar to that of a female bee. This technique fills the mind of a yogi with exceptionally aesthetic feeling. So when you rapid, inhale rapidly producing a buzzing sound of a male bee, so a male bee sound will be uh, more compared to a female bee. So when, you, uh, when you're inhaling, uh, you'll have to inhale in such a way that you produce a buzzing sound of a male bee, right? And then after you do that, you will have to retain your breath. That means you'll be holding the air or the prana inside your body right after that. And uh, as much as possible after you're done holding, you'll have to exhale. Or when you cannot hold anymore, exhale slowly with the buzzing sound of a female bee. So when you buzz, nobody around you should be able to hear that buzz. Only you will be able to hear that buzz. So your buzz should be so subtle. And that, that and as you buzz, you'll have to let go of the air that you have held behind. So you'll have to continue this to see the effects and um, understand when you do Brahmari Kumbhaka, you will see how fresh your mind becomes and your whole body becomes super refreshed when you when you do this. So if you want to practice this Brahmari Kumbhaka, sit aside, keep an 11 minute timer and do this Brahmari Kumbhaka continuously for 11 minutes and right after the 11th minute, you will see how refreshed you are. The benefits of Brahmari Kumbhaka is this pranayama produces ecstasy. That is true. Right after Brahmari Kumbhaka, you will feel your mind being completely fresh. Your whole body will be revitalized and energized. So when you do Brahmari Kumbhaka, you will experience that. So the next Kumbhaka is Rechup Kumbhaka. Um, in Rechup Kumbhaka, uh, the Shastramana from Srimad Sarvam Yantra Agama, Yoga Pada 19, the Akashic revelation goes, the sadhaka, the one who does the yoga, should empty the stomach by slowly exhaling the prana. This mode of pranayama is known as rechaka, which is instrumental in driving the prana out. Okay, so the technique is this. You will slowly exhale the prana, the air that you have inhaled, you will slowly exhale the uh, air out and then you will retain the breath outside. So you will breathe out and you will hold the breath outside as long as possible, you will be holding the breath. And when you cannot hold it anymore, then you inhale slowly. So the process is bo both inhalation and exhalation happens slowly. So you will exhale the prana out of your body slowly as possible. You will retain the breath. Hold as much as possible. Uh, hold the breath as much as possible in your body. Then when you cannot hold anymore, you will inhale the prana out. So you will inhale the prana inside your body as slow as possible. The next is Sitkari Kumbhaka. So from Sandalyo Upanishad, verse 1 and 3, the Shastramana uh, Akashic revelation goes, sucking the air through the mouth with the Sitkara, hissing sound, holding it in Kumbhaka as long as possible. The yogin should expel it through the nostrils. Therefore, thirst, hunger and sleep through indolence will not be produced. So uh, before you start the Sitkari Kumbhaka, close your eyes. You will have to press the lower teeth with the upper teeth and open the lips comfortably. So keep your teeth clenched like this and suck the air through the gaps in between the teeth with the sound and inhale. So here the Shahs Pramana clearly says you'll have to suck the air through the mouth with the sitkara, the hissing sound. So it will go like this. So through the gaps with the teeth, you will have to inhale the prana keeping your upper and your lower teeth um, against each other. And after inhaling, you have to close the mouth and don't hold. Do not hold. Immediately exhale through the nose. So it's, it's a very simple process. So you inhale through the mouth. And you exhale. So when you keep doing that, you will find so much difference in your body. You'll be able to um, see that your whole... Um, um, Below your neck, your whole lungs feel really expanded. You feel uh, this instant cooling feeling descends upon your lungs and you feel very refreshed. So a person who's experienced can speak like this. I have actually experienced this and I've done it. So doing this for a good five, six minutes will really give you the results. Whatever results you're looking for, it will actually give you that results. And this can help you uh, um, get rid of all these lung-related diseases.
Yes, this is another uh, Shastra Pramana for the Satkari Pranayama, the Akashic Revelation goes, turning the tongue upwards and producing the sound sit, inhale the air. After holding the breath, exhale through both the nostrils while making frictional sound. Concentrate on the tongue pressed and the sound along with the prana. This is called Sitkari Kumbhaka, which contributes to all the accomplishments. With the practice of Sitkari Kumbhaka, one controls the cupid, god of love, and becomes handsome. It helps controlling hunger, sleep, laziness, diseases, and, and one becomes free from all problems of health. The yogi enjoys a multitude of powers, recreation, etc. So it's such a powerful, powerful kumbhaka. It's not just merely breathing through your mouth and exhaling through your nostrils. It's much more than that. And for, if you focus it to the intensity of what you want to manifest, since this can give you the power of creation, you can manifest and create your reality, your desired reality. Sitting with that kind of a one-pointed focus and concentration on what you want to do. And with that context, doing the pranayama, you will not only reap the benefits of, uh, you not only reap the health benefits of the pranayama or the kumbhaka, you will also uh, manifest the desired reality that you've been wanting for a long time. The next is Sheetali Kumbhaka. So, uh, the Apta Pramana from Hatha Tattva Kaumudi, chapter 10, verse 16, the Akashic Revelation goes, One draws the tongue out to press them against the teeth and takes the air in. Then he slowly leaves the air, uh, air out through the roof of nose as um, before till he feels the sensation of the tip of the air, hair and nails. So you will gently press, press, place the tongue against the back of the teeth and inhale. So you will place the tip of the tongue on the upper upper part of your teeth, behind the, behind the upper part of your teeth and you will inhale like that. Then after you do that, you will hold your breath, then exhale slowly through the nose. So in Sheetali Kumbhaka, you will have to inhale keeping the tongue, tip of the tongue behind the upper part of the teeth like this. So in this, you'll be holding the breath for some time, as long as you are able to hold. Uh, and after, uh, and if you're not able to hold more than that, you can slowly exhale through the nostrils. This is Sheetali Kumbhaka. And Shastra Pramana, another Shastra Pramana for Sheetali Kumbhaka from Darshan Upanishad, verse 25 and 26. Akashic Revelation says, he who always drinks air by inhaling it through the tongue, that yogin will attain immunity from all diseases and of fatigue and thirst. He who should confine the air at the root of the tongue, after inhaling it by means of the tongue, will coolly drink the nectar of immortality. Expel with speed with uh, expel the air um, with, with the high speed in the body out of the two press and fill it in likewise till he is overcome with fatigue as with the blacksmith's pair of bellows when fatigue comes on in the body then should he fill in through the solar nadi and after constricting the throat should expel it again through the lunar nadi. This kumbhaka removes the excess of the mind, bile and phlegm, raises the temperature of the body, rouses the kundali, removes defects in the mouth, bestows auspiciousness, is wholesome, removes impediments such as phlegm remaining in the interior of the opening of the brahmanadi and is capable of bursting through the three knots as a result of effectively practicing the bandhas. This kumbhaka is known as the bastra and should be specifically, specially practiced. So the technique is very, very simple. So you have to continuously make quick burst exhalation out of the nose again and again by pulling the stomach inwards and up. So the whole technique goes like, um, in, you'll have to uh, exhale uh, the breaths that you take as fast as possible. So it goes like, so when you do that, you will feel your um, stomach muscles moving up and down, up and down, because you are exhaling from the bottom of the stomach. The prana from you are exhaling the prana from the bottom of your stomach every second. So you're going like this. 
so that is how bhastrika pranayama is done and this is very uh, this is very commonly used in our uh, kailasa nitanda yoga throughout and doing this pranayama all these kumbhakas that has been listed out to you with their uh, corresponding benefits understand these are the kumbhakas that are if uh, that that are actually incorporated in kailasa nitanda yoga so each and every asana has a certain uh, tailored kumbhaka for that asana for you to reap the best and the highest benefits from that asana through that kumbhaka so kailasa nitanda yoga is a wholesome package for you to experience yourself through manifesting your desired health your reality and uh, finally understanding your body in a deeper level the benefits of bhastrika kumbhaka uh, it awakens the kundalini the sha apta pramana from hatha pradipika of swatamarama chapter 5 verse 173 goes the akashic revelation says a yogi sitting in vajrasana should activate kundali and therefore thereafter should practice bhastrika this kundali is easily awakened so you practicing bhastrika pranayama sitting in vajrasana can instantly awaken the kundalini so for all the viewers out there who are really interested in knowing how to awaken your kundalini intensely sit with this cognition that that bhastrika pranayama can awaken your kundalini sit in vajrasana and focus on doing this pranayama doing this kumbhaka intensely then you will actually find that you are able to awaken your kundalini your inner potential your highest inner potential the more benefits of bhastrika pranayama next slide the akashic revelation goes the man of clear intellect after assuming the padmasana posture that is keeping your left foot on your right thigh and your right foot on your left thigh that is the padma padmasana posture and keeping his neck and belly in line keeping your head neck spine in straight line sitting in padmasana controlling well the mouth with effort should expel the vital air through the nose in such a way that it occupies with the noise the cranium from the throat so this is the noise that is speaking about <laughs> he should fill in a little air up to the lotus of the heart he should again expel it as before and fill it in again and again so this is a very uh, fast it happens fast it doesn't happen slow so you'll have to keep expelling air the second you inhale then you have to expel it out so when you're inhaling you should make sure that your prana goes to your heart center and comes back out so that that's how deep the prana should go it should, as you keep doing bhastrika pranayama you will find that your prana is able to go deeper than that and you're able to expel it as fast as possible at the same time even as a pair of bellows of blacksmith is blown in quick su- succession in the same manner should he cause the air in the body to move slowly until fatigue is experienced by the body he should expel the air through the solar nadi until the belly becomes filled with air lightly holding the middle of the nose with two four fingers but not tightly performing kumbhaka as before he should expel the air through the ida this which takes away the heat produced in the throat raises the warmth of the body kindles the kundali is endowed with good qualities and kills the sin is auspicious and health giving destroys the phlegm and other obstruction in interior of the mouth of the brahmanadi breaks through the three kinds of swelling brought about by the operation of the three gunas rajas tamas and uh, sattva should be specially performed this is known as a kumbhaka called the bastra so this is a next level bastra where you'll be using your four fingers but let us start with the first level bastrika pranayama where you're able to expel the air continuously you should be doing this until your whole body is overcome by fatigue right and then take some rest and again continue this Uh, more benefits on bhastrika pranayama from hatha pradipika swatmarama chapter 5 verse 176 the akashic revelation goes activate kundali followed by special practice of bhastrika with this practice a yogi can control premature death so just by doing these kumbhakas you are able to even um conquer death the most um feared uh, the all fears are related to death and everybody has similar experiences to this and if you want to conquer death especially premature death or any cognitions related to death basika pranayama and basika kumbhaka practicing this can really infuse a lot of powerful cognitions and can um make your body strong next is murcha kumbhaka from uh, the murcha kumbhaka technique from apta pramana hatha tattva kaumudi chapter 10 and verse 
Here, the Akashic revelation goes, inhale and retain the air firmly adopting Jalandhara Bandha and then exhale slowly while maintaining Jalandhara Bandha. This is called Mano Murcha Kumbhaka, which brings about a state of swooning to a yogi. So here in this Kumbhaka, it's not just Kumbhaka alone. Here, the Bandha is also incorporated. Bandhas are the internal seals that a person practices to get rid of all the diseases and to imbibe all the goodness, auspicious qualities, all of that. Uh, bandha is an internal seal. So Jalandhara Bandha is um, an internal seal where you lock your throat center with the help of your chin, right? So sitting with your head neck spine in a straight line, how I will be just demonstrating how this Kumbhaka is done normally. Uh, this Kumbhaka is also widely used in all of our Vinyasa Kramas and uh, it's a very, very important Kumbhaka. So sitting with your head neck spine in a straight line, you will inhale completely till your whole belly is filled with prana. Right after this, you will contract your throat and rest the chin on the chest, constricting the flow of prana. You'll be holding the prana inside. Your prana will be held down from your neck down. This is the purpose of Jananda Bandha. So inhaling, contracting your throat, resting the chin on the chest, you'll hold the breath and exhale slowly in the posture. So I'll be demonstrating this Murcha Kumbhaka to all of you right now. So you'll inhale. So after you inhale, you will have to lock your chin to your chest, your throat center, and restrict the prana from flowing out or leaking out of your nose. You'll hold the prana for some time through this way, through Jalandhara Bandha, and then you will hold, you will hold as much as possible, and then you'll exhale slowly in the posture itself. So with the chin on uh, on your throat center, uh, on your chest, like this, with this in this posture, you will exhale through. So all, all these kumbhakas that we have spoken about and has been clearly laid out through this uh, slide, understand these kumbhakas have so much more to them. Practicing them can literally take you out of all these physical, mental fatigue that you go through in your day-to-day -day life and can replace that with eternal bliss and so much awareness in your body. You will start enjoying life. You will start being more aware. You will start being more in the presence, right? What Swamji says, always be in the present we are not able to because we are either caught up by the past or the future. Practicing yoga can ground you, stabilize you to what you are, what you have to face, what reality is and how to handle reality with utmost awareness. This is where everybody misses in their life and making and going about in this uh, attitude and culture makes one regret in the future. Yoga can stabilize you and can get you that awareness for you to live in the present, for you to think straight, focus, concentrate, and for, for you to understand your own body, how it works, the mechanism and the systems and all the functions. So yoga is not just mere bending body. Pranayama is not just breathing in and out. It's much more than that. Only when you get into doing Kailasa's Nityanda Yoga, the full package is already compiled by the Ashwesh Nityanda Paramashiva. When you decide to Kailasa's Nityanda Yoga, you will see the experiences, uh, your desired experiences, your desired results, you manifesting powers, you manifesting a space of Paramashiva happen instantly right after the session. That is how powerful Kailasa's Nityanda Yoga is. So these are just the... Um, components that are involved in the yoga and these are such powerful components understand when you do this when you do these kumbhakas individually you can reap so much benefits when you do these kumbhakas or these components along with other 11 components your whole body raises to a different level a whole new level experiencing a different dimension of yourself so yes this is what uh, this whole session is about. Now that all of you have the knowledge on these nine different kumbhakas that are widely widely used in all the Pratima Vinyas, all the Vinyasa Kramas, you will understand the benefits and you will know the reason why you're doing these uh, certain kumbhakas. So with this, we'll be ending the session with uh, Purna Mantra. Om. Poor Namada, poor Namidam, poor Nat, poor Namudachate, poor Nasya, poor Namada, ya poor Nameva, Vasishate, Om Shanti, 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 he, Hari, Om, that's at 
भगवच्छी नित्यानंद परम शिव पादुका प्रणमस्तु ओम नित्यानंद Stay tuned for more sessions uh, revealing more sacred truths and revelations on uh, yoga, our authentic yoga from Hinduism. And yes, thank you, Nityanandam. my ability to will understand just like you have various abilities sciences experience the profound kriya techniques that completely detoxify the body lift you out of depression and awaken your kundalini special seminars in how to begin an authentic yoga class which way your body should face what should be applied to your body and the mantras to chant before you begin participate in yet another opportunity for a world record and the grand finale of the day's events join the inaugural dvitya vinyasa krama yoga class the 308 yoga asana sequence of traditional postures and be one of the first to download the nitananda yoga padati which includes the 108 308 and 508 asana sequences how to perform them along with each of their 12 components Enjoy this full day yoga event by learning directly from the scriptures hosted from the auspicious Nitanandeshwara Paramashiva Devalayam at Adi Kailasa Nitananda Sarvanya Peetham an entirely free event enjoyed from the comfort of your own home register now at the link below and save the day's schedule 
June 21st, 2022, for the most authentic yoga event of the year, Kailasa's Nitananda Yoga Festival 2022. <laughs> Yoga has become an $80 billion industry, incorporating everything you could think of from animals to food. And everyone is looking to get their share, be it through expensive apparel or sponsored Instagram posts. This might look fashionable and harmless, but what you don't understand is the detrimental effects it has on your consciousness. When you're practicing authentic yoga, you're working with an independent intelligence, a science to awaken the inner potential energy within you. When you add your own twist to yoga, it changes this internal process and brings a different effect on your physiology, psychology, and neurology. Some people practice yoga to build a strong physique, for the healing of an ailment, or for relieving stress and anxiety. However, throughout the years, the original source of yoga has been lost and the entire science has been diluted. Many of the traditional yoga asanas and their context have completely disappeared from the mainstream practice. In today's world, even though the technology has improved tremendously, one of the biggest problems, if not the biggest problem that humanity is facing, is feeling disconnected from themselves, from one another, and from nature and life around them. People desperately attempt to experience connection through various ways, physical union or sex, dependence to drugs and foods, or through the internet. But unfortunately, none of these paths lead to the true connection that we're seeking. Connection is actually not what is being sought. It is actually union that humanity is seeking in so many wrong directions. Union with the ultimate is the true solution. Yoga is the only way to experience union with the ultimate. It is the path to anti-sex to go beyond sex and experience union with all the other dimensions of ourselves and the universe. His Divine Holiness, Paramahamsa Nityananda, is a born yogi. He's a living incarnation of Paramashiva as per Hinduism. He has taken birth to bring back the context and authenticate the lifestyle of Sanatana Hindu Dharma. A large component of this lifestyle is yoga. Through Nityananda Yoga, he's bringing back the authentic yoga, gifting to humanity the very science that has been lost, allowing individuals to experience the powers, state, and space of the divine, Paramashiva. Nityananda Yoga is based off of Shastanga Yoga, not Ashtanga Yoga. Unlike the Ashtanga Yoga developed by Patanjali, Sadashiva's Shashtanga Yoga requires the presence and initiation of the Guru. Only then the Shashtanga Yoga starts. For the past several hundred years, the world has had to make do with lower levels of yogic practices. It is for this reason that despite millions of people practicing yogic techniques for years, we have yet to come across the beings who effortlessly radiate the exalted yogic state and powers of Paramashiva. After all, Paramashiva's Shastanga Yoga requires the presence of a living avatar to initiate disciples into his lofty state and space. Hence, it wasn't until His Divine Holiness Paramahamsa Nityananda revealed Nityananda Yoga that the original form of yoga was revived. It is not about building or achieving a yogic state after years of practice. Instead, it begins from the state of Paramashiva, based on initiation from the avatar, to manifest the state, space, and powers of Paramashiva. Accordingly, His Divine Holiness Paramahamsa Nityananda infuses so much of Paramashiva's energy in us through processes, techniques, and initiations that extraordinary possibilities naturally express through us. When His Divine Holiness transmits the highest conscious experience to us, we enjoy the experience and expression of Paramashiva called Shaktis as a lifestyle. The energy of the Divine gushes into your system 
through as a powerful cognition understand cessation of the mind chitta vritti nirodha can never happen from there to here it can happen only from here to there this authentic yoga has a backbone of four levels of yoga with 12 inbuilt components the prathama vinyasa krama the dvitya vinyasa krama tritya vinyasa krama and chaturtha vinyasa krama are the four main sequences of nitananda yoga but nitananda yoga doesn't stop there his divine holiness is also revealing various other ancient dimensions of yoga that exist on the pole rope ground water air and more the revival of these authentic forms of yoga allows you to experience the anti sex with parama shiva which is described in the sacred scriptures of shastanga yoga it literally guides one to a super conscious breakthrough then only the true experience of yoga happens through the manifestation of the powers of parama shiva this is how authentic yoga is identified understand yoga is nothing but union with cosmos it is so unfortunate the word union is very poorly mapped and understood just for physical sex please understand sex is poor man's version of union when you don't know anything you just do that that's it union is rich man's version of sex it is much beyond body biggest problem in the modern day is amputated yoga understand this is the word i use amputated yoga the angas of yoga is cut and packaged amputated yoga is the most dense to the modern day we need to give the original yoga as it is complete to the world yoga is the science which makes the divine to connect with you listen not you to divine no i'll tell you if you think man to divine you will be man forever in spirituality where you start you will remain there forever so start in right place never man to divine it is always divine to man precisely in my atma pramana i'll tell you yoga what is yoga strong cognition exploding into your system and changing your whole brain's alchemy putting you in the space beyond any description and release such intense ecstasy into your system is yoga from my experience the postures stretching your body everything hmm? is hmm? that session Hey and the everyone welcome to this segment of nitya kriyas and happy international day and in this segment we are going to learn about care and cure for depression with the blessings and trainings from the supreme pontiff of hinduism jagat guru mahasannidhanam his divine holiness bhagwan nityananda parameshwaran's blessings let's start with this segment of nitya kriya cure and care for depression so let's start with the sadguru vandanam nityanandam paramasugadam kevalam jnana murtim dvandvaditam gagana sadrusham तत्वस्यादिलक्षं एकं नित्यं विमलमचलं 
सर्वदी साक्षीभूत भावातीत त्रिगुणरहित सद्गु तम नमा So let's understand some basic concepts about health. Your belief is your health in Hinduism. Health, as many of us feel that it is not just the absence of illness. It is something more than that. It is well-being. just because you are not in the hospital the absence of disease does not mean you are healthy first truth that is the first thing that we all need to understand just because you are not hospitalized we think we are healthy the second truth health is a state of physical psychological emotional and spiritual well-being where you feel life is good the way you feel about you is very important for your health but if you have a wrong idea about you that itself can destroy your health not only the active pattern the passive beliefs that you have also affects your system also affects your health the passive beliefs alone can raise the bad cholesterol for example if you believe i cannot walk fast i can only be uh, walk slow i cannot lift weight i'm too old just this kind of beliefs are enough to build bad cholesterol in you your beliefs even if they are passive can build a disease in you you build negativity is in you so your health is just the expression of what you believe as you even your medicine is what you believe as you so what is optimum health as per hinduism optimum health meaning body is not only functioning perfectly the possibility of this is happening should not be there this is what is optimum health first thing required for optimum health is oxygen your body is made up of trillions of cells each one of them requires a steady flow of oxygen oxygen is so important even if you seconds of disturbance in oxygen supply cells can cause a disease every cells needs steady flow of oxygen unfortunately most of us even though we are breathing we don't take the oxygen completely it's a very shallow breathing oxygen supply to each cell is such an important necessity not only we don't supply enough oxygen to trillions of cells in our body we go on disturbing it in siddha tradition there is a beautiful description that every time you visualize a certain negative idea in your system for example you visualize an accident then even every such time one part of your body does not get oxygen supply 
the moment you create stressful negative thought current immediately the system responds to it and the oxygen supply to many parts of your body drastically gets reduced so in vedic tradition we go one step beyond oxygen we call it prana prana is the food for the mitochondria in your cell oxygen is necessary for your cell but the subtle part of the cell which we call as prana is required that is why when you do pranayama or when your kundalini shakti is awakened by initiation your mitochondria cell energy goes up and automatically you start experiencing optimum health and anti aging breathing is a basic thing required for health infusing the life energy that is called prana in sanskrit into your system is the most sacred secret for optimum health for your physical mental well being and for enlightenment itself if you start breathing consciously nothing else is required if proper breathing is taught thousands of your disease will disappear human beings need basic training for breathing this whole nitya kriya is based on breathing how your whole body can be supplied with intense prana the life energy which comes with the air that we breathe the subtle part of the oxygen how it not only your mitochondria cell energy your very dna can be awakened made to live through proper breathing hinduism is the most ancient most peaceful still living and long lasting demonstrable system that shows the possibility of peaceful coexistence amongst people despite fundamental differences in their preferences and realities and these solutions from hinduism are time tested and full proof over the last 50 years the effects of meditation and its significant impact on stress crime rates violence political decision making and even war in local and global consciousness is well established unfortunately last 200 years forcefully we are made to believe hinduism is fun functional principle only for enlightenment and spirituality it is absolutely dysfunctional for the political social and economical system making hindu family structure hindu social structure dysfunctional is the greatest crime done against humanity hinduism was once practiced freely over 56 nations across the continent from afghanistan india nepal burma sri lanka all the way to singapore malaysia and cambodia and indonesia and in 200 states 1700 samsthanas that is provinces and 10000 sampradayas which are traditions for the last 27 years the supreme pontiff of hinduism nityananda parameshwaram is the living incarnation of parameshwara who has revived the authentic solutions from the so scriptures of hinduism vedas and agamas through kailasa 
the ancient Hindu civilizational nation. Nitya Kriya. What is Nitya Kriya? Nitya Kriya is a unique and ancient combination of components of Nityananda Yoga that include asanas, that means the yoga postures, pranayama, that is breathing techniques, visualization, both external verbalization, that is mantras, and external sound, the mantras are the external sound vibration one hears or chant. And the internal verbalization, that is internally hearing of sound or mantra. These kriyas derived from the ancient source scriptures of Hinduism are decoded and revealed by the Supreme Pontiff of Hinduism, Nityananda Paramashivam, in the span of 18 years via 981 plus programs, sessions, and initiatives in 186 countries, this series of Nitya Kriya manuals com uh, comprise of cares and cures. The cares are preventive and cures, cure the diseases for the most common as well as the fatal physical and mental diseases and disorders. The cure, which is generally the cure and the care, which is preventive. Nitya Kriya work respectively for each condition or disorder. Even though the desired result might be experienced within a few days of practicing, or all the kriyas are also be practiced for 21 days and deliver the original yogic practices which are born out of millennia of research and development and all contribution and con Sorry for the technical glitch.
sorry for the technical glitch so the constant flow of energy that happens con continuously in your body through the 72000 subtle energy channels called nadis making up the energy circuit of the body the circuit is governed by the kundalini energy kundalini energy is the immense potential energy present in each of us that acts like a water pump that helps complete this energy circuit kundalini can be thought of as every individual's hotline to the infinite cosmic energy source once awakened by the appropriate yogic practices and the guidance and the grace of the guru the kundalini showers a host of blessings on the practitioner including a big boost of energy levels physical well-being the falling away of negative mental patterns true inner fulfillment and a deep connection to the universal source if there is a disturbance in the energy flow in some part of the body there is impedance to the energy flow to the rest of the body resulting in the onset of the diseases disorders and the disturbances in the body nitric kriyas are powerful tools which help remove these energy blockages restoring the life energy flow that is prana when the body is aligned in certain postures during the nitya kriyas the energy block is removed and realigned once the block is removed the kundalini energy gets pumped into the circuit during the kumbhakas when energy flow is reestablished the disease or disturbance is healed if your body allows you to do what you are supposed to do only then you are healthy health is not at all about 18 inch biceps and eight pack it is all about is your body aligning to your purpose that is health let your idea about health be established on cosmic principles hinduism has strengthened and redefined the ideas of physical health psychological healing spiritual counseling helping human beings mentally emotionally and psychologically by operating with the single unified goal of facilitating every individual to explore their ultimate possibility by enlightening them with the sciences elaborated in the timeless hindu source scriptures called vedas and agamas now let us understand the significance of the nitya kriya for overall good health and well being hinduism has solutions that can be easily practiced and incorporated in daily life the healing achieved by nitya kriyas is permanent as it works on the cellular bio memory level it generates natural steroids and therefore has no negative side effects so what are the spiritual roots of nitya kriyas nitya kriya is soundly anchored in the sacred yoga scriptures including the legendary patanjali yoga sutras as well as the 
three classic texts that form the base of yoga, the Hatha Yoga Pradipika, Geranda Samhita, and Shiva Samhita. Patanjali Yoga Sutra is the foundational text of yoga written by the father of the yoga, the enlightened sage Patanjali. This esoteric and highly practical text is based on Sankhya Yoga. It is said to date back to the second century BC, although it is believed to be far more ancient. Patanjali Yoga Sutras emphasize the value of yoga as a lifestyle through Ashtanga Yoga, that is eight-limbed yoga. Patanjali Yoga Sutras are useful even after 5,000 years. They are time-tested and foolproof and still produce the intended results for hundreds of yogis around the world. Hatha Yoga Pradipika. The next one. This is the classic 15th century Sanskrit Hatha Yoga text written by Swami Swatma Rama, a disciple of Swami Gorakna. This book is dedicated to the Adi Nada or Bhagwan Paramashiva, who is said to have really revealed the secret of Hatha Yoga to his divine consort Devi Paramashiva Shakti. Hatha Yoga Pradipika contains four major Upadesha as teachings, which reveal the correct understanding and practice of asanas, pranayamas, chakras, bandhas, kriyas, shakti, nadis, mudras, and kundalini. The next is Geranda Samhita. This is also a classical Sanskrit Hatha Yoga text. It is a practical yoga manual said to have been taught by the sage Geranda to Chanda Kapali. Geranda Samhita text has seven chapters. It advocates a sevenfold yoga, Shatkarma, Asana, Pranayama, Mudra, Pratyahara, Dhyana, and Samadhi, where each chapter elaborates on one of seven folds of Hatha Yoga. This is also a classic Sanskrit Hatha Yoga text. The other text that Nitya Kriya draws from includes Kumbhaka Paddhati or Raghu Veera, Yoga Kundalini Upanishad, Yoga Chudamani Upanishad, Yoga Taravali, Jnana Pradipika, Yogasana Mala uh, Sachitra. Kailasa's works towards availing this science of the 108 Nitya Kriya through the Nitya Kriya Care and Cure series to the world with the aim to safely and scientifically awaken and harness the Kundalini energy in the body through the self-administered healing techniques. As Kundalini is a self-healing mechanism, the practitioners of Nitya Kriya will find that not only their health and life problems diminish or disappear, but the very patterns that cause the disease are rooted out by the overflowing of super consciousness energy as the, as the being goes through a super consciousness mutation process. The other text of Nitya Kriya draws from includes this we already done this. Over the years, Nitya Kriya has made extraordinary progress in recognizing, diagnosing, and treating mental illnesses as well as 
सीवियर साइकोलॉजिकल डिस्ट्रेस कैलासा डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ हेल्थ इज कमिटेड टू बिल्डिंग ऑन दैट सक्सेस बाय मैचिंग ह्यूमैनिटीज हार्डशिप्स with equally magnanimous responsibility by improving the quality of healthcare for all the hindus through the signs of nitya kriya it is the policy of kailasa's department of health to work towards the unified goal of bringing excellence to the healthcare provisions to its citizens by providing them with the best services towards the well being so they can achieve success and prosperity untimely contributing to the world ultimately contributing to the world now let us see some of the testimonials uh, of the devotees who practice this nitya kriyas over the period of years the first testimonial is from ma sakshi pramana is from ma alicia bhurisi from usa she shares that in february 2011 i attended my first program with swami ji live bliss one over two way video conferencing uh, which he was um, conducting himself this was my breakthrough experience instantly giving me a strong feeling connection to swami ji and was beginning of my new life then my feeling connection become stronger when swami ji released nitya kriya which has forever changed my life i practice it daily and still do it to this day because the technique works wonders for me it filled me with so much positive energy and auspiciousness and also made me have a first levitation experience i felt more energetic vibrant happier focused peaceful and healthier everything changed for me and become a brand new person depression has left me and i'm finally letting go of all my anxiety built up over my so many years all thanks to this amazing gift from swami ji and we have another testimonial from um perumala parmanathan from toronto canada nitya kriya help me get it off my problems nityanandam i am perumala um parmanathan from toronto canada i want to share my experience with you i have had diabetes for the last 16 years and it had been very high for the last 3 years normal blood sugar is between 5 and 6 for me it is more than 15 so i was worried so when i heard about this diabetic nitya kriya i was so happy and i attended a one week workshop at toronto temple i am amazed to see my sugar level come down and in the mornings it is always between 5 and 6 and the doctor has reduced my medication to half now not only uh, did my sugar level come down my mind and body improved and i am so thankful to swami ji thank you swami ji thank you thank you and another testimonial is from ricardo says that help nitya kriya helped me to get rid of my problems 63 years old ricardo reported that he had been suffering from the age of 33 while recently he was introduced to nitya kriya about 4 months ago by his neighbor a disciple of the supreme pontiff of hinduism nityananda parameshwaram ricardo says he came to my house and taught me how i had to do it and before i started the exercise i checked my sugar level and it was 350 i did the exercise and the way he taught me to do it when i finished it i checked my sugar level and it was 85 I have never seen something reduce my sugar level so rapidly. Usually, I have to walk around the neighborhood for half, half to um, half an hour to one hour. Even then, I have to put a lot of insulin to reduce my sugar level. This is extraordinary, Ricardo says. When I went to see the doctor and see how I was doing while using this five units of insulin and doing the exercise daily in the morning, it. it was a miracle my doctor asked only 5 units of insulin and i said yes 5 units doctor said great 
Continue with this just five units each normally eat. Ricardo also stated that uh, he had blood sugar levels between 300 to 400 and every day he would take 45 units of insulin in the morning and 23 units in the afternoon. Sometimes he had to call the ambulance and was uh, and be hospitalized with the dangerously high and low sugar levels. Now he's feeling so good, he's going back to work at the age of 63. So now it's time to practice the Kriya. Now this Kriya, we are going to learn the Kriya for depression. This Nitya Kriya for depression helps you to care, that means prevention from depression. And if you're already suffering from depression, cure for that. So let's understand now care for depression. Prevention for depression. So before that, uh, disclaimer is the flow of the Nitya Kriya. So in a continue, it's a continuous process. Follow these steps. Do not break in between until the entire segment of the Kailasa's Nitya Kriya is officially completed. The following Kriya is recommended to be followed for at least 21 to 42 days on a daily basis to achieve the desired results. This technique is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical diagnosis or treatment. Individuals with any type of medical condition the elderly, children below age 14, women and the pregnant are uh, suspect they are pregnant, they may be pregnant, that are advised to seek professional medical advice before practicing this technique. We also who are not on two-way video conferencing are cautioned that they are practicing these techniques at their own risk. Now, if you see the statistics, what is depression, about the depression, depression or clinical depression is a mental state of low mood with aversion to activity, which affects the individual's thoughts, feelings, behavior, and sense of well-being. Depression is a psychiatric disorder, which is characterized by the feelings of extreme sadness, help, helplessness, hopelessness, despair, guilt, insomnia, loss of energy, loss of appetite, or everything. Inability to concentrate or focus, withdrawal from societal con social contact, irritability, low self-esteem, discouragement, and thoughts of death, and finally suicide. So depression may result as a reaction to a particular native uh, negative life experience such as loss of loved one, physical illness, loss of job, relationship troubles, or social isolation. It can also result as a side effect to drugs or medical treatments. These former cases may not require professional treatment. Prolonged depressive mood may lead to a medical condition such as uh, a mood disorder, in which case professional help of an individual is required. Treatment uh, very vary according to subdivisions of depression as determined by the severely and length of affliction. You see some of the statistics in the world today, everyone should know that 300 million people worldwide experience depression according to the World Health Organization. 3.1 million people between ages, especially the adolescent ages 12 to 17 in the US have experienced at least one major depressive episode in the past year. Um, and 8.7 women have depression and 5.3 men have depression. According to the Supreme Pontiff of Hinduism's own words, please start the process, Nitya Kriya. Let the Kundalini energy in you all be intensely awakened. Let you all be programmed for joy and excitement and energy. Let the pattern of depression break in all of you. Let the pattern of depression be destroyed in 
all of you. Now we are going to learn the care for depression. That is prevention for depression. This has got five steps. You have to do, remember, you have to do all these steps consecutively, continuously. The first step of these five steps is prana mudra. Second is deep breathing. Third is mula bandha. Fourth is the breathing technique one. Fifth step is breathing technique two. All these five steps for prevention, care for depression. So we're going to demonstrate this. I'm going to explain and you're also going to see that demonstration of this Nitya Kriya for care for dip depression. First step, Prana Mudra. Prana Mudra technique is sit in Padmasana, that is lotus posture. That is, bend your knees, place your left feet on your right thigh and right feet on your left thigh. Keep your eyes closed and focus on your breath. Keep your hands on your thighs. Press the tip of your ring finger and little finger to your thumb. Index and middle finger should be Pointed straight. Feel the life force as it rushes through your body. Stay on this pose for three minutes.
now. Now the next step Next technique, close. Next step is close your eyes. Inhale and exhale as deeply as possible. Repeat this breathing technique a few times. Take a very long, deep breath, as deeply as possible. Now, the third step is Moola Bhanda which is in English, it is internal seal. How to do this is sit in Pradmasana, put your left heel under the perineum and sit on it. This is Moola Bhanda. Now contract the abdominal muscles to expel the maximum amount of air from the lungs. Hold the breath as long as possible. When you can't hold any more, slowly inhale. Repeat this panda 11 times. I repeat this technique, this third step. Sit in Padmasana, put the left heel under the perineum and sit on it. Now contract the abdominal muscles to expel the maximum amount of air from the lungs. Hold the breath outside as long as possible. When you can't hold anymore, slowly inhale. This is one cycle repeated 11 times. Now, the fourth step. Fourth step in prevention or care for depression. The fourth step is breathing one. The breathing technique one. 
this technique is release the whatever you are in the mula bandha release that bandha you can take your left heel out now in this breathing technique you inhale slowly and fill the abdomen and the lungs as much as possible inhale slowly and fill the abdomen and lungs as much as possible hold the breath inside as long as possible then exhale very slowly repeat this is one cycle repeat this 11 cycles 11 times you have to repeat i repeat this again inhale slowly and fill your abdomen and lungs as much as possible you hold this breath inside as long as possible now when you cannot bear this exhale very slowly repeat the cycles 11 times now the next step fifth step for prevention or care for the nitya kriya for depression is breathing technique two so in this step what you are going to do is exhale completely by contracting your abdominal muscles retain the breath outside as long as you can you exhale and just retain retain the breath outside as long as you can when you inhale inhale and fill your lungs and abdominal muscles hold the inside as long as you can repeat this second time and repeat exhale quickly by contracting your abdominal muscles retain the breath outside as long as you can and now we are inhaling inhale and fill the lungs and abdominal muscles hold in sight as long as possible before exhale when you exhaling again exhale completely and by contract so this is one cycle repeat this cycles for 21 times
repeat this for 21 times. Repeat this for 21 times. Somebody dots, I don't know. No, I'm not projected now. What I should do? I should continue or not? Okay. So now let's move on to cure for depression. So in the steps, in this cure for depression, it has got three steps. The three steps are, the first step is sitting in Padmasana, the posture. In Padmasana, the following technique will be performed. The rest of the two steps you will do the sitting in Padmasana. The second is Sitali Kumbhaka, that's a breathing technique. And the third is Bastrika Pranayama. That is again the breathing technique. Both Sitali Kumbhaka and Bastrika Pranayama, both these breathing techniques you perform while sitting in the lotus posture Padmasana. So now the first step sitting in the posture Padmasana. In this posture, place the right foot on the left thigh and similarly the left foot on the right, right thigh. Cross the hands behind, behind the back and firmly catch hold of the great toes of the feet so crossed. As you see the demonstration. Place the chin on the chest and fix the gaze on the tip of the nose. Settle in this posture for 30 seconds. I repeat the instructions. Sit in Padmasana. Then 
cross the hands behind the back and firmly catch hold of the great toes of the feet. So crossed. Let as you see in the picture and the demonstration. Place the chin on the chest and fix the gaze on the tip of the nose. Settle in this posture for 30 seconds. Now let's move on to the second step of this cure for depression. In this technique, the second step is breathing technique of Sitali Kumbhaka. In this step, Sitali Kumbhaka, continue to sit in Padmasana, close the eyes and relax the whole body. Extend the tongue outside of the mouth and roll the sides of the tongue. Roll the sides of the tongue up so that forms a tube. Inhale slowly through the tongue. At the end of inhalation, roll the tongue in and close the mouth. Retain it there for a short time. Then exhale slowly through the nose. This is one repetition and do it for 21 times. I repeat this instructions again. It is Sitali Kumbhaka. Continue to sit in Padmasana and relax the whole body. Extend the tongue outside, outside of the mouth and roll the sides of the tongue to make as a tube. Twist the tongue on both sides, make it as a tube. Inhale slowly through the tongue. At the end of inhalation, roll the tongue in, close the mouth. Breathe in there for a short period, then exhale slowly through the nose. Repeat for 21 times. Now, let's move on to the last step. Bastrika. Another breathing technique for the cure for the depression. This is the last step. Step three of, of the cure for the depression. That is Bastrika Pranayama. So, how to do this is you need to continue to sit in Padmasana. Inhale slowly. Expanding the stomach. Sit in Padmasana and inhale slowly. Expanding the stomach. Then exhale slowly. Repeat this Kumbhaka 21 times.
after 21 times now inhale slowly hold the breath as long as you can when you feel you can't hold it quickly quickly expel the air with the sound of bellows at this moment when you're doing this the stomach should con um, contract to touch the back do this complete sequence three times so i repeat this inhale slowly hold the breath as long as you can when you feel you cannot hold quickly you cannot hold any more quickly expel the air with the sound of bellows at this moment the stomach should contract to touch the back do this complete sequence 21 times that comes to the conclusion of this nitya kriya for depression as the supreme pontiff of hinduism suggests do this nitya kriya for care and cure for depression for 21 days suggested or you can also choose to do 42 days continuously for the complete results so now this come to the conclusion of this session and moving on to our next segment so let's conclude with the purna mantra oh oh namada purnamidam purnat purnamudashyate purnasya purnamadaya purnameva vasishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tasat Sarvam Bhagavad Sri Nityananda Paramashiva Paduka Panamastu Om Nityanandam Nityanandam System to retain that alchemy experience what i am teaching as nityananda yoga is not one more brand yoga it is the yoga nityananda yoga is the revival of the authentic yoga as per the scriptures where the 12 components of each asana are going to be experienced you are going to have the parama yoga revealed by parama shiva ultimate shiva ultimate truth Understand the ultimate secrets of union with the cosmos is yoga. By practicing Nityananda yoga with these components, strong roots are built within the body and ecstatic bliss is experienced. This yoga delivers the direct experience of samadhi, experience of oneness with the ultimate, to manifest the state, space and powers of Parama Shiva. Each of the 12 components of yoga work on the unmanifest layer, the avyakta, antimatter, anti-sound, anti-sex. Anything done in the level of usha, the expression matter, due to matter's quality of going up and down does not stay permanently. Anything done in the level of chaya, the existence, antimatter, as it does not go down, stays permanently. Anti-sex with Paramashiva is Nityananda yoga. Anti-sex is intense completion for what you know normally as sex. During the process, the anti-sex body goes through passive sexual relationship with the avyakta, unmanifested component of Parama Shiva. In order to achieve this intense completion, His Divine Holiness Parama Ham.
Brahma Muhurta. Without any doubt, the best time for one to practice is during Brahma Muhurta. That is a period of two Muhurtas, time units of 48 minutes or about one and a half hours before dawn. Awakening and beginning your practice during this time tunes the biological clock and is the best way to, re to reverse the aging process. Now we have the Shastra Pramana, the evidence from the scriptures, original scriptures for Brahma Muhurta. It is taken from Ashtanga Hridaya. It says, Brahmi Muhurtam Utishay Brahma Muhurtam Utishayhi Swastho Rakshar Swastho Raksharatham Ayusha Tatra Sarvartha Shantyartham Smarecha Madhusudana which means one should wake up in the Brahma Muhurta for sustaining perfect health and for achieving a long lifespan as desired. Since you are half awake and half asleep at that time, the bio memory and muscle memory is most receptive to change in cognition, remove self-doubt, self-hatred, self-denial, that is SDHD, and create the reality you want to hold the space for. The logic is not thick enough. The Atma Pramana by the Supreme Pontiff of Hinduism, Bhagwan Nityananda Paramashivam. Early morning, the period of Brahma Murta, where the so called reality, waking state, has not become 100% real for you, and the dream state has yet not become 100% dream state for you. When you are not, when you are just moving in between the Brahma Murta, that is morning 4.30 a.m. to 6 a.m., where your inner space, some moments, is in waking state, some moments in the dream state. Make use of that time to infuse some ideas into your system. The Brahma Murta consciousness is unique time and space when the material out of which you are made of is available for alteration, transformation, and manipulation. It is as though it is liquid. Hence, anything you try to infuse into your inner space goes in very easily. Just like a needle moves into the banana, it can easily enter into your system. For example, when you feel you do not have enough wealth, you can try to play and infuse your with the idea, let me manifest wealth during Brahma Mahurta. It will not take more than three or four days to realize that you are setting the trend and thought current of what you want to express in what Brahma Muhurta time. The SPH says that sleeping during Brahma Muhurta means wasting one's life. During Brahma Muhurta, you should not entertain the thought currents which are not directly conducive for your life because whatever you entertain during that time becomes part of you. Understanding you and stuff out of which your life is made is ultimately from you and realizing that you can transform, manifest, manipulate, play around, do everything you want with the stuff out of which your life is made is Kundalini awakening. Waking up at Brahma Murta is a powerful spiritual practice that can lead an individual to this experience. Atma Pramana by the Supreme Pontiff of Hinduism, Nityananda Paramashiva. The best body, best mind you manifest with Tyaga. When I say wake up in Brahma Murta 4.30 to 6 a.m., if you, if you give up your sleep, that tyaga makes your DNA to develop in the material selection process, choose, take up the quantum jump, which will make your brain never fall into coma. You will be alive and aware even when you go into dream, deep sleep, and even when you leave the body. That is Icha Mrityutva, the death by will given to you if you wake up in Brahma Muhurta. Anybody wakes up in Brahma Muhurta, it's sun's energy. Surya Karanas, the gift of sun is the early morning, sunrise time, the energy he gives and the light he showers. Whoever wakes up in the Brahma Muhurta and eats that sun's gift is given Icha Bhittitva. Next section, cleansing and detoxifying. Cleansing, detoxifying and purifying the body. 
Yoga is a science of awakening the Kundalini Shakti, the infinite potential energy which lays dormant within us all. However, like a pipe with clots in it, our body has energy clots in many of the 72,000 nadis. Thus, before we even begin to move our body on the mat, to absorb and retain as much prana as possible, the yogi should first cleanse and detoxify their body as a daily ritual in itself. Again, Apta Pramana from Hatha Pradipika of Swatma Rama. We will quickly go through this. It means when all the network of the impure nadis get purified, then alone the yogi becomes capable of retaining prana. Atma Pramana by this PH. Understand Shakti Pada is rekindling the energy component of you and that component taking over your body and mind. Prepare your body through yoga and panchakriya. Prepare your mind with Vedic software, integrity, authenticity, responsibility, and enriching. Always be in the space of responsibility and enriching. Shuddhi Kriya. Shuddhi Kriyas involve four powerful cleaning, cleaning processes to remove toxins and impurities from the system. Just like how we take a shower every day to clean the external parts of our body, Panchakriya is a process which cleanses the internal organs of our body, keeping it cool. These techniques not only cleanse our body, but bring peace and balance to our mind and lightens and bliss, lightness and bliss in our, to our being. Which is why, during programs, the Supreme Pontiff of Hinduism insists that all the participants do Shuddhi Kriyas every day, so that the heat created during the Kriyas and energy darshans can be removed and so that the body is able to hold the energy permanently. Ramakrishna Paramahamsa says, you just need to keep your stomach clean and light, nothing else. You just need to carry your body gracefully, nothing else. Panchakriya is a technique embodying purification. Once you complete Panchakriya, you will feel the whole body is pure. Panchakriya cleanses the body and the Haritaki powder is said to activate the non-mechanical parts of the brain. The Supreme Pontiff also says, our morning panchakriya is not just taking bath, it is detoxification process, decalcification process. Applying vibhuti and kumkum is decalcification. Taking the jalavasti, neti, all that kriyas is detoxification. Detoxification, decalcification, put together is Panchakriya. The first of these Shuddhi Kriyas is Jalabasti. The Supreme Pontiff revealed in a Vakyartha Sadas a direct Shastra Pramana from Paramashiva himself on the benefits of Jalabasti, which took place between a Saptarishis and Devi in the presence of Sadashiva. They were discussing about psychology and health. One Rishi made a statement, if your stomach is heavy, do not believe it is fat. And then the stomach, and then we strongly, and then he strongly stated, it is a poo, it is not fat. Then Devi asked, what is the percentage? And the Rishi responds, three-fourth is a fat and one-fourth is a mala. And then that's when Paramashiva introduced the powerful benefits of Jalabasti. Paramashiva said, the food which is not digested in the last 48 hours is what we call as mala. The food which is not digested for a few years is called fat. He says, jalabasti melts both. Anima melts both. It cleanses both. To that detail, please understand everything you are going to do is to make you manifest Paramashivatva. Today, the modern science even shows that anima can support weight loss, remove toxins and heavy metals from your body, improve your skin, immunity, blood pressure, and even energy levels. Apta Pramana, Varjalabasti, which means one adopts Katasana in navel deep water. After inserting a tube in the anus, one manipulates the anus to raise the apana, vayu, upwards. This is Basti Karma. Another Shuddhi Kriya, the next one is Jala Neti. 
powerful cleansing technique jalaneti easily removes the mucus and pollutants from your nasal passage and sinuses and allows air prana to flow without obstruction many people notice how this helps relieve allergies cold and sinusitis and even claim that it prevents and manages other diseases of the respiratory tract like asthma pneumonia bronchitis and pulmonary tuberculosis on top of this swamiji has said that this also is able to subtly cleanse the third eye agnya chakra as the purifying water passes through that region aap the pramana par janaleti which means the process of neti quickly cleanses the frontal sinus sinuses offers clear eyesight and rids of rids one of the hosts of diseases occurring in the region above shoulders netra shuddhi eyes this is the next among the pancha kriyas the next shuddhi kriya netra shuddhi eyes easily become overused and tired from being constantly subjected to external stimuli like bright lights from the computer and tv screen poor indoor lighting and the irritants of air pollution like smoke dust and fire acuity of vision is reduced in tired irritated eyes this can result headaches migraine general fatigue irritability squinting and eye strain in impacting health and quality of life benefits of netra shuddhi cleansing removes accumulated dust particles eye secretions and body heat that irritate the eyes reducing itching eye strain redness and burning sensation making them feel cool and fresh it reduces puffiness around the eyes and even helps in the prevention of conditions such as cataracts it also has a relaxing effect on an anxious mind netra shuddhi continues the technique is fill clean eye cup with pure cool water bend forward and bring cup to the eye eyeball is now in the water rotate the eyeball and blink several times alternatively after making sure the eye cup fits either eye socket snugly lift the chin open the eye and rotate the eyeball blinking several times for 20 to 30 seconds if there is a slight burning sensation stop the cleansing bring head forward and remove the cup from the eye repeat the same with other eye change out the water between eyes repeat 2 to 3 times for each eye as needed this is again the apta pramana from bhava prakasha which means as per the akashic revelation when taken after the food haritaki immediately negates and removes all the negative effects of vata pitta and kapha that arises out of the food we ate atma pramana from the supreme pontiff the oxygen level in the blood increases to 300% the main thing is the whole blood becomes pure 300% oxygen means equivalent to 2 hours of pranayama made of the powdered nut of the kaduka tree native to india this medicine works in a subtle way on the mind as well wiping away all the engraved memories some scars and negative mental patterns helping one to become aware of the inauthenticities and complete with their root patterns now next is ceremonial bath after rising out of bed one should always first take a bath or shower and cleanse the body of any or all impurities yoga is sometimes referred to as a practice however it is actually a hindu ritual and before all rituals the sadhaka the spiritual practitioner should cleanse the body on the physical level this opens up the pores of the skin but on the spiritual level it opens the being up to receiving the higher divine energies atma pramana from the supreme pontiff prana is which is in the form of water comes to you when you take bath when you wash your body understand not when you drink liquids liquids bring only the solid the bhu prana not the jala prana jala prana gets into the system only through skin especially your lower body the private parts of the body need to experience the pressure of large quantity of water to heal itself rejuvenate itself and breathe jala prana it is one of the powerful 
rejuvenation detoxification method. More Atma Pramana regarding the ceremonial bath. Next sec uh, section, we move to where to practice yoga. Pramanas again, which means in the places such as a solitary house, charming monastery, auspicious temple charged with divinity, bank of river, not frequented by the people, one's own house, unapproachable dense forest, sequestered place hidden by the trees, places free from the disturbing sounds and a quiet place free from the presence of humans, animals, insects, and so forth, in the place free from those which cause hindrances and disturbances to yoga practice, in the places which are not owned by others and in the places well protected from the searching heat, scorching heat of the sun, the sadhaka should commence the yoga practice. Tying the hair. Before beginning, every yoga ritual, the yogi should tie their head on top of the Sahasrara Chakra, top of the head, and avoid having any loose hairs. If one has short hair, they need not worry about tying the hair up. Ideally, the style of hair up that the yogi should have is the Shiva Jatas. More Atma Pramana from the Supreme Pontiff. You know there are many points in the head which need to be constantly pulled, loaded. Excuse me. Sorry for the glitch. So the Atma Pramana says, you know, there are many points in the head which need to be constantly pulled, loaded. So inside awareness will be raised to a very high point. See for your mind, possess the brain completely. The many points of the brain need to be awakened, kept alive. If I have to put it more raw way, how many of you had the problem of this hot flashes in your life? Even men go through that. It's not that only women during the menopause time go through. Even men go through that, the hot flashes. The hot flash is nothing but your brain trying to recoup from the nervous breakdown. Your brain is not able to hold the activities of your mind, both trying to settle that friction, getting healed is hot flashes. Thus, jatas are all the help for your mind's activity getting settled with your brain. So larger mind activity like turiya, turiya tita experiences can be bolted in your brain with jata. More pramana for shiva jatas. Now I will explain about the wearing of jatas, the matted hair. The yogi can wear the braided hair forming a coil on top of the head. Those who are with shaven head should not wear the matted hair. There are various patterns in braiding the locks of hair, jat, uh, jata, which are beneficial and auspicious. Now it goes on, the agamas goes on, go on to reveal the, the number of jatas which are allowed to be worn by the sadhakas, by the practitioners. Next segment is Aushada. Aushada is a sacred alchemy science from the ancient Siddha tradition. It combines sacred herbs, prana, the cosmic force energy, and most importantly, Shaktipada, that is entanglement energy of Paramashiva, the ultimate, which can be ingested or physically applied to enter into the body. Through this ancient science, the state, space, and powers of Paramashiva can be experienced, giving access to the 25 states of consciousness. Like how a perfect mirror reflects the sun perfectly, so does a perfect body reflect consciousness. The science of Aushada 
sacred herbs prepared as per agamas source book of hinduism revealed directly by parama shiva is a way to make the body like a pure mirror because certain herbs are capable of holding thought currents and transmitting them into you they can be infused with a oneness experience during the aushadha making process and directly consumed aushadha heals the physical psychological and physiological components of your being by tempering and transmuting the whole system allowing you to be a pure reflection of parama shiva the pure super consciousness as a direct science from the agamas it is a direct teaching of parama shiva revived by the avatar to raise humanity to the next level of consciousness next is applying bhasma the shastra pramanas from kamika agama it says with the right and left hand the sadhaka should apply the bhasma by smearing over his body such smearing of bhasma should not be done by the should not be done by the well learned sadhaka in front of guru sacred fire shrines of the deities roads and passages and being in the impure ground in some scriptures smearing of the bhasma in front of the shrines of the deities and of the sacred fire has been well recommended the direction for the smearing of the bhasma has been laid down for the brahmins in the shaiva agamas if the sadhaka is not capable of doing this bhasma udhulana smearing of the bhasma he may apply the bhasma in the style of three stripes tripundra more shastra pramana for applying bhasma from the purva kama kagama next is gnananjana shri guru gita says ajnana timirandasya gnananjana shalakaya chakshurun militam yena tasmai shri guruve namaha which means one who removes the blinding darkness of the eyes caused by the absence of true liberating knowledge by applying gnananjana the sacred black eyeliner anointing the three eyes which is of the essence and bio energy of pure knowledge and awakens the all pervasive infinite eye chakshu the intra organ through which all that is is seen onto that shri guru i surrender next is kumkum and sandalwood atma pramana vadus by the supreme pontiff rubbing the turmeric and applying kumkum that detoxifies the intra organ called third eye putting your attention on the third eye activates something called agnya means the energy to activate the intra organ called third eye happens by putting your attention on it sandalwood is used to invoke divine energies it is one of the most powerful medicines in ayurveda for detoxing cooling the body healing wounds and healthy skin it's infamous for its anti it's famous for its anti aging quality qualities but also in spiritual properties like clearing the mind and reducing stress before entering into the ritual of kailasa's nityananda yoga all yogis should apply gnananjana onto the third eye kumkum onto the third eye turmeric onto the both temples both sides sandalwood paste onto the both temples and bhasma onto all 16 points of the body direction for yoga beginning the ritual of yoga all authentic yoga classes rituals begin with a yogi acknowledging lord shiva and their guru when you invoke the presence of the master you are inviting the very energy and the source of your liberation without invoking the presence of the divine yoga is reduced to a mere physical exercise shastra pramana which means the yogi should perform the yogic processes by offering his devoted salutations namaskara to the disciples to vinayaka that is ganesha his guru and unto me ishwara parama shiva by placing the self in the uniting space of oneness being absorbed in restful awareness offering namaskara shastra pramana from kamika agama with your heart absorbed in nothing but the guru let go of attachments to your status as student spouse 
parent and to your social standing, fame and cravings for accumulating wealth. It is true that those who direct all thoughts to me alone achieve the highest state. This supreme state can also be attained by wholehearted worship of the Guru, who is Shiva manifest in human form. Shiva Mula Mantra The Shiva Mula Mantra is a mantra chanted internally before each and every yoga ritual. After acknowledging the outer Guru, you claim and state that same consciousness within your own being, experiencing Paramashivoham, that is, I am Paramashiva. The Pramana from Sarvagnanotra Agama states in the Yoga Pada section, without allowing the upper row of teeth to touch the lower teeth and without allowing the tongue to touch the corners of the mouth and keeping his eyes half closed and raised, the sadhaka should repeat the Mula Mantra of Shiva in a perfect way as instructed by his Guru. After chanting the Sadguru Vandanam, chant the Shiva Mula Mantra 11 times internally. Chant Om Ham Om Shivaya Namaha meaning I bow to the Supreme Consciousness so that Consciousness, who is my beloved teacher, I bow. Ritualistic Cleansing All Hindu rituals hold both a scientific and spiritual significance, including Archmaniya, the ritualistic cleansing, that is a purification ceremony, which plays an important role in one's conscious evolution. This purification ceremony or samskara is a process to free you from various vices, sins, faults, and is even said to resolve physical deformities. The literal meaning of the word archmana means to sip. In Hindu scriptures, archmana is a process of sipping water known as while reciting sacred chants. Archmana is a purification ritual in which the yogi sips water three times from the base of the right thumb, also known as Brahmatirtha. This process is repeated three times to free the yogi from three shortcomings that is, kayak, physical or bodily, vachik, that is verbal, and manasik, that is mental. It also provides physical benefits. Your throat is cleared from vata, air element, which is associated to Vishuddhi chakra, pitta, fire element, which is, which is associated with Manipuraga chakra, and kapha, which is associated with Swadhisthana chakra water and earth element, doshas, and you are clear, You can clearly chant the mantra or recite divine names. Thus, this ritual helps unblock and cleanse the above-mentioned chakras. More pramana for this cleansing process. After chanting the Sadguru Vandanam and Shiva Mula Mantra 11 times, take one udharani, that is spoon of water from the Panchapatra, that is cup, and pour it on the center of your right palm. Then with the chanting of the mantras, drink the water from the palm three times. The three mantras to be chanted are Om Atvam Shodhayami Swadha, Om Vidya Tattvam Shodhayami Swadha, Om Shiva Tattvam Shodhayami Swadha. Then chant the Hridaya Mantra, Om Ham Hridaya Namaha. So with these mantras, we perform the Archmana, that is the purification process with the help of water. With the base of the thumb, wipe the lower and the upper lips with the last mantra, that is Om Ham Hridaya Namaha. Then wash your hands, touch So touch the lower and the upper lips with the index and the middle fingers, then wash your hands again, touch both the nostrils. So these are the different different steps which you will be taken and guided along during the yoga session. That is then the conscious declaration, that is Sankalpa. In the ritual of Kailasa's Vityananda Yoga, before beginning the asanas, the yogi 
first sits and declares the purpose for which they are there. They wake up so early. Why did they set this time aside for themselves? The context is clearly set from this point forward. I am here about to move my body in order to manifest the divine within me, Parama Shivatva. I am the divine Parama Shiva. So with this Sankalpa chanting, we set our will with the conscious declaration, setting the context of why we are supposed to begin the yoga ritual. We are the pramanas for the conscious declaration make. Anything repeated by your conscious becomes your unconscious and becomes your body. This is by the Supreme Pontiff of Hinduism, Bhagavan Nityananda Paramashiva. So this is the actual sankalpa that is chanted. This will be chanted along with the actual yoga session which you will be taking part in. Yoga is useless if without the context of I am Shiva, yoga equals useless. In Hinduism, there is a purpose behind every action and inaction. When you enter into the ritual of yoga, you are following a science, a proven method from various guru paramparas. A guru would take the science, initiate the disciples who would then become gurus themselves and continue to pass down this science. Included in this ancient Hindu science is the process of entering into the ritual of yoga. For thousands of years, the great masters that have come before as repeated again and again, yoga is a ritual to awaken the kundalini and it should be practiced in a very specific way. So unfortunate it is that today millions of aspiring yogis are led astray on their path because of the disconnect between their practice and what the enlightened masters warned of before. You can practice yoga as much as you want, but unless you enter into the ritual in a specific method laid out for their disciples, their yoga practice is useless for their spiritual evolution. This is the Shastra Pramana, which means looking upon all the limbs of yoga, angas, as sameness, establishing your body in oneness, dissolve them equally in the Brahman. Without this, to try to straighten the waist or limbs or to bring them in equilibrium is as useless as if they were the branches of a dead tree. These are more pramanas. Some additional preparations for the ritual of yoga. Before all the rituals of yoga begins there are a number of other preparations to align to which the Supreme Pontiff of Hinduism, Bhagavan Nityananda Paramashivam, has made us as a part of all Nityananda Yoga, Vinyasa Gramas. They are consuming one cup of turmeric water mixed with honey. This aids, ahimsa honey, non-violent honey. This aids in the detoxification process. Wear black clothes. This protects you from absorbing any negative energies within your body facility while your body is most susceptible. Remove your upper cloth or t-shirt for male bodies only. To absorb the energy of the divine guru. Wear a kantamala, rudraksha bead at the throat center and sundaravanams, that is hoop rudraksha earrings. The sacred rudraksha beads placed in these locations help raise the level of one's consciousness and manifest multiple powers of the third eye. Place an image of the Sri Chakra either above or below. With the presence of this mandala, the pure consciousness of Paramashiva and Parashakti will be infused into the bio memory. And a cup of water and spoon from the puja kit for the ritualistic cleansing, that is Archimaniyam. Facing towards the east, and a set of Karla kattes, that is wooden weights, dumbbells, or any preferred method to apply external weight to the body. So these were the preparations which are needed and necessary to begin to enter into the ritual of yoga, the Nityananda yoga, as will be guided in the next and coming segments. Thank you. So we end this session.
ವಿತ್ ಪೂರ್ಣ ಮಂತ್ರ ಓಂ ಪೂರ್ಣಮ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಿದ ಪೂರ್ಣಾತ್ ಪೂರ್ಣಮುದಚ್ಯತೆ ಪೂರ್ಣಪೂರ್ಣಮಾತಾಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮೇವಾವಶಿಷ್ಯತೆ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಹರಿ ಓಂ ತತ್ಸತ್ ಸರ್ವಂ ಭಗವಚ್ಚೀ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಪರಮ ಶಿವ ಪಾದುಕಾರ್ಪಣಮಸ್ತು ಓಂ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದಂ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ
ஆனந்தம் பரமசுகதம் கேவலம் ஞானமூர்த்தி துவந்வாத்தீத்தம் ககனசதம் தத்வமசியாதிலட்சியம் ஏக்கம் நித்தியம் விமலமச்சலம் சர்வீசாட்சிபூத்தம் பாவாதீத்தம் திருகுணரஹிதம் சத்குரும் தம் நமாமி Nityananda, welcome everybody to today's Kailasa Nityananda Yoga ritual of the Pratama Vinyasa Krama, the 108 asana sequence revealed by the Supreme Pontiff of Hinduism, Bhagavan Sri Nityananda Paramashivam. Today we will be experiencing the Pratama Vinyasa Krama. This is the first level sequence that was revealed by the Supreme Pontiff and it has become beloved amongst the Nityananda Sangha. by many and at first when it was released it was a major breakthrough today later on we'll be experiencing the dvitiya vinyasa krama another extremely amazing sequence and another breakthrough for the global yoga community as we've just experienced in our last session though we are entering into the ritual of yoga the ritual of the pratama vinyasa krama and as we enter into all rituals we begin first by chanting the sadguru vandanam which we had just done invoking the presence of the divine of the master his divine holiness bhagavan nitananda paramashivam following that we chant the shiva mula mantra 11 times internally the tongue does not press up against the roof of the mouth or the back of the teeth specifically mentioned in the pramanas you should be chanting om ham ham shivaya namaha as many times as your guru recommends and our guru recommends that we chant this 11 times so we'll begin by chanting the shiva mula mantra internally our tantra dark shri nitya gangadhara maharaj will chant this externally for everybody om ham hom shivaya namaha 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 Om ham hom shiva yanamaha 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 Great and with this we enter into the next part of the ritualistic uh, uh, cleansing the achamaniam so we'll begin first by sipping one spoon of water at the same time that our tantra dark chants om atmadattvam shodhayami swadha and a second spoon of water om vidyadattvam shodhayami swadha and a third spoon of water om shivadattvam shodhayami swadha and then you're going to wipe the upper and lower lip two times with the base of the thumb wash off your hand and with the index middle ring finger touching just above the upper lip and the lower lip and wash off the hand again with the index and thumb touching the right nostril left nostril with the ring finger and thumb touching the right eye left eye right ear left ear and then washing off the hand with the base of the thumb and the pinky touching you touch the navel right chest left chest all four fingers in the thumb touching the crown of the head right shoulder left shoulder and then the heart center and then with this we enter into the sankalpa which is the short sankalpa because this is our second sankalpa of the day the conscious resolution the declaration of why we're on the yoga mat today what is the purpose what do we want to manifest and as as all other sequences and nitinanda yoga rituals we're here to manifest the state space powers being super consciousness of parama shiva and so placing your right hand and left hand on top of one another on the right thigh get into a meditative space we'll listen and even though you don't understand what the mantra means just sit and absorb and melt into the mantra that you're hearing our tantra dark chant holding the space of parama shivatva om namo pata samasta durita kshaya dwara bhagavat shri nityananda parama shiva prityartham shri nityananda shri parama shiva shakti sameta shri nityananda shri parama shiva prityartham अद पूर्वोक्त गुण विशेषेण विशिष्टायाम अस्याम शुभति अद पूर्वोक्त संकल्पित प्रकार श्रीसर्वदेवदेवी स्वूप भगवत्श्री निनंद परमशिव पिपूर्ण कृपा कटाक्ष सिद्ध्यर्थ पूर्ण आरोग्ययुक्त दृढ़ गात्र यौगिकशरीर सिद्ध्यर्थ 
परमशिवशक्ति आविष्कारनार्थम नित्यानंद योगा अभ्यासन करिष्ये अपाउपस प्रिष्ये Great. And with this, we're going to wash off our hands one last time and then move our panchapatram out of harm's way. Sometimes people tend to fall on them, roll on them. You don't want to do that. Our demo acharya today, I'm sure, is not going to do that. But still, keep that panchapatram to the side. Okay. And so with this, we'll enter into the ritual of Kailasa's Nitana Yoga, Pratama Vinyasa Krama. And as we begin the sequence, you're going to hear the Tantra Dark chant the mantra. We'll perform the mudras, bandhas, pranayamas, the visualizations. Do the best you can to incorporate all the 12 components mentioned. Okay? So first sitting with our head, neck, and spine in a straight line. Hands are in bindu mudra. You're going to inhale samana kumka, visualizing heat raising up along the spine, resting in the navel. And then from there, tuck the chin down, suck the stomach in and up. Maha Mudra Bandha, Mula Bandha is also engaged. This Bandha is used a lot at the beginning of the sequence, okay? Well, we're here visualizing Parama Shiva in our inner space, and this is Sukhasana. Tat Sukhasana mityukta mashaktas tat samacharete asanam vijidam yena jidam tena jagatrayam Good, and from here, you move your legs right away into Padmasana. If that's too uncomfortable, you can stay in Sukhasana, but we're going to pick up the pace a little bit. You're going to bring the palms together, raise them up above the head. All three Bandhas engaged again. Visualizing yourself as Mount Kailash in Parvatasana. Adhavakshe Mahadeva Parvatasana Mangalam Yadkritva Asthira Rupi Syaat Shachakradi Vilopanam Good, and then you're going to release, unwind the legs, bring the soles of the feet together, hold the left hand by the right behind you, and lean forward and down, gaze towards the tip of the nose in Halipavasana. Purava Vidyahu Mejano Ubhai Bhagathali Sambudhthano Pishtapache Dovu Karalya Vodhathina Karasovam Gahavo and then we're going to rise up, release the hands, reach out in front of you, hold and, and extend the hands out. You're going to cup the palms, gaze towards the tip of the nose, visualizing snakes in your inner space, Nagi Pavasana. Purava Vithipari Agane Nito Hovi Kahuni Panase Ulagaji Hatha Agane Dharti Lagave Pasarito Vuhatagi Anjuli Kare. Good, and then we're going to rise up. And from here, hold on to the big toes. Extend them out straight as best you can, and then you're going to cross them into Padmasana. Lean forward and down onto the elbows. Keep holding on the toes, and Prana Mudra, this is called. Tuck the chin down. All three bandhas engaged. Visualize yourself as a bird in Kokilasana. Adhanyadasanam bhakche jena siddho bhava inaraha akasma advaju sancharam gogilakhyasa nena cha urdve hastadvayam kritva tadagrepada yosidihe vridhaang ushtadvayam natha shanai shanai prakara jete. Good. And then we're going to rise up and uncross the legs, place one foot on top of the opposite knee, holding on to the opposite elbows. Big circles, tuck the chin down, Mahamudrabhana, gaze to the nose, visualize Swamiji in your inner space in Natyasan. Goda Bhava Padigi Ashumahili Soye, the Chicharanago Varalota Parigulpha Samoye, Vamapadago Mahilo Bahuro Gulpha Jujane, Tapari Goda Dachiki Ashbar Lithane. Good. Then our and our chariot is going to lean onto his hands, lift the body up, tuck the toes, come up into a tall gajasana position. This is called scoop the body down and up, suck the stomach in and up, visualize yourself as an elephant gajasana. Nibjam bada gre bhumo grutvalambi bhuja mastaka gre nidhaya nitambam urdho munnamaya nabhilakshyam bhumo nasika maniya hastadala pariyantam najete itham vanapuna kuryate gajasaram bhavati Good, and then stay in this position, but you're going to alternate pressing the heels down and up. Visualize yourself as a bear. Stomach is sucked in and up. Ekai kampada ma kunchaya gajasaram kuryate rikshasaram bhavati And then from rikshasaram, you're going to step both feet forward, rise up onto the tips of the toes. Index middle ring finger comes to the heart center. Visualize Swamiji in your inner space and vaisyasana. Keshe nabada yugalam badhvadishteta dhomukha athava ishya vakshe yadkritva satya van bhavete Good, then lower down onto the tips of the toes. Feet spread out. This is our first karna of the day. You're going to have the knees slightly bent. You're going to raise up one knee and bring it across the entire body nice and gracefully. The hand is following on top and do the same thing on the other side. And then from here, we're going to interlace the fingers from the outside in. Sarva Shankri Mudra. And then you're going to lift up the shin, pull it up towards the chest. Visualize you're caressing a baby. Balalinganasana, all three bandhas engaged again. Ekam janu urudhi alinga sthatavyam balainganam bhavati Good, and then he's going to lower down, hold on to the top of the foot, pull behind, 
Padapitanasana, while he's here, pulling the foot towards the back. All three bandhas engaged again, visualizing Swamiji. Good, then he's going to release his left foot. Hold on, or left hand rather. Extend it out into Bindu Mudra. The inside of the foot is being held here. And he's going to kick back the leg at the same time. Reach forward, visualizing Nataraja dancing in your inner space. Good, and then he's going to do the same thing on the other side, same sequence. So interlace the fingers outside in, lift the leg up towards the shin, towards the chest rather. All three bandhas engaged, visualize Swamiji, Padapitanasana. Good, and then you're going to release and hold on to the top of the foot, pull it behind you. Knees are together, Padapitanasana. Good, and then he's going to release and keep the left hand holding the inside of the foot, extend the right hand out, visualize Nathraja dancing. Good, and then come back to a neutral position. Heels are touching, feet are separated. Bring the one foot behind, and he's going to extend the right hand out and pendulum swing and bring it back and forth, and then finish by touching the tip of the nose. That's our second karna, moving gracefully, dancing, expressing our gratitude for Padmashiva, and then moving into the skeleton dance. From here, he's going to dance chaotically, randomly, shaking the body as best he can, and visualize himself as a skeleton structure. The skeleton dance revealed by Padmashiva himself. Okay, and then from here, Coming into our next karna, heels are slightly touching, feet are bladed out wide, hands are up above the head, you're going to open up to one side and then cross towards the center again and then again release to the other side and come back to center and then we gracefully move into Tadasana, our next posture, the feet are facing the same direction while you're here, palms are up, facing one another, elbows straight, tuck the chin down, Maha Mudra Bandha, visualize yourself as a palm tree in Tadasana. Good, and then release and lower the body down. Hands are reaching towards the ground. All three bandhas engaged again. While you're here, visualizing Swamiji Uttanasana. Good, then stepping back to a tall plank position. Tuck the chin down and Jalandala Bandha. Rotate it side to side. Tadakshvasana. Then lower the body down onto the ground. Untuck the toes. Lift the chest up using the strength of your lower back. Open up the mouth nice and wide. Visualize yourself as a cobra. Inhale through the back of the throat. Bhujangani mudra, bhujangasana. Good. Lower down, tuck the toes again, lift the body up. You're going to rotate, bring the knee in and out, alternating each leg. Shashasana, visualizing Swamiji here. Gajasana samsthito janudvayama kuncha varam varam kartavyam shashasanam bhavati. Then place one foot in between the two hands. You're going to jump and switch the feet back and forth again and again. In Ratasan, visualize yourself as a chariot. Gajasana samsito ekai kampadam puro markena brahma jitva kartavyam ratasanam bhavati. Good. Then place one foot in between the two hands. Rise up. Back heel is down on the ground still. Foot is bent, knee is bent at about 90 degrees. Arms straight up, suck the stomach in and up. Gaze to the third eye. Visualize Lord Virabhadra and Virabhadrasana. Vasishta matha kondinyam urdha kukkuta mevacha ashtavakramathottanam majuram setu bandhanam uttana padankraon chancha marichim virabhadrakam natarajam trigonam cha sukta angashta prasarane. Good, and then just step forward and switch feet. Same thing. Make sure you get a nice depth in that front leg. Suck the stomach in and up. Gaze up to the third eye, visualizing Lord Virabhadra. Vasishta matha kondinyam urdha kukkuta mevacha ashtavakramathottanam majuram setu bandhanam Good, and then 
Good, and then stepping forward, rising up onto one foot. You're going to bring the foot to the inner thigh. Palms come together, raise them up above the head. Suck the stomach in and up again. Visualize yourself as a tree in Vrikshasana. Vamoru mura deshe cha jamyam badam nidhajato tishthetu vrikshavat bhuma vrikshasana midam viduhu. Good, then release the foot, bring it to the inner thigh. Keep it there as best you can. If you need to use your hand, that's fine. Visualize yourself as Lord Garuda as your hands come into Namaskara Mudra and Garudasana. Garuda Asana Ma Vakshe Jena Dhyanam Stiram Bhavet Sarva Dosha Dvinir Mukta Bhavati Ham Habali Eka Padam Uro Dattva Guk Eka Padena Dandavate Janga Padasanti Deshe Janu Vyagram Vyavastitam Good, and then we're going to repeat the same thing on the other side. So foot comes to the inner thigh. Find your dristi point, your point of focus to help keep balance. Palms come together. Raise them up above the head. And if you have any injury, any issues with keeping balance, you can always keep the inner foot down towards the ground. Visualize yourself as a tree either way in Vrikshasana. Vamo rumula desheta yam yam padam nidhajato tishtetu vrikshavat bhumo vrikshasana vidam viduhu Good, then we're going to repeat the same thing other side. Foot comes to the inner thigh, hold it there as best you can. Hands come together, namaskara mudra in front of the heart center. Garuda asana ma bhakshe jena dhyanam siram bhavet sarva doshadvi nirmukta bhavati ham habali eka padam uro batva eka padena dandavate janga padasanti deshe janu vyagram vyavastitam. Good, and then lower down. From the top of your mat, you're going to step one foot back. Keep the front leg pointing forward. Reach forward with the hands. Tilt down. Open up the chest. Gaze up towards the ceiling. Visualize yourself as a triangle in Trikonasana. Then we're going to rise up and repeat the same thing on the other side. Trikonasana. Good. And then we're going to step the foot forward, and lower ourselves down into this is Aryamandi position. Okay, so you're raising up one heel, heels are together, dropping one heel down, and switching as you stomp the heel down, you lift up the opposite foot. And then you come down onto the tips of the toes, twisting the feet together, moving into Angushtasana. Palms together, Namaskara Mudra. Brahmri Kumbhaka moving forward, you're buzzing like a bee. Palms together, Namaskara Mudra. Good, and then from here you're going to rise up, or, or extend the foot forward rather. Heel comes down, palms facing forward, Vada Mudra, tall spine, Mulaban engaged. And then release the right hand, reach for the toes as best you can. The left hand can stay on the ground to help keep balance, or if you can keep your balance, keep it at the left heel. Lean forward, Mulaban engaged. And then you're going to rise up and stand the right, bring the right leg in, extend the left leg out, palms facing forwards, tall spine, mulaban engaged. Left hand comes forward, holding on to the big toe and prana mudra again. Right hand to the outside or to the heel to keep balance, vidunanasana. And then he's going to low, or rise back up, bring his feet back together onto the tips of the toes. Keep a little gap in between your feet so you can gaze through the hole of the palms which are resting up facing upwards on the ground, uh, from, from the tops of the thighs. Brahma Drunkushasana. Good, and then from here, we're going to drop our knees down. Keep the toes tucked as they are. Hands come on tops of the knees. Suck the stomach in and up as best you can, and gaze towards the tip of the nose, visualizing sage Kapila, Kapila Muni, rather. And then switch the gaze up towards the third eye. Same position, but release Uddiyana Bandha. Badra Gorakshasana. Good. And then from here, you're going to rise up onto the tips of the toes as best you can. Feet are bladed out wide, or the knees. Palms together. Index and thumbs are touching respective index and thumbs. Gaze through the hands. Suryasana. And then you're going to lower down. Coming down onto the knees. You're going to untuck the toes. You're going to bring the hands, place them on top of the knees. Place the tongue up against the roof of the mouth in Manduki Mudra. Manduki Mudra, you're visualizing yourself catching the nectar of immortality dripping down from the Sahasrata Chakra. And then bring the hands up, holding the head by the arms. Suck the stomach in and up. Gaze to the third eye. Visualize yourself as a frog. Uttana Mandukasana. And then rise up. You're going to bring the hands on tops of the knees and rise up and cross your feet behind you. Then you're going to inhale. 
Stick the tongue out and exhale as you gaze to the tip of your nose, visualizing yourself as a lion in Simhasana. Good. And then rise up, uncross the feet, and sit back down. And then you're going to cross the hands behind the back and hold on to the big toes, prana mudra again. Chin is tucked down. Visualizing Swamiji. Good. And then come back around. You're going to place the hands down on the ground. Rise up onto the tips of the toes. And then wrap the arms in and around the legs, trying to clasp the hands behind the back if you can. If you can't, not a big deal. But gaze to the tip of the nose either way. Kaka Bhusandhi Asana. And then from here, release the hands. Bring them flat onto the ground. Lift the hips up high. Press the knees up against the backs of the arm. Kaneri Pavasana. Try and balance here just on the hands alone. And then you lower the crown of the head down onto the ground ever so carefully and slowly. And then if you can, you're lifting the legs up off the ground towards the ceiling. Still buzzing like a bee here in Brahmare Kumbhaka. And then slowly lowering down from here. Gently bringing the head up. And then you're going to stay on the tips of the toes. Twist the legs to one side so you can find some leverage and place the arms outside of the thighs. And you're going to lean forward and down onto the two palms. And then try and extend the legs out. Gaze up to the third eye. Visualize yourself as a peacock in Parshva Mayurasan. And then come down and switch to the other side. Same thing. Find some leverage on the thighs. Try and get that other hip towards that other elbow. Extend the legs out. Gaze up to the third eye. Parshva Mayurasan. Great. And then come down. From here, you're moving to a tall plank position, bringing one foot outside and in between the two hands. Press the back toes into the ground, opening up that left hip flexor or, or extended legs hip flexor. Gaze up to the third eye, Bhaira Ganata Asana, and then switch, trying to the other side. Visualizing Kala Bhairava here. Again, pressing those toes down, open up the chest, and then stepping back. Bring the forearms down onto the ground, moving into Unmukha Pita. Going to gaze up towards the third eye. Hips can come down a tiny bit more. Visualizing Swamiji. Then you rise up onto both hands. Rotate over onto one. Make sure that the hand is stacked right beneath the shoulder as best you can. So the shoulder and the hand are on top of one another. Open up the opposite hand towards the ceiling. Visualize Sage Vashtista. Vashtistasana. Then rotate over to the other side right away. And again, make sure that wrist is stacked right beneath the shoulder. Open up. Keep that hip up nice and high. Visualizing Sage Vashtista. And then slowly coming back down to a neutral position. Bring the legs forward. You can slowly cross, uncross them, extend the feet out while you're here. Hands are coming underneath the sitting bones. Elbows close to the body. Feet slightly separated. Tuck the chin down. Gaze towards the nasal. Visualizing Hanuman in your inner space and Anjaniyasana. And then release the hands. Reach forward for the big toes. Prana mudra, Pachimatanasana. Engage all three bandhas, visualizing Swamiji as you're here. Coming down as far as you can. Good. And then rising up. Interlacing the fingers behind the head and lean forward and down using the strength of your core, pulling the body down. Visualizing Kali in Ugrasana. Then rise up. Release the hands. You're going to bring one foot to the inner thigh. Reach the other hand inside and around. Clasp the hands as best you can. Bring the forehead down. Visualize Sage Marichi in Marichi Asana. Good. And then rise up. Release the leg. Let it fall down to the side. And the heel comes to the perineum. Inhale. Reach for the toes. Hold on to the Mahamudra Bandha. All three bandhas engaged. Mahamudrasana. Visualize Swamiji here. Good, then rise up. We're going to repeat the same thing on the other side. So now, left heel comes in for him. He's going to reach around, hold on to the hands behind the back. Forehead comes down. And then rise up, release the hands, let the knee flare out to the side. Reach for the toes, all three bandhas engaged. And then rise up. Pull that foot back in. 
Interlace the fingers around the toes. Pull the knees down using the strength of your groin as best you can, gazing towards the tip of the nose. Visualizing Swamiji. Then but from Badrasana, extend the toes out. Toes are together, heels separated. So it's almost like a little V with your feet. Tuck the chin down towards the chest. Visualize Swamiji in Gvali Pavasana. Okay, and then from here, you're going to pull the feet back in towards the groin. Interlacing the fingers, lean forward and down onto the elbows as best you can. Forehead comes down, gaze to the tip of the nose. Yoni Asana, visualizing the Yoni Mandala here. Good, then the next posture, very similar. Rise up, you can release the hands to the side so they come over top of the legs though. Midaki Pavasana, gazing towards the tip of the nose. Then you're going to rise up. This time, slightly extend the feet so you can bring the hands underneath the gaps of the knees in the mat. Palms are extended out towards the side, facing upwards. Gaze to the tip of the nose there. Siddha Samadhi Asana, visualizing Padma Shiva in Samadhi. And then rise up. Bring the hands back through. Pull the feet in towards the groin and open them up like you're opening up a book. Okay. Tuck the chin down. Gaze towards the tip of the nose. Chinaki Pavasana. And then from here, bring the hands to the knees. Slightly press them down. Be very careful as you do so. Suck the stomach in and up and gaze up towards the third eye in Karpatotrukhasana. Good. And then from here, you're going to bring the toes down and try and lift the heels up. Knees stay down onto the ground if you can. Hands come on top of the knees. Bindu mudra. Do the best you can. Again, suck that stomach in and up and gaze up to the third eye. Bhairavasana. And then release. You're going to keep the right heel close to the premium this time and lift the left foot up. Pull it towards the chest. This is a hip opener, not a knee torquer. So make sure you're opening up the hip and not torquing on the knee. Gaze up to the third eye, Samanasana. Good. And then he's going to lift that leg over top of the shoulder. Extend the right foot up nice and straight. Gaze up to the third eye. Visualize Swamiji, Apanasana. And then he's going to lower down. Do the same two sequence, the same two asanas on the other side. So left heel is to the prim, right foot up to the chest, holding it with both hands. Gaze up to the third eye, visualizing Swamiji. Good. And then try and lift that leg over top of the shoulder as best you can. Extend the opposite leg out straight. Point those toes. Gaze to the third eye, apanasana. And then lower down. From here, he's going to keep the left knee bent and stack the right knee over top. Heels are at the opposite hips. Moving forward on this posture, hands are on top of the knees, but moving forward, Shitkari Kumaka. Pressing the tongue up against the roof of the mouth and inhaling with that hissing sound. Visualizing yourself as a cow here in Gomukhasana. Then he's going to release his hands, hold on to the big toes. Suck the stomach in and up. Visualization is the Rishika Anasya in Anasyasana 1. And then he's going to lean forward and down, holding on to that visualization, gaze towards the tip of the nose, Anasyasana 2. And then rising up from here. Then he's going to uncross that right foot, place it flat on the ground. Left heel stays at the premium. Hands are on respective knees. Spine is tall. Chest is out. Gazing up to the th tip of the nose, I should say. Visualizing Lord Garuda and Garudasana too. Good, and then rising up and placing the sitting bones down on that left heel. And then you're going to twist outside of that raised knee, interlace the fingers behind, gaze back and up towards the third eye here, visualizing sage Narada and Naradasana. And then unwind, come back to a neutral spine position again, keep that left knee bent, and you're going to stack and alternate the same sequence on the other side this time. Or sorry, first, yeah, place the le left foot onto the right thigh, hold on to the right toe with your right hand. And the left hand is wrapped around that knee, holding on to the shin. Matsya Pitakasana. Okay. Then from here, you can unwind. Slide that, slide that foot over. Sorry. Slide that left foot over. You need to come to this side, I think. So you're sliding that left foot over. Hands are stacked on top still. Inhaling. Sit the Kumbhaka. Visualizing yourself as the face of a cow. Hands come to the big toes, holding in prana mudra again. Suck that stomach in and up as best you can. Gaze towards the tip of the nose. Visualization, Rishika Anasya. And then hold that visualization, but lean forward and down, 
clasp the hands behind the back, gaze towards the tip of the nose, visualize Rishka Anasya, Anasyasana too. Then rise up. Uncross the legs. Place the left foot flat onto the ground. Right foot comes to the perineum. Gaze towards the tip of the nose. Hands are on respective knees. Visualize yourself as Lord Garuda and Garudasana too. Then rise up. Place the sitting bones underneath that right heel this time. Twisting around towards the left knee. Gaze up to the third eye, visualizing sage Narada, Naradasana. And then unwind, twisting back around. You're going to come back down onto the mat. Right foot comes on top, of, on top of the left thigh, holding on to the right shin with the right hand. Left hand holds on to the big toe. Gaze to the tip of the nose, Matsya Pitakasana, and then release. From here, you're going to keep that right foot where it is. No, just, oh, oh yeah, yeah, sorry. He's advanced, so he can bring his left foot over top of that knee, okay? If he's able to, he's going to twist towards the left. Bring the right hand up to the right ear, and the left hand stays extended, and you're gazing back and up towards the third eye, visualizing the sage Gorknat in Matsyendrasana 1, and then releasing the right hand down, and the left hand comes up to the ear, holding the visualization of a camel in Kubasana. And then he's going to lower the hand down and keep that right hand extended. He's able to hold on to the toe. If you can't, not a big deal. Either way, gaze up to the third eye, visualizing sage Goraknath and Matsyendrasana too. Good. And then you can unwind and come back to a neutral position. Extend the right leg out. This time, left foot can come up on top of the right thigh. If you can't keep the foot on top of the thigh, just keep it at the perineum. Either way, bring that right foot over top and twist outside of that raised right knee. And bring the left elbow outside of that knee. Left hand stays at the ear. Right hand stays extended. Either way, gaze up to the third eye, Matsyendrasa. And then extend the left hand down. Right hand comes up to the ear. And Kubasana, visualize yourself as a camel. And then extend the right hand down. Left hand stays extended, Matsyendrasana too. Visualizing sage Goraknat. And then you're going to unwind again. This time keep the right foot and the left foot on top of the opposite thighs. We've got a nice open hips now. We can move into Padmasana hopefully. Hands are going to rest on tops of the thighs. You can keep them in pranam or Bindu Mudra or just on top. Either way, inhale by pressing the tongue up against the back of the teeth. Shitali Kumbhaka. And then engage all three bandhas. Tuck the chin down. Suck that stomach in and up. Make sure Mulu Bandha is engaged still. Visualizing Padma Shiva in your inner space. Padmasana 1. And then release. You're going to cross the hands, holding on to the opposite toes. Just Mulu Bandha engaged. Gaze towards the tip of the nose. Visualizing Parvati in your inner space. Padmasana 2. And then unwind. Stay in Padmasana. Reach the hands down in between the thighs and the calves. Place the flower on the ground. Try and lift the body up as best you can. Visualize yourself as a rooster in Kukutasana. And then lower down. You can bring the hands back through. Place the hands in front of the thighs. Fingertips are facing you. We're moving into an arm balance here. Elbows come together towards the navel. Lifting up the legs as best you can off the ground. Badakeki asana. Very difficult, but try your best, okay? And if you're able to, right from here, you're going to extend the legs out right away. Yes, Mayurasan. Visualize yourself as a peacock. And you can hold here as long as you want, right? All day you could be there. <laughs> Good. Then lower your body down. Some might say collapse down onto your stomach. Interlace the fingers behind the head. Feet are bladed out wide. You're visualizing yourself as a crocodile here in Makarasana. Okay. And then from here, you're going to rise up. Place the hands to the sides of the chest. Lift the legs up. Thighs try and come up off the ground as best you can. Visualize yourself as a locust in Shalabhasana. Good. Then lower the legs back down. You're going to bend the knees, bring the feet up towards the butt, pull onto the feet. If you can get them outside of the thigh, that's what you're trying to go for. Either way, visualize yourself as a camel in Ustrasana. And then you can release. Readjust the grip so you can lift the legs back. He's kicking his legs, simultaneously pulling with his arms, gazing up to the third eye, visualizing himself as a bow being pulled in Dhanurasana. And then lowering down. 
And we're going to lift our bodies up, resting on the knees. Untuck the toes. Hands rest on top of the knees. And while you're there, you're gazing up towards the third eye, visualizing Swamiji, Bhagasana, nice casual inhalation, Sahaja Kumbhaka, catching your breath here. Moving into our next inversion. Uh, Gohiyasana, you're interlacing the fingers first, elbows are shoulder width apart. We went over this earlier in the day, how to do Sirshasana. You know, walk the feet as close as you can towards the body. Hips are stacked on top of the shoulder. Knees stay close to the chest here while you're here. Gohiyasana, okay? Then from Gohiyasana, stacking the knees on top of the hips and the ankles on top of the knees. So you're trying to stack and align everything on top of one another, okay? So shoulders, hips, knees, ankles. Visualizing Swamiji here in Sirshasana. And then slowly controlled come down. And then you can cross your legs and sit back down onto your body. You're going to keep your feet extended out in front of you. Bust your kakumbaka moving forward. Short burst exhalations out of the nose. Okay? He's holding behind his calves. He's gazing up to the third eye. Fodiyasana, bust your kakumbaka. Not easy, but do the best you can here, okay? Trying to get our legs all the way up towards the forehead, and then you can release and bring the hands to opposite shoulders behind you. Try not to collapse the chest forward. Keep it up as best you can. Legs are extended, knees are straight. Not easy, but do the best you can. Visualize yourself as a mace in Padigasana. And then put the elbows down. Don't keep those legs onto the ground, okay? Keep them up. Point the toes. It should be challenging for the core here. Now, Kasana, visualize yourself as a boat traveling through that ocean of samsara, okay? And then rise up. Scoop the hands underneath the heels. You're going to pull the feet in towards the chest as best you can. You're going to gaze towards the tip of the nose, visualizing Lord Rudra in Rudrasana. Great job. And then lower the feet down. He's going to fall down onto his back. Heels stay flat onto the ground. Drive the hips up by pressing the heels into the ground. Okay, so he's pushing up as high as you can. If you want to, you can wiggle your shoulder blades closer together. Okay, either way, the chin naturally tucks into Jalandra Bandha, and then Murcha Kumbhaka is you're inhaling and you slowly exhale as Jalandra Bandha is engaged. Okay, and then from here you can lower the body down from Unmukha Pita to extend the feet out, palms are resting upwards. While you're here, take a deep inhalation through the nose, one final deep exhalation out of the mouth. And you're unclutching your body completely here. Before we do, we're engaging Shakti, Chal, and Mudra. You're awakening the Kundalini Shakti, pulling it up from the base of the spine all the way up towards the Sahasrata Chakra. Whether you can do that physically, metaphysically, visually, awakening that Kundalini Shakti. And then take one final deep inhalation with us. And one final exhalation. And a lot of people tend to twitch. They tend to scratch themselves here. They tend to move a little bit. Do the best you can to completely unclutch the body. Very rarely do we choose to consciously relax each and every part of the body. So scan the body. Really unclutch. And melt into that space of Advaita, oneness. Visualizing Swamiji, connecting with him. And enjoying this space that you've created while performing this Patama Vinyasa Krama sequence. And then every time you come back into the body, you want to do so very carefully, okay? So you don't want to just shoot your body up right away. First, you want to wiggle the fingertips and toes, wrists and ankles, elbows and knees. And you can bring the knees up towards the chest here. If you haven't opened up your eyes right now, is normally a good time to do so. Hugging the knees, wrapping the arms around them, squeezing them tight, and then let the feet come down flat onto the ground. Roll onto the left side, towards the heart side, and then gently, when you feel comfortable and ready, pressing and lifting the body up into a comfortable seated position. Okay? And this brings us to the end of the ritual of the Patama Vinyasa Krama, revealed by the Supreme Pontiff of Hinduism, Bhagavan Nityananda Paramashivam. And so with this, we'll close with the Purna Mantra. Hands come together, and Namaskara Mudra in front of the heart center. Take a deep inhalation and we'll invoke and be in this space of gratitude. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyade
Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishade Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tatsa Sadavam Bhagavat Sri Nityananda Paramashiva Padukar Paramastu Om Nityanandam And with this we always end with our namaskaram to our Guru. You can do a, a full namaskaram. The whole body is completely flat on the ground. Just really getting into that space of gratitude towards the Master. And with this, we'll close this Kailasas Nitananda Yoga Pratama Vinyasa Krama session. Hopefully you enjoyed. And we look forward to experiencing the Dvitya Vinyasa Krama segment coming up later on today, which includes the Pratama Vinyasa Krama. So how long was that? About an hour? Were we here about an hour or so? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to do this in 20 minutes during the next session or during the Dvitya Vinyasa Krama, okay? So with this, Nityananda, and we'll see you then. Rather, with every movement or placement of the body, there are a total of 12 dimensions in action. During the process of Nityananda Yoga, the yogi intensely withdraws from the body, allowing them to manifest powers. By the end of the entire sequence, the yogi will be able to immediately manifest at least 21 powers without a single doubt. The power of this whole process is doing it in the breathing space of the Master, Paramashiva himself, His Divine Holiness, Paramahamsa Nityananda. If the atmosphere is inhaled through the nose, it is prana. If inhaled through every pore of the skin, it is samana. The whole breathing space of Paramashiva is samana. Thus, Nityananda Yoga can only be practiced in the consecrated place of the Master to imbibe the samana to take you deeper into the oneness experience. During Nityananda Yoga, when the body goes through anti-sex with Paramashiva, power manifestation becomes permanent and complete. Nityananda Yoga gives the direct experience of the state of Samadhi, oneness with the ultimate, Paramashivoham. My ability to will, understand, understand, just like you have various abilities, ability to see, ability to use your hands, ability to use your legs, ability to listen, ability to think, you have something called ability to will. The ability to will integrates all your abilities. The ability to will is the spiritual umbilical card connection with cosmos. Understand other than God no one can will. When we are told only God's will be done means actually no one else can have will. Only God can have will. If you are having the power to will, you are connected to God, you are part of God, you are Him. Understand? Power to will is Umbilical cord connection with God. Our umbilical cord connection with God is our power to will. If you will, no one can deny it. Even God cannot deny it because your will is bestowed on you by God. The first verse starts with May my limbs vital life energy Apyayantu mamangani vakprana chakshu Shrotramato balamindriyani chasarvani 
It does not say, Oh God, let my limbs, speech, life, vital energy become strong. No. No. Apyayant mamangani. I am declaring. May my limbs, speech, life, vital energy, eyes, ears and all the senses be fully matured and enriched with the strength and energy because my will is God's will. Mama Sangalpa, Shiva Sangalpa Mastu. My will is the umbilical cord connection with the cosmos. If I will something, it has to shake the cosmos. Cosmos has to make it into reality because I am it. I am still connected to it. If I don't have the power to will, I am disconnected from it. If I, as long as I have the power to will, I am authority. I am authorized to will. I tell you guys, just use this one truth. When you are having it, better use it. If you don't use it, Sadashiva may think, oh, I think he doesn't need it and it can be taken away any day. Before it is taken away, use it. Come to Kashi when you have two legs to walk. Don't wait for eight legs to carry you. <laughs> Come to Kashi when you have two legs to walk. Don't wait eight legs to carry you. Use your will. When you are having it, ability to will is the peak of human consciousness you can experience. Ability to will is the peak of human consciousness you can experience. For all the disciples and smash team, this is the one-liner for you guys today. Ability to will is the peak of consciousness. Use it to manifest universe in you. Nityanandam paramasukadam kevalam yanamurtim dandvatitam gagana sadisham tattvamasya dilaksham ekam nityam vimalamachalam sarvadi sakshi bhutam bhavatitam trigunarahitam sadgurum tam namami Nityanandam, welcome to Kalasa's Nityananda Yoga segment on Asana of the Year as revealed by the Supreme Pontiff of Hinduism, Bhagwan Shri Nityananda Paramashram. So, every year on International Yoga Day, Kalasa's Nityananda Yoga presents to the world one traditional yoga asana that can be used in helping solve our current global crisis or issue. This event was established by the Supreme Ponte of Hinduism to enrich the world with the gifts that authentic yoga can provide 
for those experiencing suffering using techniques originally revealed by Bhagwan Paramashivam himself. Kailasa celebrates International Yoga Day. Kailasa's Nityananda Yoga Asana of the year is a posture that yogis can progress towards achieving throughout the year, share their experiences and continuously bring awareness to the global crisis, global cause. Kailasa supports and stands for the for while they share their journey on social media. Kailasa celebrates International Yoga Day. Simultaneously, by presenting these unique asanas along with their original scriptural references, Kailasa stands as the pillar for all Hindus around the world to look to with pride, knowing the supreme point of Hinduism and Kailasa are taking responsibility to be the time capsule for all sacred Hindu scriptures, which are the gift for all humanity. Kailasa takes a step to tackle world hunger on International Yoga Day. Kailasa raises a global challenge. Kailasa on the occasion of International Yoga Day raises to the global challenge of world hunger in its own way. The number of severely food insecure people had doubled in just two years from 135 million pre-pandemic to 276 million today, with more than half a million experiencing famine conditions, an increase of more than 500% since 2016. The United Nations, in a call to action to find the current surge in global food insecurity, reports hunger levels around the world are at a new high. Kailasa is committed to creating a world that is free from hunger. For the last 26 years, the federal government of Kailasa is working to overcome emerging food shortage challenges and free planet Earth from hunger and food insecurity, paving way for the sustainable development goal, zero hunger by 2030. Asana designed to dispel hunger. On this International Day of Yoga, Kailasa's Nityananda Yoga is revealing to the world an asana, which specifically supports and empowers individuals who are feeling the pain of hunger. Kailasa understands this asana is not the direct solution to the global hunger crisis. However, this is a unique and powerful tool that has been used by enlightened yogis from time immemorial. If one performs this asana just a few minutes each day, they will notice a drastic reduction in hunger pains and will simultaneously not feel loss of energy and or strength. This year's asana of the year comes from the Gheranda Samhita, a classic in which Paramashiva teaches Ghatastha Yoga, which reveals sacred truths on the body, prana, and mind through various yogic practices and finally leads the yogi to Atmanjana, knowledge of the self. This year, Asana of the Year, comes from the second chapter, which focuses on helping an individual go beyond the various sufferings of the human body and mind. Let us now enter into the sequence that will lead us to the 2022 Asana of the Year. Sukhasana, Akashic revelation that wherein comfort and steadiness are attained somehow or other is known as Sukhasana. Procedure is sit cross-legged, keep the hands on the knees as shown in the pictures. The Shastra Pramana is from Trishiki Brahmopanishad, 52nd verse. Next. Next, Parvatasana. 
this asana is from rudrayamala tantra 23rd chapter 52nd verse oh mahadeva now i shall talk about auspicious parvatana parvatasana practicing which mental stability is gained and the penetration of the six chakras is called parvatasana alipavasana the shastra pramana is from yoga pradipika of jaya tarama 263rd verse bring both soles together bring both hands towards back side and hold the left hand by the right hand and place the hand on the ground place the forehead on the ground by bending forward near the ankles gaze at the nose nagi pavasana this is from yoga asana mala sachitra 48th verse inhale arms up and extend feet a little further exhale forward four arms on the ground and form hollow of hands anjali mudra gaze at the tip of the nose kokila asana the pramana is from rudra yamala tantra 23rd chapter 101 and 102 verses do the padmasana properly by contracting and resting over the knee joints inhale arms overhead extend legs straight hold the big toes in prana mudra bend knees bring feet to the opposite thigh rest the elbows on the ground ustrasana this is from gheranda samhita second chapter 48th verse lie on the ground face downwards turn up the legs and place them towards the back catch the legs with the hands contract forcibly the mouth and the abdomen this is called the camel posture samyama the great sage patanjali also known as the father or organizer of yoga revealed in his infamous text patanjali yoga sutras vibhuti pada third chapter 25th verse by samyama visualizing concentrating contemplating on the strength of elephants and other such animals that strength is obtained why this is important for today's asana of the year and the world hunger initiative is because ustarasana translates into the camel posture when one lays down on their stomach and performs this unique yogic posture while doing samyama on the camel they will gain the strength and qualities of a camel camels are known for their ability to go weeks without water but during the winter months they can actually go up to ar- around 6 months without water the hump of a camel allows them to store fats integral for when they are experiencing a famine even in prolonged periods without food or water camels can maintain a running speed of up to 65 kilometers per hour and a walking speed of 40 kilometers per hour compared to human speed of just 3 meters per hour 30 kilometers per hour parighasana this is from kalpa kurantaka hatha bhyasa paditi lying supine extended lying supine extend both the feet united together and touching the ground with buttocks catch firmly the shoulders with the two hands and remain with kumbhaka performed this is called parighasana nakasana lying supine hold the ground with the elbows keep the two hands on the hips then keep the up the head and the thigh the shank and the feet like a stick this is called nakasana rudrasana this is from yoga asana mala sachitra 25th verse sit on the ground catch hold of the respective feet by inserting hands below the pair of heels pull the heels towards the chest 
i remain fixed at the tip of the nose sit with the feet together at heart level hands in a finger lock spine straight engage udiyana bandha gaze at the tip of the nose unmukha pitha asana this apta this shastra pramana is from natha muni's yoga rahasya third chapter 18th verse and 6th chapter 17th verse lying supine holding the ground by hands and holding the ground by the feet also elevate the navel region upwards this is called pari ankasana keeping the position of pari ankasana unite the hands with the feet this is called vetrasana lie on the back bend the knees feet firm on ground hold the ankles and lift the hips up head neck and spine aligned shivasana this uh, shastra pramana is from hatha pradipika second chapter 18th verse one lies supine on the ground motionless like a dead body this is shavasana which removes physical fatigue and gives rest to the mind now we'll be going through a demo on these asanas we'll be back very shortly please stay tuned
The first component of Nithyananda Yoga is asanas. Asana happens when the body is bending, stretching, and aligning itself to the cosmic geometry. The context of asana is not restricting itself to some physical posture. It's not a place that the body is in, but a space. Nidhi Dhyasana, for instance, is when we are radiating excitement, joy, and bliss for life regardless of the physical positioning of the limbs. His Divine Holiness Paramahamsa Nityananda describes asana as steady and comfortable body postures to tune oneself with the cosmos. The most important understanding of asanas is it is not a practice at all. It is a happening, a manifestation, which happens through asanas. We do not practice sitting with God, we embody God, Paramashiva. It is from this space of Paramashivoham, when we are intent on the vow of living like God, that we are performing an authentic asana. Through intensely flowing through Nityananda Yoga, the body simply falls in tune with the cosmos. Nityananda Shivastamba Yoga and Nityananda Kundalini Raju Yoga is a tremendous possibility for the being to connect to the divine through the living avatar of Paramashiva, his divine holiness, Paramahamsa Nityananda. When the yogi approaches the pole and the rope, they do so with great reverence and intention of physically experiencing oneness with Paramashiva. Seeing the pole as a deity energized through prana pratishta, the disciple can experience the highest Let us now enter into the sequence that will lead us to the asana of the year. First, we will have Sukhasana. Nityandam. Now, let us move to the sequence that will lead us to the asana of the year 2022. First, we'll start with Sukhasana. Tat Sukhasana mityuktam ashaktas tat samacharete asanam vijitam jena jitam tena jagatrayam. That wherein comfort and steadiness are attained somehow or other is known as Sukhasana. Sit cross-legged, keep hands on the knees. Next, Parvatasana. Athavakshe Mahadeva Parvatasana Mangalam Yatkritva Asthira Rupi Syad Shachakradi Vilopanam O Mahadeva, now I shall talk about auspicious Parvatasana, practicing which mental stability is gained and the penetration of the six chakras is called Parvatasana. Next, Halipavasana. Pura Bhavidija who mejano Ubhai Pagatali Samputano Pishtipate do Vu Karalya Vo the Chinakaraso Vam Gahavo Pishti Hatel Yanki He Joji Amshusa Hitabhumi Dare Soji Punila Lati Bhuparitane Edya Lagata Mahi Ane Bring both souls together, bring both hands towards backside and hold the left hand by the right hand and place the hands on the ground. Place forehead on the ground by bending forward near the ankles. Gaze at the nose. Nagi Pavasana Purafa Vidhi Pariyaga Ne Ne Chau Hau Vi Kahuni Bhana Siyo Laga Ji Haath Aga Ne Dharati Laga Ve Pasari Do Vo Haath Ki Anjoli Kare Sit on the ground with the legs extended in front, bring both soles together, keeping knees sideways on the ground. Bend the head forward, place elbows on the legs, and extend hands on the ground. Form a hollow of hands, direct the gaze at the tip of the nose. Inhale arms up and extend feet a little further. Exhale forward, forearms on the ground and form hollow of the hands, gaze at the tip of the nose.
do the Padmasana properly by contracting and resting over the knee joints. Inhale arms overhead and extend legs straight. Hold the big toes in prana mudra. Index middle fingers and thumb. Bend knees, bring feet to opposite thigh. Padmasana. Rest the elbows on the ground. Next, Uttarasana. Adhyasa shede padayukma vyastham prushthe nidhaya pidhritam karabhyam akuncha yet samya gudarasya gadham ushtram chabitam yogi no vadanti. Lie on the ground, face downwards, turn up the legs and place them towards the back. Catch the legs with the hands, contract forcibly the mouth and the abdomen. This is called camel posture. This is the yoga asana of the year 2022. Next, we'll move on to parigasana. Uttanam shainam krutva padu militva prasarya nitam bambhu mos prashtva hasta bhyam kandharam badva kumbhakam krutva dishthet parihasanam bhavati. Lying supine, extend both the feet united together and touching the ground with buttocks. Catch firmly the shoulder with two hands. Remain with kumbhaka performed. This is called parigasana. Next, Nokasana. Uttana Shainam Kurpara Bhyam Bhumi Vashta Bhyahasto Nitam Bham Nidhaya Shira Uru Dangha Padan Dandavadha Rajete Nokasanam Bhavati. Lying supine, hold the ground with the elbows and keep the two hands on the hips. Then keep the head, the thigh, the shank and the feet like a stick. This is called Nokasana. Next. Rudrasana Pagatali Samputa Karihata Syopaka Uchayi Pagaka Angutha Do Leup Barlikani Talave Sit on the ground, catch hold of respective feet by inserting hands below the pair of heels. Pull the heels towards the chest, eyes remain fixed at the tip of the nose. Sit with the feet together at heart level. Hands in a finger lock, spine straight, engage Udhyana Bandha, gaze at the tip of the nose. Rest. Next, Unmukha Pitha Asana. Uttana Shenam Hastatalabhyam, Bhumi Vashta Bhipada Talabhyam, Bhumi Mdritvana Bhipradesha Murdhum Kuryate, Paryankasanam Bhavati, Paryankasane Sitva Hasto Sammi Layete, Vetrasanam Bhavati. Keeping the position of Parankasana, unite the hands with the feet. This is called Vetrasana. Lie on the back, bend the knees, feet firm on ground, hold ankles and lift the hips up, head, neck and spine aligned. Next, Shivasana. Uttanam shavavad bhumau shayanam tu shivasanam, shavasanam shranti haram jitta vishranti garakam. One lies supine on the ground, Motionless like a dead body. This is Shavasana, which removes the physical fatigue and gives rest to the mind. With this, we come to the end of the demonstration of today's the year 2022 Yoga Asana. We'll be back very shortly. Please stay tuned. Nityandam.
Nityanandam. Now, continuing on this year's Asana of the year 2022, the social media challenge. Every year on International Yoga Day, Kailasa's Nityananda Yoga presents to the world a social media challenge, inviting yogis from all over the world to join Kailasa's diplomats, delegates, and disciples to participate in the revival of the authentic yoga while simultaneously supporting a meaningful global initiative. This event was created to inspire individuals to explore and share the world of traditional yoga asanas and encourage the world to acknowledge the source of yoga asanas, which comes from various ancient Hindu scriptures. The enlightened rishis and gurus, sages of the past aligned to Paramashiva, the founder of yoga, have contributed to the original Shastra Pramanas revealed by Paramashiva, introducing to the world the various dimensions, benefits, and purposes of yoga asanas. Kailasa's Nityananda Yoga Social Media Challenge is about celebrating this yogic science and honoring the ancient lineages that have come before us. Now the challenge. Kailasa's Nityananda Yoga invites and encourages all yogis across the world to participate in the sharing of this authentic yoga asana by performing the following actions. Take a photo and or video of your performing this asana. Create a post on Facebook, Instagram, and any other platform you feel inspired to share on. Third, in your post, share the truth that yoga is the science of radiating, radiating enlightenment as revealed in the Sanskrit Hindu text. Fourth, along with the post, share the following hashtags. Hashtag Kailasha, hashtag Nityananda Yoga, hashtag World Yoga Day, hashtag Authentic Yoga, hashtag Ustarasana, hashtag International Yoga Day, hashtag Nityananda, hashtag World Hunger, hashtag End Hunger. Fifth, share your post with at least five different friends, groups, or pages on the respective platforms you are sharing to. With this, we conclude the 2022 Asana of the Year as revealed by the Supreme Pontiff of Hinduism, Bhagwan Shinityananda Paramashyam. Thank you for joining us. We'll be back with the next segments of the World International Yoga Day. Please stay tuned. Thank you. Nityanandam.
Kundalini without even performing a single movement. When we incorporate asanas and begin to align our bodies to the cosmic geometry, we can experience the ultimate strength and power flowing through us. The traditional asanas on the Kundalini Raju, the rope, are designed to elongate the spine, tune the spine to the cosmic geometry, and ignite the Kundalini Shakti. Through intense flips and twists, the internal organs get detoxified and the body becomes one of a true yogi. And while performing yoga asanas on the rope, many nadi points and marma points, vital points in the body where life force energy is concentrated, get activated and awakened in our physiology. When we are performing the Shivastamba yoga on the wooden pole, we are moving with a powerful intention to be grounding and establishing ourselves in the state and space of Paramashiva, all powerfulness. The breakthrough happens when we perform these various asanas and mounts with this new context. It awakens the Kundalini Shakti within us, stimulating various Nadi and Marma points and unlocks countless blockages within our body. Through this yogic science, we experience the completion of limiting cognitions and gain powerful clicks that lead us to conscious breakthroughs, manifesting through us as the Shaktis of Paramashiva. Another component of Nithyana Yoga is Pranayama. The air you breathe is just a vehicle in which the prana, life energy, comes in and goes out of your body. This life energy is universal. Pranayama is where yoga reveals itself as much more than a mere physical practice. No other discipline has understood and presented the means to regulate and expand one's own life energy like yoga. The practice of pranayama leads to the purification of the energy bodies and its channels, called nadis, and to the ultimate experience of manifesting the powers of Paramashiva. Nityanandam Paramasukadam Kevalam Yana Murtim Sundwati Tangahana Satrusham Tadvamasya Dilaksham Ekam Nityam Vimalamachalam Sarvadi Sakshibutam Pavati Tam Trigona Rahitam Sadurum Tam Namami Nityarandam. Welcome to today's Kailasa's Nityaranda Yoga, where today is the International Yoga Day, 21st June 2022. Kailasa presents the yoga, the foundation of yoga. Swamiji, our beloved Guru, His Divine Holiness, Bhagavan Nityaranda Paramashivam, reveals the authentic science of yoga to everyone. In today's session, now we'll be entering to the power manifestation segment of the aspects of the 12 components of yoga. One of the components is the manifesting shaktis of Parmashiva. Let's start with the grace of Supreme Pontiff of Hinduism, His Divine Holiness, Bhagavan Ityarada Parmashiva. Let's enter into this manifesting shakti segment of Parmashiva in the Kailasas Nityarada Yoga. The Katopanishad Kato starts with a beautiful mantra, a mantra which is un incomparable, the Shanti mantra, which is Om Sahana Bhunavatu Sahano Bhunatu Sahaviryam Karavavahe Tejas Vinamadi Tamastuma Vit Vishavahe Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. In this mantra, both Guru and disciple pray to existence, to Parashakti, to Bhagavan, to Paramashiva to Parabrahman, to their ultimate consciousness, whatever you may call it, they pray to the higher energy saying, may we both together be protected, may we both be nourished and enriched, may we both bring our hands together and work with a great strength, energy and enthusiasm. May, may our study and learning together illumines both with a sharp, absolute light of higher intelligence. So be it. May we both not have enmity or incompletion with each other. Let there be peace, peace, peace. Let there be peace in my inner space. 
peace in nature, peace in divine forces. So when you have this kind of feeling connection with the master at the beginning, that you allow him, the Guru's grace allows inside yourself and you'll naturally manifest the Shaktis of Paramashiva without any doubt, any self-doubt, self-hatred or self-denial or any other incompletions you have. When Guru flows inside you, you manifest the Shaktis of Paramashiva. Today's introduction is always Swamiji tells whenever he brings Shakti, whenever he introduces many Yuga Shakti, he always picks it up from the Vedas and Agamas. Vedas and Agamas, which are the source scriptures of Hinduism, which are the revelation, the signs of, of awakening, the untapped potential for humanity to experience the higher states of consciousness. The truths of Vedagamas expressed in Vedic Rishis, Munis, and Sadhakas are Shaktis or extraordinary powers. The signs passed on through Diksha. The knowledge and signs of manifesting these Shaktis are passed on from one generation to the next through Diksha, which are the initiation by the enlightened gurus. His Divine Holiness, Bhagavan Nityananda Paramashiva, is a living avatar of the millennium who is powerfully reviving these yogic sciences and transmitting it to the world at large on a human scale never accomplished before. His Divine Holiness, Bhagavan Nityarana Paramashiva, is a reviver of Kailasa, the ancient enlightened Hindu civilization nation, the great cosmic godless Hindu nation. His Divine Holiness is an avatar form and is a supreme pontiff of Hinduism. His Divine Holiness has made the science of power manifestation, the science of yoga, the temple-based universities for humanity. Sovereign order of Kailasa, led by His Divine Holiness and Nityananda order of monks, nuns, and Hindu diaspora are working for global peace and to give superconscious breakthrough to humanity. His Nityananda Hindu University, the world largest with extended campuses in 150 countries, is collecting, organizing, preserving, time capsuling, decoding, spreading, and reviving 20 million souls book of Hinduism and the 64 sacred arts and the science like Ayurveda, music, dance, sculpting, astrology, vastri. His divine holiness is the 293rd Guru Mahasamidhanam or Shyamala Pita Sarvanya Pita, the ancient apex body of Hinduism and present emperor of Surya and Sasuranya Samrajya. Swamiji has survived the most worst persecution of multiple assassination, atoms and person and character by anti-Hindu enemies. Swamiji, which our own beloved Guru, Bhagavan Nityananda Paramashu, he is being recognized as an incarnation at a very young age, was trained and taught these sciences to revive the initiation and knowledge repositories for billions to manifest the science of power manifestations from the aspects of Agama, Vedanta, Tantra, Sri Vidya, <laughs> Yoga in Yogi Powers, Mantra Shastra, Siddha Vidya, the science of Aushada, Advaita and Bhakti Yoga, Paramashrivinyana and Paramashrivinyana. You can see in the right side of the slide, His Divine Holiness, Nityananda Paramashrivin, master the science of yoga and the yogic powers such as teleportation, materialization and levitation under Raghupati Yoga, also called Yoga, Yoga and the Puri. Diksha, which is a transmission, which is the science of Paramashrivin. The knowledge and signs of manifesting the Vedagama truths are transmitted through Diksha or which are called initiation. Diksha is a direct transfer of spiritual energy by an avatar. His Divine Holiness, Bhagavan Nityananda Paramashiva, has initiated the masses into enlightened, enlightenment through his powerful discourses, initiations and satsangs since the year 1989. Vedagamas is a living applied science. Vedas are the ultimate superior authority for the Hindus. Vedas are the pure science where the ultimate truths are explained. Agamas are the scriptures with the applied technology. The applied science is expanded. 
His Divine Holiness is a collector of the largest Hindu library with over 1 million books, 1 million family scriptures, and digital books. Most read, most worshipped book, the largest sold spiritual enlightenment book in the world. So far, 2 crore hard copies sold and 5 crore copies have been downloaded, translated and published in 25 different international languages. By reading, by reading these kind of living enlightenment book, you enter into the science of our manifestation where you feel, yes, you manifest the Shaktis of Parameshiva and you can have any solution. Swamiji tells where you can see the left side of your the slide where the living enlightenment book, which is there, in this, it is available in the hard copy, soft copy in the enlightened app itself. This is one of the ways where you can manifest the powers of Parameshiva. For example, even though you are stuck, you are stuck in something. Either you are stuck, you are not able to get wealth, your health is issues, you have a problem by relating with somebody, or any family issues, you have any problem which can be solved just by reading the living and later book. Open and Swamiji himself will give the solution and you can manifest your solution and manifest the Shakti. The science is authentic, time-tested, scientific, and foolproof. The Diksha, or initiation from Guru, Avatar, His Divine Holiness, Bhagavan Nityananda Parameshivam, makes the science directly an experience. This experience is directly authenticated by the Shastra Pramana, which are the eternal, unchangeable truths, which is revealed in the source scriptures. Of the Pramana, which are the experiences and results of aptas or authorities of Hinduism, the Vedic Rishis and scientists who have time tested and verified the science. Atma Pramana, which are the account of the His Divine Holiness, Bhagavan Nityananda Paramashiva, this millennium's avatar, personal experience of our manifestation. Sakshi Pramana, which are experience of millions of disciples, devotees, and followers initiated into the science. Of his divine holiness, Bhagavan Nityan Parashiva. In this Sakshi Pramana, that in a very beautiful way, that all the devotees sitting across the globe watching this live event of the International Yoga Day, which is currently happening, you are all the Sakshi Pramana, where you, go, you are going to be initiated into the science of our manifestation, and you will be one of the Sakshi Pramana manifesting the powers. In a more detailed way, Atma Pramana is Swamiji's own experience when he was small he experienced the science of third eye in the later on after the few slides we'll be looking into the swamiji's own words where and how he, he very beautifully explains how he experienced and other gurus grew him up to manifest the powers of karma shiva shakti pada which is the quantum entanglement with avatar Shakti Pada or entanglement refers to being in the presence of Avatar, His Divine Holiness, Bhagavan, Ityanda, Parameshiva. Shakti Pada or entanglement is a way through which the higher states of consciousness and in turn Shaktis continue to manifest through the disciples, devotees, and initiates of the His Divine Holiness, Bhagavan, Ityanda, Parameshiva. Around the world, millions of initiates and disciples start their day at 7:30 a.m. IST or in the Pacific time zone, in whatever may time zone you are available with, by being in Shakti Nipada with His Divine Holiness, Bhagavan Nityada Parameshivam, through the daily satsangs, discourses, puja, meditation, and different spiritual events. Empower humanity to manifest the 463 plus Shakti, the super conscious powers. Humanity has traveled a long way from amoeba to a single fish. I call that as a pure physical growth. From fish to monkey, it is a physical and physiological growth. From monkey to man, it is a physical, physiological, and conscious growth. Now, the human being has reached a level where he needs to have a superconscious break. He needs to move further. He has already reached a certain space. Now, he needs to move further into superconsciousness. 
in a more simple way, what I can tell from amoeba to fish, you physically grow, that you have hands, legs to move, to move into the new world to see what is happening. From fish to monkey, you have little brains, but you think, yes, this is good. I can pick this up and eat. I have more space to live and I can explore different things. From monkey to man, you have common sense, you have growth, you have mind, you have everything, your desires, your senses to like, dislike, to choose what you want, to taste what you want, to feel what you want, to see what you want, to hear what you want, to experience what you want. That is the level of a man that all of us are in now. That is what Swamiji said. On this 21st century, they are all is from the monkey to man, which he says it is a physical, physiological and conscious growth. Now, all the human beings are ready to have a super conscious take that it is from a human to divine subhuman, human to enlightened being, to where it's from Jesus. Many of us, or many of us will have a question. Yes, Swamiji is a human body, and we are also a human body, but what is the difference between Swamiji and us? Very beautifully, he tells, when you are you are human body. Yes, you experience the same. Swamiji also in a human body. He has chosen the conscious birth when he was small. He has chosen a conscious birth to make every single person experience a super conscious state. But, but all of us are unconsciously living our lives, just doing whatever we are doing throughout the day. That is the only reason Swamiji said that when you manifest the powers of Parma Shiva, you experience human to divine to the human that you manifest the powers of Paramashiva, you go from monkey to man, man to divine superhuman. Today's day, you'll learn about the sacred secret of Shakti Avishkarada, which are called the manifesting Shaktis. This knowledge transmission will happen to you through spiritual reference, powerful cognitions, exercises, and experiential understanding of powers, shaktis in your life. Swamiji very beautifully tells, in this way, the shaktis won't experience just when you just meditate or you just sit. Many enlightened masters sit and do tapas for hundreds of years and experience one or two siddhis, and those are just permanent. But shaktis is when how Swamiji said, he has experienced everything in his life, beyond walking the length and breadth of India, walking to every home, begging, walking to every street, healing millions of people, doing all of their problems, healing and coming out of all life kind of problems which is happening in front of him. And now, he has experienced all the powers of Parmashiva by his guru, many of his guru, his most beloved guru. Arunagiri Yogi Shura himself, as all of us are praying every day for, and Yoga, Yoga Ananda Puri, which is Swamiji's Yoga Guru, who has brought him up and built his body to be as powerful as he is now. All the many gurus who have groomed him up, giving him powerful cognitions, exercises, experiential understanding of powers, which are making him the way he is now. Now let's see a short video. Whatever you think as your strength, like how much cash you have, how much gold you have, how much money you have in the bank, what all properties you have, your secret passwords, passcodes, your strength secrets, you will tell only to your son or your daughter to whom you are going to give your inheritance. Same way, most important powerful secrets Paramashiva has given to his son Muruga, Subramanya, in Agama called Sarvanyanotra Agama. All the powerful secrets the father will tell only to his son. It is too secret. I am going to open that Agama and give all the essence of all those secrets. Secrets of Charyapada lifestyle, secrets of Kriyapada, secrets of Yogapada, secrets of Jnanapada. 
I am not only going to teach you, I am going to give you exactly what Paramashiva gave it to Subramanya. Because Paramashiva himself is manifesting to this being now, giving you all exactly what was given to Subramanya. Nothing is required from your side. Just sit like innocent Subramanya. Muruga at the feet of Paramashiva. I assure you, whatever was given to Subramanya, the whole life will be given to you now. Not just words, teachings, not even just experience, life itself. I am talking to each one of you sitting in your room. I will make you all Subramanya. Shakti Ripada, which are the signs of enlightenment. Kailasa's Paramashivoham, with the Supreme Pontiff of Hinduism, his divan, his divan holiness, Bhagavan Nityadana Paramashiva. The word Shakti Nipada literally means the transmission or the descent of powers to Shakti. It is one of the most sacred and rare happenings that occurs in the form of the grace of the Guru to the disciple. Swamiji said that in this form, when Shakti Nipada happens, from wherever he is, he is now in the form of a human form to experience the powers of Parameshiva. Where the Shakti Shakti Pada happens, you manifest the powers of Parameshiva just by seeing him, even once, scrolling him in the Facebook, seeing him in the YouTube, or looking into whatever is happening around him and just just looking at him and manifesting the powers. Many of the devotees out there may have experienced the same thing just by looking at him and having a glimpse. Oh my God, yes, he is speaking to me. I have this problem and he is addressing the same problem to me. And you experience Parmashiva, you experience the powers at that time. That is the way you experience Shakti Pada, that the transmission of the powers happen. The Shastra Pramana, where Swamiji says very beautifully, he tells from the Mrigrendra Agama, Vidyapada, Panchakrita Prakanam, the verse 3. Those perfect souls upon whom the Lord bestows grace presenting himself in the body of the Guru, reach the worlds of Mudras, who controls the five groups, each group consisting of eight worlds, Mantras, Mantreshwaras, Ishwara, Ishwara Tattva, Sadashiva Tattva and so forth, according to their state and nature of Shaktipada, the descent of the grace bestowing Shakti. In this way, Swamiji says, in this light, just to experience more, every single person. It is not that Swamiji choose or I choose or somebody choose that, yes, only if you are having a good soul, good hearted mind, then you experience God, you experience the divine, you get you get to see Swamiji. You get to manifest powers. No. He tells, Swamiji tells for anyone in this whole planet who has head, who knows, yes, there is something which I seek, something which I desire, something which I want to manifest. You manifest that as a reality. That is the way Swamiji says, those perfect souls upon whom the Lord bestows grace, presenting himself in the body of the Guru, reach the worlds of Rudras, that you experience the powers of Parameshiva. Dapta Pramana is from the Vijnana Bhairava Tantra by Sri Abhinava Gupta. He tells, when one completely realizes the supreme path quickly from the mouth of the Guru, then only as a result of this extremely intense Shaktipada can one attain to Parameshiva alone without any obstacles. For many devotees out there, you may have a doubt. Yes, now I'm going to manifest the powers of Tarai, or I knew the signs of Tarai earlier. For some of you who is watching this live event of the International Yoga Day, 
we may have a doubt yes now i'm let's see what what are the shaktis are about and what are they speaking and will i manifest the powers or will i able to do the powers of parameshwara is there a doubt is there an obstacle where parameshwara is going to put me into and stop to make me manifest this powers of parameshwara he always tells he test he test you and make you make it happen that for you to manifest the powers and then you naturally experience the powers the powers of parameshwara and you experience the entanglement in state so when you completely realize the supreme power quickly from parameshwara's mouth guru himself and he tells you are going to manifest powers and you are going to reach the shakti of parameshwara and then as a result of this extremely intense shakti pada can one attain parameshwara without any obstacles so without any obstacles you can naturally manifest the powers of parameshwara atma pramana swamiji's own experience where he tells whatever he tells whatever truths may be advaita may be third eye may be powers shaktis siddhis completion in completions parameshivoham prabhu yogeshwara every single word which he utters and initiates all of us he has something called atma pramana atma pramana is his own experience but he has experienced everything and he is going to share it to everyone by his experience is this atma pramana is from the webinar shakti pada the descent of grace the power manifestation consciousness shakti pada is the best boon i receive from sada shiva Shakti Pada is the best boon I received from Parameshwara. Nine and a half months, I had the great fortune of physically relating with Parameshwara in the form of Arunagiri Yogeshwara, my guru. End of that and a half months relationship with the guru Parameshwara, Arunagiri Yogeshwara. The essence was I was not able to remember who I was before that nine and a half months. Understand? Not that I have been broken to ten pieces. i just did not exist even if there were pieces never i was remembered after the nine and a half months who i was how i was what i was before that nine and a half months
new, are new, completely new, which we are going to look into this and see, yes, is manifesting cause of Parama Shiva. Let's see what's there into it. And then entanglement can happen. Swamiji entangling me, and I'm going to connect him myself into the space of oneness with Swamiji. And all of you watching that, you're going to entangle with the same person, which is going to directly connect ourselves with the source of Parama Shiva. And all of us, which are going, we are going to manifest the powers of Parama Shiva. These are called the word entanglement. If your mind entangles with no mind, it means it is entanglement. If your muscle memory gets if your muscle memory gets entangled with muscle memory, it is called entrainment. And if your bio memory gets gets entangled with bio memory, it becomes enlightenment. To elaborate more in this, when you relate with a friend, a normal friend from a school, your mind entangles with him. You get his habit, you get his pattern, you believe him, you have a trust, you go relate with him. See, your mind or their mind becomes to you and you get their habits, their patterns together. In the case of muscle memory, your own father, your mom and dad give birth to you. Your father is a muscle memory where you feel his muscles, his structure, his face, and you get emotions like him, or sometimes you will act like him. It's called the muscle memory where you get. It is called entrainment, what Swamiji says. But in the process of Vaya memory, where it becomes enlightenment, when you connect with mother, Swamiji's mom, Swamiji's everything, a mom, a dad, a friend, a colleague, she can be anything, when you relate with him, your bio memory gets awakened, it becomes like an enlightenment. Healing happens in entanglement level. Kundalini awakening happens in an entrainment level. Levitation happens in an enlightenment level. Listen carefully. In this he says, all of us have healed somebody. Or some, of, some of us may do not know what is healing all. So when you heal someone, it is happening in that entanglement level. In Kundalini awakening, when you, have, when you see Swamiji, some of your body parts moves and automatically heals by God. Something is happening. I think so. Some divine presence is entering into me. Or I feel something weird is going on in my being. That's called Kundalini awakening. The non-mechanical parts of the brain, your inner potential energy which is getting awakened, which is the entrainment level. When you manifest the powers of Parameshiva, one of the powers is the levitation where Swamiji very beautifully tells here. When you manifest the powers of Parameshiva, like third eye awakening, consciousness over a matter, ability to see the distance, remote vision, body scanning, you experience in the level of enlightenment. Consciousness intervening and breaking in the form of God or Guru and breaking this thought current, introducing you to a magical lifestyle. From the logical lifestyle is called Shaktipada. When you manifest the consciousness from God to Guru, it is from the breaking this thought current. You are, man, you are having the thought of living a magical lifestyle. All of us are now in the logical lifestyle where we know, yes, we wake up from the day, we drink a cup of coffee, and then we go on to our work. We know our whole day goes by just uh, working, coming back, being with our family, going again, working, buying stuff for our homes, or buying stuff for yourself, going to shopping, living with somebody else, relating, relating with somebody else. It's a, lo a logical lifestyle that we are living. But when we go from the God to Guru, God is just a three-letter word. From God to Guru, it becomes from a logical lifestyle to a magical lifestyle. Shakti Pada, the first thing it does in you, increasing the viscosity of the bliss, increasing the depth, and presence and intensity of the bliss in you. So that automatically breaks the pitta layer, which is the delusion layer. Some of you may seeing this and ask you, may have a question inside yourself. Pitta layer, delusion layer. What is that so-called called pitta layer or the delusion layer? All of us have the pitta layer inside ourselves where we feel, yes, something is there. We follow delusion. We always get upset. We know that 
okay something is going on wrong that which is which is need to be corrected which needs to be simplified and turn out to be shakti that is all which is called the pitta layer the delusion layer which is in, in all of us so when shakti pada happens which is increasing the bliss or happiness inside you from your depth of being the delusion layer gets broken shakti pada should be happening constantly in your system by the sweet leela dhyana a sweet remembrance if the leela dhyana continuously happening in you means shakti pada has become eternal in you leela dhyana means you see swamiji like how in the right side of the photo he is sitting at the sundareshwara bhava samadhi darshan it is one of his leelas sitting in that form wearing different types of jewelry presenting himself as parameshwara in some you see as venkateshwara in some you see as kalabhairava in some you see as muruga some you see as ganesha some you see as whatever you want as a friend as a normal being relating with you as a father relating with you as a spy relating with you as a my god swabhaji is my extension if i ask something even though no one does to me in the world and i know he will do it that's the way his leela dhyana happens for many of us he comes as a guru for me if you ask me for me how does swamiji comes for me he comes as a father he comes as a person who trains me to to change myself to make him myself like how he is that's the way i perceive it for some of you out there you may have swamiji as coming in your dream living in your dream answering your prayers in your dream for many of you it can be many things that is called leela dhyana continuously happening in you which has become eternal in you shakti pada shakti ni pada which are quantum entanglement operates from space because the space is entangled everything else gets entangled shakti pada now we have crossed what is shakti pada now is shakti ni pada shakti ni pada means start living the instructions and initiations without waiting for your logic to get convinced is shakti ni pada the joy you experience when you live just because he said that's it that's called shakti ni pada to elaborate more on this many of us have been gone to swamiji physically or through videos or performing pada puja asking in adul walk in from the devi baba samay darshan you ask him swamiji what is my purpose of my life swamiji can i manifest powers swamiji can i do this swamiji can i do that swamiji will i able to succeed in my life in the terms of poverty in the terms of achieving wealth my relationship with my friends everything he says something can you live it in the joy it in, it doesn't matter whatever he says swamiji has gone through everything from the past present or future the joy you experience when you live just because he said you manifest power of parama shiva and you get liberated just one word that joy is called shakti nipada here you can see swamiji's contribution of the entanglement and process in many different forms the first picture is at 12th of may 2018 the inner awakening program power manifestation happens in the form of entanglement the next is the first may 2017 in our waking program our manifestation and tangled the next is again 2017 the next is the 15th may 2015 happening in the location of varadasi the power manifestation and tangled happening the same next is the 17th august 2017 power manifestation and tangled happening as the inner awakening so all of this are one of the contributions that swamiji is contributing all of us to manifest the powers of parama shiva and making all of us as him like how we said earlier from human to divine superhuman 
now we will see the short video the sexual feeling through entanglement where now you have seen everything that i have said what is entanglement what is shaktis what are siddhis what is shakti pada and shakti pada now let's watch the short video of how swamiji transmits his powers from healing to touch to look or just the words for you to manifest the shakti pada In quantum physics, there is a term entanglement. Means, when one energy source entangles with another, they interfere with each other. This interference can be highly positive and transformative, and harmonious. Entanglement directly affects human beings. when you come in my breathing space this is what happens your mind gets entangled with my no mind if you have some 200 pendulum clocks in, put on one wall the wall can be any length it does not need to be within certain length put hundreds of pendulum clocks and start them all at different times see within next few minutes all the pendulums will swing in synchronicity exactly this is what happens when you come in the breathing space of the healer how i heal the science of parameshivam let's begin in this video he tells about how to manifest the powers of parameshiva and how you manifest the powers of parameshiva life consciousness birth death are the biggest unsolved mysteries that have ever baffled the scope of the human mind even after its continued existence on the planet earth for over 4.5 billion years scientists historians geologists sociologists psychologists are continuously investigating answers to these very existential questions of man and mind perplexing with inconclusive theories of our origins leaving us in a more and more confused quandary of facts but not the reality vain have been their attempts for to search answers of the reality we need to look into the revelations from its original cause karana and not its effect what is consciousness who are human beings does life on this planet have any purpose from ape the man has evolved is this the end of homo sapiens as we know or will there be the next breakthrough from man to divine from consciousness to the super consciousness is it even possible to find legitimate answers that will quench the thirst of human quest have the thinkers and researchers of the western world denied going deeper into the secrets of life evolution and beyond revealed millennia ago as the conclusions of absolute truth by the scientific spiritual authorities of the eastern world these spiritual scientists of the eastern world were the incarnations avatars and the enlightened beings rishis munis from mount kailasa who visited our planet to guide humanity towards the conscious breakthrough kailasa 
is the abode of highly evolved life, the very perfection of human evolution. Geographically, Kailasa, the great mountain, the shaktis which are expressed in the space of enlightenment, the nityatva or the space of enlightenment as a side effect of feeling connection with the divine and high integrity with the womb. Siddhis which are powers that manifest from tapas are penance for enlightenment. Shaktis are the source of enlightenment. Siddhis are on the path of enlightenment. The shaktis of Parameshiva manifest to ordinary human beings in an extraordinary way after the initiation from the avatar. The shaktis are permanent whereas siddhis are not. Siddhis divert you from the space of enlightenment who are shaktis, which are the source of enlightenment. The signs of seeing through the third eye. The signs of manifesting powers, the which is the third eye. The Shastra Pramana, which are called Kapala antarmano nyasya tishtan mili talo chanaha krame namanaso dharya dilakshaye dilakshamuttamam. The translation goes by fixing the mind on inner space within the crown center and sitting stably without any movement, having the eyes closed in position. By the stability of the mind in inner space, through the power of the third eye, one directly sees the ultimate goal, lakshya, by having vision beyond the sight. That reveals any object or place attaining the space of oneness with the source Parameshiva. The earliest evidence of power of third eye, which where Mahavishnu foresees the manifestation of Kartigeya. Sri Vishnu said, Chapter 1 from the Kumara Kanda, Rutra Samhita, Shiva Mahapurana, part of 18 Mahapuranas. By the method of emitting of the life filled energy virium from the divine third eye of Parameshiva onto the ground will certainly be. From the life filled energy, the son of Parameshiva named Skanda will be born. Swamiji's first experience that I was able to see everything around me, above me, the whole 360 degrees, the 10 directions below me, everything I realized, not only was able to see, I was able to feel experience. I'm actually now relieving that experience to describe any point which I felt out, not have described. Now, let us enter into the manifestation of the powers of Parameshiva. As you can see, this is the eye band which I'm having. This eye band which I'm going to wear is probably going to blindfold myself and I'm going to be reading this with my eyes completely blindfolded, reading the comments of where you're going to be posting any comments in the YouTube live, YouTube live, and I'm going to be reading that out just with my eyes completely blindfolded, connecting myself in the form of Parameshiva, just by chanting the Mahavakya, Om, and the Parameshivoha, taking a few moments and then living this as Parameshiva himself, having the first manifestation of third eye just by manifesting these powers of Parameshiva. So now I'll be reading the comments. The first comment from the YouTube live, which is rightly going now, is from Nirantara Manitya Nityanandam. Kailasas Shnitya Devaru Pananda. Here is no audio, Maharaj. Jay Kumar Sundaramurti with an image of 
folded hand kailasa shilita devaru padanda okay now jnana pradhayini which is the folded hands with an image gabi him pardula elder jnana pradhayini kailasa kya welcome to live chat remember to guard our privacy and abide by our community and guidelines so these are the comments which are going on from the live chat top live chat 61 people are watching this live event which is just reading with our eyes blindfolded as now everybody can see uh, the blindfold which is happening there where i'm going to read completely blindfolded there where i see that now just be seeing not even seeing what is happening and the live chat which i've been just seeing and completely blindfold myself connecting myself in the space of oneness with swamiji and chanting the mahavakya om nityananda parameshivoham and manifesting this as a powers to all of you now what has just happened is in the 12 components of yoga one of the components is manifesting shaktis of parameshiva where you manifest the powers and then you let your whole being intensely learn the science of yoga science of advaita to all manifest the powers going down to swamiji now let's see how swamiji now let's see how swamiji manifest as all of us and his experience to manifest the powers of parameshiva anda vaigasi visagam vaigasi month purnima tithi visaga nakshatram one fine evening evening of a full moon day vaigasi month visaga nakshatra purnami tithi subramanyas enlightenment day as per the tradition he appeared from the third eye of mahadeva when i completed 11 and aging into 12 no school at that time usually this may june no school so usually this summer time i'll go and sit in the temple or the hill around 4:30 to 6 6:30 maybe you can say this this is the sandhya time around the time of sunset and moon rise i went to the hill arunachala hill i was sitting at the foothills of arunachala where i was born and brought up whenever i find time i'll go and spend time in that space in that area because devi became enlightened there that place is called pavalakki coral hill i can say in a way the whole ambiance was so calm so beautiful i decided to close my eyes i was not even meditating i was just sitting in a very relaxed way those days i started practicing the self enquiry who am i sometime i may feel from where the thoughts are raising that is thought i start by annamalai swami an enlightened being enlightened master who is a disciple of great incarnation ramana maharishi once i close the eyes the intensity of my yearning started taking over me i just felt what is it i am seeking who is that me who is seeking who is that me that is deeply discontented about anything i see here who 
who is that who is deeply discontented even about my own existence suddenly one moment something happened like a i am being sucked inside pulled inside suddenly something opened in me something broke inside this ananda ganda area literally opened the first thing happened is that the idea inside and outside broke means now i know who is the experience life alive being present in everything experiencing divyan dadami te chakshu pashya me yoga maishwaram the first experience is that i was able to see everything around me above me i started seeing the whole 360 degree i could see literally all the sides 360 degree this side and 360 degree this side ten direction above and below side everything i could see without turning my head without opening my eyes my eyes was closed i realized not only i was able to see i was able to feel experience how much i am alive in that we are able to see the manifestation of parama shiva that we are able to see manifest the powers of parama shiva just for a few minutes and experiencing the powers experiencing the powers of third eye and everybody here to experience the powers of parama shiva with this we will come to the conclusion of today's segment of the international yoga day segment of today's power manifestation power manifestation shaktis of parama shiva stay tuned after the few minutes we're going to be looking into the next segment of that we will introduce the yoga segment and other components of the yoga from the 12 components thank you vidyananda physical well-being is achieved the nervous system is strengthened and vital organs are regulated and brought into a state of health thus the body becomes ready for pranayama it is with pranayama that the real technique of yoga begins his divine holiness paramahamsa nityananda says you will awaken the non-mechanical parts or subtle areas of the brain a source of infinite creativity which usually remains dormant in most human beings will be accessible to you Another dimension of Nitanya Yoga, Bandha. Bandha is internal awakening of the Kundalini Shakti. It is the act of maintenance of a state of contraction or pressure in the body by the yogi. 
They pump energy into dormant or stagnant areas of the body. Here, bandhas are the bridge between the disconnected areas of the energy circuit in our body. These bandhas generate a certain flow along the spinal column, where there are energy points called chakras, which are storehouses and distribution houses for prana shakti. Performing bandhas help to push the kundalini energy upward through the chakras. Thereby, diseases can be cured and the function of their associated physical, psychological, and neurological systems can be optimized. Another component of Nityananda Yoga is mudras. There is a constant inflow of prana happening in our bodies through the nadis and the chakras, but much of it usually gets dissipated into the external world. This dissipation into the external world is responsible for the feeling of tiredness, confusion, and powerlessness that we experience. Mudra refers to the positioning of the limbs, fingers, or even tongue in a certain way to seal this prana into our body, a way of aligning to the cosmic geometry. Mudras are a way to stimulate the flow of prana shakti, life force energy and cosmic currency inside us. Mudras are psycho-physical processes which take us to a higher state of consciousness. By positioning the body in certain ways to block the dissipation of prana and direct it inwards. The Shastras reveal the layers of benefits of mudras from health and longevity to the ultimate experience of transcending our limiting cognitions we carry as human beings and living and radiating the state, space and shaktis of Shiva himself. It is mentioned repeatedly in the scriptures that initiation by the Guru holds the master key that can transform us from human beings into superhuman beings. Abharana is another dimension of Nityananda Yoga. Each metal and jewel Nityanandam Paramasukaram Kevalam yana murtim Tvandvatitam gagana sadrisham Tatvamasya diraksham Ekam nityam vimalamachalam Sarvadi sakshi bhutam Bhavatitam trigona rahitam Sadgurum tam namami Nitinanam, everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome to June 21st. Nit it is the Nityananda or Kailasa's Nityananda Yoga Festival. So excited to have you here to celebrate this International Day of Yoga with us all. It's been a full day so far from 8 a.m. It's now 6 p.m. Indian Standard Time. We've had a lot of sessions. Uh, right from the beginning of the day all the way through. We're not done yet. We have uh, until 9.30 p.m. Most likely our last session is going to end. And if you're participating and enjoying uh, this uh, day's uh, celebrations of authentic yoga, uh, please do let us know where, wherever you're watching this, whether it's on YouTube or Facebook, uh, whatever social media platform you may be streaming this to, or if you're with us here live, uh, on two-way. Please do let us know what uh, what your experience has been like. It's been uh, fun on our side here in Adi Kailasa and hopefully as well on yours. So yes, today in this session, we are entering into the Nitya Dhyan meditation. This is also known as the Life Bliss meditation. Um, maybe one of the most powerful meditations you will ever experience uh, for me, myself, uh, I guess I should introduce myself, Sri Nitya Dridananda Maharaj. Uh, I'm a disciple of Swamiji, Bhagavan Nityananda Paramashivam. And this meditation, the very first time that uh, I had experienced it personally was in 2014 and very profound. And I'll get into my, my own Sakshi Pramana in uh, uh, just a minute. But uh, in this meditation itself, it's, uh, it's comprised of a few steps, and we'll break them down for you one by one before we actually jump into that experience for you all. Uh, the very first thing that needs to be said is if you are a, a meditator, if you're somebody that likes to sit down, whether it's for 10 minutes or one hour every day, uh, I can assure you that whatever your 
personal practice is, whatever your level is of meditation, this meditation is going to give you a profound experience. If you've never done the Nityadhyan, Life Bliss Meditation, you need to come and, and stay here for the, uh, this, the remainder of this session. Um, while you're here, you're going to be sitting, whether, it doesn't, whether you're in your chair or on the ground, or preferably if you can. Ideally, the best position to be in is always in Padmasana. It's the most stable posture. It's the best posture for Kundalini awakening and to allow prana to flow throughout your system. Um, but whatever posture you are in, whether you're sitting in a chair or on the ground, just do make sure that you keep your head, neck, and spine in a straight line while we get into it, okay? Uh, and as mentioned, how this uh, uh, meditation is performed, it's broken into parts. And the very beginning, you're experiencing chaotic breathing. So just a few moments of that is enough to really get the prana flowing through your system. You're going to feel alive. You're going to feel active. Uh, but just a few moments of that is one thing. But to do that for seven minutes straight is what you do at the very beginning. And we're filling our body with, as I mentioned, life energy, that prana shakti. And by doing so, it's really the, uh, the catalyst, I would say, in this process. Uh, of course, the, the, that all happens because of the grace of the guru. And, uh, there's various different scriptures that talk about how the kundalini is awakened by the grace of the guru. Uh, but uh, without diverting too much, we'll just focus on this uh, meditation practice. And so, yes, as you begin the sequence for set the first seven minutes, you're inhaling through the nose in a chaotic fashion. Okay. And so how Swamiji has described this is you can put your hands on your waist if you'd like, um, or you can put them down on your knees. But the idea is to keep the chest up and open. You're trying to create as much space for the oxygen to flow into the system and as much space for the prana to start flowing through your system. And so this chaotic breathing is the best way to do that uh, with, the, with the hands on the waist is the best way to do that, okay? Uh, after you do the chaotic breathing, the, the inhalation, what you're going to do is move into Brahmari Kumbhaka. And if you're somebody that participates in the Patama Vinyasa Krama on a, a daily basis or have practiced uh, the Nityananda Yoga sequence of 108 postures a, a few times, um, you may remember Brahmari Kumbhaka. Brahmari Kumbhaka is buzzing like a bee. And so while you're here, after you've inhaled chaotically, one, you're going to feel really full of energy. And you're not going to want to move. So after those first seven minutes, make sure that you stay still, even though I don't even know if I need to say that, you're, you're not going to want to move really. Uh, from that position, though, you're going to start buzzing like a bee. Unlike in the Patama Vinyasa Krama, what you're going to be doing is buzz extremely loud. So if you can hear me, you're going to inhale. Mm -hmm. So you're buzzing as loud as you can for as long as you can, okay? And then you're going to continue doing that. So after the chaotic breathing, buzzing as loud as you can and as long as you can. And personally, I really do encourage you from my own Sakshi Pramana with this, uh, the longer that you can buzz and the most uh, intense that you're, or, or if you're doing it very intensely, it's going to give you more profound experience. And what's going to happen, what you experience is the prana starts to flow throughout the entire body. If your hands aren't in Bindu Mudra during the actual meditation, you're going to naturally want to do that. The hands actually naturally curl into that position and they're, they're almost going to lock like that. So when you do the chaotic breathing and then the buzzing, the body gets so stiff because it's so full of prana. The life energy is completely to the max spreading without the body. All the 72,000 nadis are getting flushed with prana. And so that experience is very profound on its own. Um, once you do the chaotic breathing and you're done the humming, again, I should mention the humming is also for seven minutes as well. So the first seven minutes, chaotic breathing. <sighs> inhaling through the nose really do the best you can while you're going in and out okay nice long deep inhalations and then 
forceful exhalations out of the mouth. Then you're coming to Brahmari Kumbhakar. Mm, buzzing as loud as you can. When you buzz as loud as you can and for as long as you can, as intensely as you can, for seven minutes, I don't even need to say anything. You'll have the experience of uh, something very profound. It's, it's beyond explanation, really. Um, so just make sure that you do both of those first two steps as sincerely as possible. Be integrated to this meditation. Okay. After you go through the second part of the meditation, which is the chaotic breathing and then the buzzing, the third part is you're going to visualize and focus on each of your seven chakras. First, starting at the base of the spine in the Muladhara chakra. And how you focus on each one of the chakras is Swamiji revealed that you visualize them as an extremely bright white light. Okay, so you're visualizing this ball of energy, this very bright white light ball of energy at each of the seven chakras. And again, beginning at the Muladhara chakra. So while you're holding your concentration there, you're going to be focused specifically one chakra at a time for one minute at a time. And there's seven chakras from Muladhara to Sahasrara chakra. As you focus on each chakra, that's seven minutes total. So now we're at 21 minutes total of this meditation before it really takes off. But we've set the stage nicely for Kundalini awakening. And that's, that's what's going to happen when you perform this. Um, so when you are doing this, focusing on each bright white light, you can visualize yourself as that entire bright white light if you'd like. If that helps you uh, hold on to that visualization and you, and you feel like you can completely soak and melt into that bright white ball, then do that. Uh, if you want to be experiencing and like almost looking down and see the bright white light from that perspective, you can also do that as well. Okay. Uh, from there, again, you move up from chakra to chakra to chakra and Swamiji will guide you in that process also. And so you're doing this for seven minutes each as well. After that, you are then initiated by Swamiji. He awakens the Kundalini Shakti. He'll say, Om Namah Shivaya. And right away, you will have a Kundalini awakening. I can say from my own Shakti, Shakshi's Pramana that in 2014, I attended an awakening with Swamiji in Varanasi. And I did this meditation with him. And at the very end, he said, Om Namah Shivaya. And I felt this like kind of like very subtle, sharp sensation, something like, like something was piercing through near the perineum. And what had happened was, as soon as it happened, I'm like, that was my Kundalini. Like it just clearly awoke from him saying Om Namah Shivaya. And that's, that's what Nitidyan does. If you don't have a Kundalini awakening experience yet, this will provide you with that, as long as you're really intense and sincere in the process. And then if you do have your Kundalini awakened from Swamiji already, you're going to experience a very profound uh, happening still, nonetheless. Uh, the, the, like I mentioned before, the prana starts to really flow. The energy is flowing through your system uh, to a level that you're probably never going to experience on on you know yearly basis. Even um, it's uh, it's very profound in that light. So that's the final stage of the meditation. Is Swamiji initiates you. And then you sit in that space of deep restful awareness, unclutching as much as you can continuous and, uh, continuously. So you're feeling and relaxing the entire body if you have not already gotten to that space, but just completely unclutching and sitting in that space of Advaita with Swamiji and really enjoying the, the process at that point. There's really nothing you need to do, but just sit and smile and enjoy the experience. Um, and so, yes, this is the Nitya Dhyan meditation process, um, step by step, how it flows. And so just a reminder, again, a quick recap. First and foremost, make sure your head, neck, and spine is in a straight line. Okay, if your head, neck, and spine is not in a straight line, gravity doesn't work as well, right? Uh, the, the energy won't flow as seamlessly as possible. So if you have a straight pipe, the Sushumna Nadi is nice and straight, the Kundalini has got no resistance as it comes up. That's what you're looking for. You want to make sure that spine, head, neck, head, neck, and spine are straight. Okay. After that, if your head, neck, and spine is in straight position, 
that's that's perfect if you're sitting down in a chair nothing wrong with that but if you can be sitting in padmasana that's ideal okay either way head neck and spine in a straight line after that we're involving in the chaotic breathing remember deep forceful inhalations through the nose and then seven minutes of that so it's going to be really intense you're going to get to like minute three maybe four and you're going to say how much longer is this do the best you can to keep inhaling as much as you can you may get a really dry mouth you may get uh, feel like hey i can't do this anymore do the best you can because that's when you're really going to have that profound breakthrough when you're able to push beyond those mental barriers and, and the mind saying oh this is enough maybe right after that the third step or not the third step, but the third thing to mention is you're buzzing like a bee. Mm, as loud as you can, as long as you can. Okay. Remember, same thing as the chaotic inhalations. Make sure you're buzzing as sincerely as and, and as intensely as you can. Sincerity and intensity. After that, we're focusing on each chakra one by one, one minute per chakra. And as mentioned, Swamiji is going to guide you through all of these steps. And then at the end, he will initiate you as well. And then after that, you're going to experience seven minutes of a deep, restful meditation experience, okay? Um, and this is the Nitya Dhyan, or the Life Bliss Meditation. Uh, so if you are ready to jump into this, I, I do recommend that maybe you take a tiny sip of water if you feel like you're dehydrated. However, don't drink too much water because the Kundalini Shakti, it's, it's, it's uh, heat is its lubricant. And what happens when you put water on fire or something that is hot? It puts that out, right? So you want to avoid dumping too much water into the system. Ideally, you don't have a meal right before doing this as well. Um, if you did have a meal, what to do? You're here in this moment. We can still have this profound experience together. But it is recommended that moving forward, you do this on an empty stomach as well, okay? Uh, as I had mentioned before, if you'd like your hands to be in Bindu Mudra or, or what people know as Chin Mudra, uh, you can feel free to do so as well. Um, but just make sure that head, neck, and spine is in a straight line. There's a reason why I keep on emphasizing that also. Okay, so just as long as the head, neck, and spine is in a straight line, you're pretty much going to have a nice experience. And actually, I mean, even still, if, if you're somebody that cannot wait, like stand up or, or sit down with the spine straight, Sometimes you can do meditations laying down. However, this one, you do want to make sure that you're seated upright, okay? Just to emphasize that if that wasn't clear enough, okay? Uh, so with this, we'll begin to enter into the Nitya Dhyan meditation. What Swamiji is going to do is right away, we'll show this video that was uh, Swamiji initiating us all in 2014. When you go through this process, just get into that space of listening, deep space of listening. If you can have a head, set of headphones, um, that's ideal. And uh, ideally, you're also in a quiet space in a room that's not going to be affected by others. And if you want to lock your door, make sure you're not, uh, nobody's bothering you during this time. Uh, that might be a good idea as well. Okay, so make sure you're undisturbed and you can have uh, a nice deep meditation experience. Okay, so with this, uh, we'll continue on with the session. We'll begin a, a screen sharing of Swamiji, showcasing and initiating you into the Nitya Dhyan meditation process. So just stay tuned and we'll quickly play this video for you all. And I hope you all enjoy this experience. I know you will. As, again, just be sincere, be intense, and you're going to have a profound experience. Nitya okay. Nandam, and we'll see you in further sessions or at the end of the session. The meditation process, life bliss meditation, the meditation process which creates the perpetual completion in your system. I give you a few minutes, please settle down and adjust yourself, make yourself comfortable, then I lead you step by step.
yes the first step please understand first step of the process is chaotic breathing means awakening and arising the prana life energy level in your body to its peak possibility it is the most dynamic aspect you can put your hands on the hip and start breathing as deep as possible and as powerfully as possible it's like a hyperventilating you that's all nothing else hyperventilating i can show you use your whole body to breathe the first step is 7 minutes if you want you can sit on your heels with knees and feet together in vajrasana or you can sit comfortably but use your whole body and breathe use your whole body and breathe i can demonstrate by myself see here use your whole body and breathe as deeply as possible and as powerfully as possible but as comfortably as possible let your whole body become alive let the hyperventilation happen in you sincere as much as you can do it as long as you are comfortable just don't increase your high blood pressure if you are if you are high blood pressure do it mildly comfortably others do it sincerely authentically
now move to the next step intense humming sit in the same way either sitting on your knees or sit comfortably but hum as intensely as possible let your whole awareness be with the humming sound it's almost like if you put your mouth into empty vessel and create a vibration how it will be same way hum as intensely as possible let your whole body vibrate with that humming sound mm.
bring your awareness to the seven energy centers in your body i will guide you step by step first the root of the spine visualize yourself a powerful bright sun in your root center the root of the spine be in the space of restful awareness center the spleen area visualize yourself as a powerful light the spleen area center see yourself in your navel center as a powerful light
now bring your awareness to the heart center center of the heart visualize yourself as a powerful light now bring your awareness to the throat center vishuddhi chakra now bring your awareness to the third eye between both the eyes anya chakra see yourself as a powerful light on the third eye bring your awareness to the crown center the top of your head sahasrara chakra see yourself as a light on the crown center with my integrity and authenticity i bless you all let you all experience kundalini awakening Namah Shivaya Namah Shivaya
now just relax sit in the space of unclutched desire to yourself you will sit in the space of perpetual completion any incompletion comes up complete and drop them be in the space of perpetual completion any doubt fear powerlessness comes up in you distractions comes up in you complete them and drop them be in the space of perpetual completion unclutched i bless you all and initiate all of you let your kundalini shakti be intensely awakened let your brain mirror the neuron activities of an incarnation the peak possibility namah shivaya namah shivaya namah shivaya karuna ಅರುಣಾಚಲ ಶಿವ
மூன்றாம் முத்தலவாசற்கு வாசருதி காசமி சாயுச்சியம் பயக்கும் ஈசரம் என்றும் ஆடையிறானே ஈசரம் என்றும் with yourself and others let you all be the space of perpetual completion let you all be the space of perpetual possibility let you all be the space of perpetual living enlightenment let you all be the space of perpetual living advaita i request every one of you please practice this life bliss meditation every day the guiding music is available for free download in our website you can download this music with voice guided the guided cd is available in our website for free download i request all of you to download this guided meditation cd from our website and practice this meditation every day and experience the happiness dose dose of happiness in your life let you all radiate with integrity authenticity responsibility enriching and causing eternal bliss nityananda thank you nityanandam paramasukadam kevalam gyanamurti ீத்த சர்வதிசாட்சிபூத்தேக்கம்ட்டன்ட்டன்ட்டன்ட்டன்ட்டன்ட்டன்ட்டன்ட்டன்ட்டன்ட்டன்ட்டன்ட்டன்ட்டன
to participate in the revival of the authentic yoga while simultaneously supporting a meaningful global initiative. This event was created to inspire individuals to explore and share the world of traditional yoga asanas and encourage the world to acknowledge the source of yoga asanas, which come from various ancient Hindu scriptures. The enlightened rishis, sages, and gurus of the past aligned to Paramashiva, the founder of yoga, have contributed to the original Shastra Pramanas revealed by Paramashiva, introducing to the world the various dimensions, benefits, and purposes of yoga asanas. Kailasa's Nityananda Yoga social media challenge is about celebrating this yogic science and honoring the ancient lineage that have come before us. So now coming to the challenge. As we saw today, the, this year's yoga asana is Uttarasana. Now, the challenge is Kailasa's Nityananda Yoga invites and encourages all yogis across the world to participate in the sharing of this authentic yoga asana by performing the following actions. Take a photo and or video of you performing this asana. Create a post on Facebook, Instagram, and any other platforms you feel inspired to share on. Third, in your post, share the truth that yoga is the science of radiating enlightenment as revealed in the Sanskrit Hindu. The following hashtags, hashtag Kailasa, hashtag Nityananda Yoga, Hashtag World Yoga Day. Hashtag Authentic Yoga. Hashtag Ustrasana. Hashtag International Yoga Day. Hashtag Nityananda. Hashtag World Hunger. Hashtag End Hunger. Fifth, share your post with at least five different friends, groups, or pages on the respective platforms you're sharing to. So let us take time and start with taking a photo or a video of you performing this asana. So a quick reminder of how the asana looks. This is Uttarasana. So very quickly, if you haven't got the chance, take a photo of yourself performing Uttarasana. It is translated to camel posture. A quick guideline to the posture, to the asana, lie on the ground, face downwards, turn up the legs and place them towards the back. Catch the legs with the hands, contract forcibly the mouth and the abdomen. This is called the camel posture. This Asana is from Hiranda Samhita, second chapter, 40th verse. So take a photo or video of you performing this asana. Create a Facebook post or an Instagram post or any other platform you feel inspired to share on. In your post, share the truth that yoga is the science of radiating enlightenment as revealed in the Hindu, Sanskrit, sacred scriptures. Fourth, along with your post, share the following hashtags. Hashtag Kalasha, hashtag Nityananda Yoga, hashtag World Yoga Day, hashtag Authentic Yoga, hashtag Ustarasana, hashtag International Yoga Day, hashtag Nityananda, hashtag World Hunger, hashtag End Hunger. Fifth, share your post with at least five different friends, groups, or pages on the respective platforms you're sharing to. Please take a few moments and participate in the challenge.
a quick guidance into the asana ustrasana lie on the ground face downwards turn up the legs and place them towards the back catch the legs with the hands contract forcibly the mouth and the abdomen this is called the camel posture the shastra pramana is from giranda samhita second chapter 48 verse you can see the asana in the picture so please perform the asana take a picture a photograph or a video of you performing this asana this is an invitation to all yogis across the world create a post on facebook instagram and any other platform you feel inspired to share on in your post share the truth that yoga is the science of radiating enlightenment as revealed in the sanskrit hindu text fourth along with your post share the following hashtags Hashtag #kalasha hashtag #nityananda yoga hashtag #world yoga day hashtag #authentic yoga hashtag #ustarasana hashtag #international yoga day hashtag #nityananda hashtag #world hunger hashtag #end hunger fifth share your post with at least five different friends groups or pages on the respective platforms you are sharing to so please take a few moments and participate in this challenge can also mention that ustarasana is from gharanda samhita and it is original authentic yoga from hindu sacred scriptures as revealed by parameshwara take a photo and or a video of you performing this asana create a facebook post or an instagram post or a post in any other platform you feel inspired to share on in the post share the truth that yoga is the science of radiating enlightenment as revealed in the sacred sanskrit hindu text you can mention giranda samhita second chapter 48 verse with the shastra pramanas along with your post share the hashtags share your post with at least five different friends groups or places on the respective platforms you are sharing to with this we come to the end of asana of the year 2022 social media challenge thank you for joining us we'll be back with more sessions for today's international yoga day please stay tuned thank you nityanandam